Hai, salam semua. Saya Master Gokan. Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi Duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020. Iaitu acara terbesar untuk pertandingan uh, C Multi Games Esports 2020. Top Clan akan mengadakan tournament terbesar mereka dengan hadiah yang terkumpul cukup lumayan bernilai 85,000 USD. Saya adalah seorang content creator dan juga saya seorang streamer. Perkara yang paling penting bagi saya adalah saya mendapatkan semangat dan juga kepuasan ketika bermain game. Bagi saya kepuasan itu adalah apabila ketika saya bermain game. Jika saya bermain game, saya berpeluang dapat berkenalan dengan kawan-kawan baru dan perkara yang paling penting sekali adalah saya dapat menjadi ahli gaming community di dunia ini Itulah dia kepuasan kita Pertandingan ini akan bermula pada 25 September ini Dan kita boleh menyaksikan secara live Di saluran rasmi Top Clan 2020 Facebook, Youtube dan juga Twitch Marilah bersama-sama mengikuti permainan dan juga perlawanan ini Dan tidak lupa untuk melawankan slogan This is passion Peace Cherry Valentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassador of Toplands 2020. Toplands 2020 is the biggest premier Southeast Asian multi-game esports tournament of 2020. Toplands 2020 will allow players from all over Southeast Asia to show their passion for video games. Rules of Survival will be a returning title, continuing the fire fight between the best teams in the region from last year. Joining it are the newcomers Dota 2 for PC, Tekken 7 for PC, and Marvel Super War for mobile. Competing the least is Tom and Jerry Chase also for mobile, with its top lens appearance being its first esports event in Southeast Asia. Top Lens 2020 will fuel the passion of countless gamers around the world with the total prize pool of 85,000 US dollars. I am a gamer, creator, and Facebook streamer. I've been playing video games growing up, but never in my wildest dreams that I imagined doing it for a living. I officially started streaming over a year ago when Amplify gave me the opportunity. Since then, I have expanded not only the games I'm playing, but also my community, and the most important thing is that I find passion in playing games. I mainly stream mobile games and I occasionally play computer games. As for me, passion is doing something without you even knowing it. It's like a part of you is missing if you're not doing that particular thing, which in my case is playing games and interacting with the people I met online which are now my friends. Toplands 2020 tournament will begin on September 25 and we can watch through Toplands 2020's official channel. Their official Facebook page is facebook.com slash official and their official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Let's follow the game together and say this is passion! สวัสดีค่ะโนอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวตโนอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็น Thailand a m b a s s a d o r ของ Top Clan 2020วันนี้เนยจะมาแนะนำ Top Clan 2020ซึ่ง Top Clan 2020ก็คือการจัดการแข่งขันเกม e-sport ที่ยิ่งใหญ่และสุดพิเศษที่สุดใน South East Asia ของปี2020นี้ซึ่งท็อปแคน2020เนี่ยเขามีการจัดการแข่งขันเกมมากมายหลายเกมเลยเพื่อนๆคนไหนที่สนใจก็เข้าไปดูรายละเอียดตรงลิงก์นี้ได้เลยเดี๋ยวเนยจะขึ้นลิงก์ไว้ให้นะคะส่วนตัวเนยแบบเนยชอบเล่นมาเวลทอมแอนเจอรี่เพราะว่าแบบสนุกมากเลยเพลินเล่นได้ทั้งวันเลยค่ะซึ่งไม่ต้องสงสัยเลยนะว่าทําไมเนยถึงเล่นหลายเกมนะคะเพราะว่าส่วนตัวเนยอ่ะเป็นสตรีมเมอร์เนยต้องค้นหาแพชชั่นจากการเล่นเกมซึ่งแพชชั่นของหนูก็คือ
การทําให้คนดูมีความสุขยิ่งหนูเห็นคนดูที่ดูหนูมีความสุขยิ่งทําให้หนูมีแรงผลักดันในการทําสิ่งนั้นอะ่ะต่อไปให้มันดีขึ้นเรื่อยๆและสุดท้ายนี้นะอยากจะชวนทุกคนไปชมการแข่งขันที่จะเริ่มขึ้นในวันที่25กันยายนนี้เป็นต้นไปได้ที่ Top Can 2020 Official Channel และอย่าลืมกดไลค์กดติดตามเป็นกําลังใจให้หน่อยด้วยนะคะเนยอยากให้ทุกคนมีความสุขและสนุกไปกับการแข่งขันนี้ This is passion ตอนแรกครับบางมันชินเตอร์ก็ถือมันละเดกาขีตันตักของมันละฝาของเราเห็นแต่มันดังละชิมเตอร์ยาจนเฟซบุ๊กเกมมิ่งเวียดนามทําไมมันต้องเป็นเยอะดูทางบ้านมันจะจะทางดาวเสือขู่เวียดนามของยาดาวกับกระแลนไฮคอมมันเมยยาดาวก็เดี๋ยวก่อนละลังนี้ขบวนดานอมาจันจะกับเตอร์เกมโมบายน้อยจงและไอซ์บอกน้อยริมเดี๋ยวเตอร์จักบายหังเกมแนะอีกับกระแลนละยาดาวมีตัวรับเหนียวบอลบอลหน่อยติ้งจังขบวนดานอมาจังหันยูละมาโวซูเปอร์แอลเลนตัวตาไฮตามแบบยารียาเจสตักเกิลเซเว่นว่าดักเบียร์ละตัวเกมได้ดูพักหันมาเวียดนามละรู้ออกออกสบายบอลยาดาวก็วีโมตองดันมาแหวนละยาดาวเอ็กซ์บ็อกต้องหอบล้างยับขวบเวอร์ตัวกัดละดัชซึ่งขึ้นบนเวียดนามกูยาดาวตักบอลแลนดีกับขี้กำไทยโฟกงตัวฮาวที่ลังเดาติ้งขี้ดึกไทยมันดึกซ้องว่าเนมดัมเมอร์เกมของมันว่าเนมดัมเมอร์ในเดียวกับกงหยางเบอร์กงดัมบัคเตอร์ Với slogan This is Boston thấu bùng đam mơ giải đấu tất cả lên là nơi để các bạn có niềm đam mơ giống đơ ca khỉ được theo dõi sự phát triển của ngành game bắt tới như thế nào giải đấu sẽ được tổ chức vào ngày 25 tháng 9 sắp tới và chúng ta có thể theo dõi trên cả fanpage facebook lẫn kênh youtube hãy truy cập fanpage tất cả lên 2020 và kênh youtube tất cả lên esports để theo dõi đơ ca khỉ và giải đấu nhé This is Boston thấu bùng đam mơ các bạn hãy cùng đơ ca khỉ chinh phục giải đấu tất cả lên 2020 nhé It's me, your Abby Nikki from facebookcom Nikki. I am a gamer, a streamer, a shoutcaster, and a host. Everyone, I'm Shir Talentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassador of Top Lands 2020. Hey guys, Asura here, and if you guys don't know who I am, I am a professional uh, shoutcaster, esports commentator. Uh, content creator and streamer residing in the Philippines. Hi, salam semua. Saya Masukokan. Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020. Hello everyone, I'm Rasdak AIG, also known as Madam Mayora. I'm the team manager of Team Rasdak. Hello semua. Berkenalkan, saya Fanji Ekogiafani, dikenal sebagai polisi ganteng gamer. สวัสดีค่ะโนอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวตโนอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็น Thailand Ambassador ของ Top Ten 2020 Hi my name is Holler I'm a caster streamer content creator and you can find most of my work online at Holler TV Hi everyone my name is Bobby and I'm here at NetEase Games I'm one of the community managers for Rules of Survival and Top Plants Esports Hi everyone my name is Arthur I'm a caster analyst coach and streamer from Malaysia for the game Dota 2. Hello everyone, I am Nam, cat caster. I am child caster of many games from Thailand. Hi everyone, I'm Clyde Lewis, player of Savage Gaming and player of one of the most trending games in PH, which is Nos. Hey everyone, I'm Pat, the marketing manager of Top Plans for Netflix Games. I'm from the Philippines and this is my home office. It's really sad that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected each and everyone, especially the esports scene, including me as a gamer, a shoutcaster, and a streamer. It has definitely affected me in a lot of ways. Gigs has been cancelled, LAN tournaments has been cancelled. 
The pandemic affected us in a way that some of our players were not able to practice and play because they don't have their own computer. And we're usually present and sharing for our teammates in person at events like this, but now we're not able to do that because of the pandemic. So this pandemic has definitely hit everybody hard, even those, you know, working in the esports or gaming industry. People might think that, you know, we all do our job at home and some of the time we do, but some of the time we also do those big events, live events. The epidemic affected us in the ways that we can practice together because one of my teammates doesn't have own computer, but we're still practicing and teaching him our new strategy during ECQ. passion is defined by how much time you spend in the 24 hours of your day doing something that you love and enjoy. Passion for me is still doing what you love even though it was really hard for you. Passion is what drives me to prove everyone else wrong. Gaming is my passion. Passion for me and for my team is what pushes us to grind harder and what motivates us to push us to our limits. Gaming should not be all about competition, gaming should be about passion. I hope that Top Clans 2020 will bring out the best in every team that joined the tournament. And thank you as well for the opportunity uh, for us to play in your tournament. My expectation in Top Clans 2020 is a successful tournament and I know that we will get a champion and show to all people that our play is remarkable. I hope that Top Plans 2020 will be fair and fun like last year, Top Plans Arena. We have been waiting for this and I cannot wait to see the result. Top Plans returns this year to become the platform for gaming entertainment and to give an opportunity for competitive gamers to showcase their talents and be rewarded. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is passion. 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 It is passion. This 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 is passion. Valentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Dawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassadress of Top Plans 2020. Top Plans 2020 is the biggest premier Southeast Asian multi-game esports tournament of 2020. Top Plans 2020 will allow players from all over Southeast Asia to show their passion for video games. Rules of Survival will be a returning title continuing the firefight between the best teams in the region from last year. Joining it are the newcomers Dota 2 for PC, Tekken 7 for PC, and Marvel Super War for mobile. Competing the least is Tom and Jerry Chase also for mobile, with its Top Lens appearance being its first esports event in Southeast Asia. Top Lens 2020 will fuel the passion of countless gamers around the world with the total prize pool of 85,000 US dollars. I am a gamer, creator, and Facebook streamer. I've been playing video games growing up, but never in my wildest dreams that I imagined doing it for a living. I officially started streaming over a year ago when Amplify gave me the opportunity. Since then, I have expanded not only the games I'm playing, but also my community, and the most important thing is that I find passion in playing games. I mainly stream mobile games and I occasionally play computer games. As for me, passion is doing something without you even knowing it. It's like a part of you is missing if you're not doing that particular thing, which in my case is playing games and interacting with the people I met online which are now my friends. Toplands 2020 tournament will begin on September 25 and we can watch through Toplands 2020's official channel. Their official Facebook page is facebook.com slash official and their official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Let's follow the game together and say this is passion!
Halo semua Perkenalkan saya Fanji Eko Gevani Dikenal sebagai polisi ganteng gamer Sebuah kebanggaan bagi saya Menjadi ambasador di Top Clans 2020 Untuk Indonesia Ini adalah turnamen e-sport multi game paling besar ya di Asia Tenggara di tahun 2020. Menurut saya, passion itu adalah menjadi lebih gigi, berani dan pantang menyerah. 2020 ini adalah tahun yang sulit karena COVID-19 banyak orang yang kehilangan nyawanya, kehilangan harapan, kehilangan keyakinan untuk masa depan. Tetapi kita tidak boleh menyerah. Tetaplah menjaga jarak, menjaga kesehatan, memakai masker, dan percayalah pada harapan. Turnamen ini akan dimulai tanggal 25 September 2020 dan kalian semua bisa menonton melalui channel-channel official dari Top Clans 2020. Ada Facebook, ada YouTube, dan juga ada Twitch. Mari kita ikuti acara ini bersama-sama. Dan ucapkan slogannya dengan semangat This is passion Jadi buat teman-teman semua Jangan lupa like video Papol Dan dukung terus Papol Terima kasih Hai salam semua, saya Masa Gokan Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020 iaitu acara terbesar untuk pertandingan uh, C Multi Games Esport 2020 Top Clan akan mengadakan tournament terbesar mereka dengan hadiah yang terkumpul cukup lumayan bernilai RM85,000 USD Saya adalah seorang content creator dan juga saya seorang streamer Perkara yang paling penting bagi saya adalah saya mendapatkan semangat dan juga kepuasan ketika bermain game. Bagi saya kepuasan itu adalah apabila ketika saya bermain game. Ketika saya bermain game, saya berpeluang dapat berkenalan dengan kawan-kawan baru. Dan perkara yang paling penting sekali adalah saya dapat menjadi ahli gaming community di dunia ini. Itulah dia kepuasan kita. Pertandingan ini akan bermula pada 25 September ini. Dan kita boleh menyaksikan secara live di saluran rasmi Top Clan 2020, Facebook, YouTube dan juga Twitch. Marilah bersama-sama mengikuti permainan dan juga perlawanan ini. Dan tidak lupa untuk melawangkan slogan, This is passion! Peace! I'm Sherry Talentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassadress of Top Plans 2020. Top Plans 2020 is the biggest premier Southeast Asian multi-game esports tournament of 2020. Top Plans 2020 will allow players from all over Southeast Asia to show their passion for video games. Rules of Survival will be a returning title continuing the fire fight between the best teams in the region from last year. Joining it are the newcomers Dota 2 for PC, Tekken 7 for PC, and Marvel Super War for mobile. Competing the list is Tom and Jerry Chase also for mobile, with its top lens appearance being its first esports event in Southeast Asia. Top Lens 2020 will fuel the passion of countless gamers around the world with the total prize pool of 85,000 US dollars. I am a gamer, creator, and Facebook streamer. I've been playing video games growing up, but never in my wildest dreams that I imagined doing it for a living. I officially started streaming over a year ago when Amplify gave me the opportunity. Since then, I have expanded not only the games I'm playing, but also my community, and the most important thing is that I find passion in playing games. I mainly stream mobile games and I occasionally play computer games. As for me, passion is doing something without you even knowing it. It's like a part of you is missing if you're not doing that particular thing, 
which in my case is playing games and interacting with the people I met online which are now my friends. Tapland's 2020 tournament will begin on September 25 and we can watch through Tapland's 2020's official channel. Their official Facebook page is facebook.com slash official and their official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash taplandsesports. Let's follow the game together and say this is possible! Xin chào tất cả các bạn à, Mình à, xin tự giới thiệu mình là Đơn Ca Khỉ Tên thật của mình là Phạm Hồng Lộc Hiện tại mình đang là streamer tự do trên Facebook Gaming Việt Nam Hôm nay mình rất vinh dự được thông báo mình sẽ trở thành đại sứ khu vực Việt Nam của giải đấu Top Clan 2020 Giải đấu có thể coi là lớn nhất khu vực Đông Nam Á dành cho các tựa game mobile nói chung và Xbox nói riêng Được tổ chức bởi hãng game Net E Top Clan là giải đấu vi tụ rất nhiều bộ môn nổi tiếng trong khu vực Đông Nam Á chẳng hạn như là Marvel, Super Island, Dota 2 Tom và Jerry, uh, Chase, Tekken 7 và đặc biệt là tựa game đã được phát hành ở Việt Nam là Rule of Survival Giải đấu có vi mô toàn Đông Nam Á và là giải đấu uh, Xbox tổ hợp lớn nhất khu vực Với tư cách là đại sứ khu vực Việt Nam của giải đấu Tất Bà Lan thì đi cây khỉ cảm thấy vô cùng tự hào khi lần đầu tiên khỉ uh, được thấy mình được sống với niềm đam mơ game của mình và niềm đam mơ này được uh, công nhận bởi cộng đồng bất tớ Với slogan This is passion, thổ bùng đam mơ Giải đấu Tất Lên là nơi để các bạn có niềm đam mơ giống đơ ca khỉ được theo dõi sự phát triển của ngành game bất tới như thế nào Giải đấu sẽ được tổ chức vào ngày 25 tháng 9 sắp tới và chúng ta có thể theo dõi trên cả fanpage Facebook lẫn kênh Youtube Hãy truy cập fanpage Top Clan 2020 và kênh Youtube Top Clan Esports để theo dõi đơ ca khỉ và giải đấu nhé Đi đi Bastion, thổi buồn đam mơ Các bạn hãy cùng đơ ca khỉ chinh phục giải đấu Top Clan 2020 nhé Everyone, I'm Sher Valentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassadress of Toplands 2020. Toplands 2020 is the biggest premier Southeast Asian multi-game esports tournament of 2020. Toplands 2020 will allow players from all over Southeast Asia to show their passion for video games. Rules of Survival will be a returning title continuing the fire fight between the best teams in the region from last year. Joining it are the newcomers Dota 2 for PC, Tekken 7 for PC, and Marvel Super War for mobile. Competing the least is Tom and Jerry Chase also for mobile, with its top lens appearance being its first esports event in Southeast Asia. Toplands 2020 will fuel the passion of countless gamers around the world with the total prize pool of 85,000 US dollars. I am a gamer, creator, and Facebook streamer. I've been playing video games growing up, but never in my wildest dreams that I imagined doing it for a living. I officially started streaming over a year ago when Amplify gave me the opportunity. Since then, I have expanded not only the games I'm playing but also my community and the most important thing is that I find passion in playing games. I mainly stream mobile games and I occasionally play computer games. As for me, passion is doing something without you even knowing it. It's like a part of you is missing if you're not doing that particular thing which in my case is playing games and interacting with the people I met online which are now my friends. Toplands 2020 tournament will begin on September 25 and we can watch through Toplands 2020's official channel. Their official Facebook page is facebook.com slash official and their official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash taplandsesports. Let's follow the game together and say this is possible!
Hello everyone, welcome to Top Clans 2020. As the biggest multi-game tournaments in the SEA region, we aim to become the best digital esports platform that serves all the players, brands and game developers. We want everyone to come together to embrace love for esports and games. This year, totally 5 games joined Top Clans 2020, and a total of 28 days of tournaments will be live streamed in English, Thai and Malay, hoping to bring you the best experience. And today we're going to present you with the Dota 2 Group Stage Competition. Before we get started, we would like to thank our TV partners, EGG Network and AIS Play. And don't forget to follow our official Facebook, YouTube and Twitch channels for the latest updates and surprises. And also you can watch live with our partner platforms at Kumu, Lazada, Lazada Live, Likey, Nemo TV, Twitch and TikTok. And also thanks to our local partners, InfoFed and Asian Galaxy. Top Class 2020 is now broadcasting in Thai and Malay language. And thanks to our network support, UU Game Booster. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the game will start very soon. Our wonderful casters will take it from here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Top Clans 2020 Dota 2 SEA Invitational. Today is going to be day four. My name is Holler, and I'm with Arthur. How are you doing today on this fine Sunday? I'm great. Feeling good. Time flies, okay. and we have. We are at the fourth day of this competition already. The last day for this week, matchups, and I'm very excited. I feel like all these teams are going to bring their best for this day as well. So I can't wait to jump into the game and see what do they have to prepare for us. Yeah, it's day two effectively for the group, right? Which is going to be Group B. It's got Galaxy Racer, Execration, Neon Esports, Advice Esports. And uh, we're, we're kind of seeing exactly how this structure is going to work here. It's going to be basically we have eight teams total. We've divided into two different groups, four teams apiece. They're going to play a round robin within each of the you know the brackets. Um, they're going to be a best of two. So you really don't have a whole lot of games to move on. And when you do move on, you're going to move on to the knockout stage. We're going to take the top two teams. The bottom two teams are going to unfortunately be eliminated. They're going to win in the fifth through eighth place there, and they're going to win $1,000. But the teams that do move on have a chance to win $7,000, $4,000, $3,000 all in USD. So you definitely want to be in the top three, if anything. Um, and and it, I mean, if you are if you get to the playoffs, you're guaranteed, you know, double the money, so to speak, of the 2,000 versus the 1,000 there. So that's quite a, a feat there. Um, but we're going to go into um, the groups here. This is kind of what things are looking at after one day of play, at least in Group B. And we've seen two days of play in Group A, and we kind of see... IO, IO Dota just, you know, pulling out the win. Uh, they got a walkover from Brandy Sports, so, you know, they're at the top with MG Trust there. They have yet to play each other. Those guys are looking to be the favorite, while Adroit Esports are going to play Brandy Sports for that final game just to see if they can kind of go in. Uh, if it ends up being a three-way tie at the top, we'll do tiebreakers. So it'll be very interesting to see how that plays. But back to Group B, we're going to have, again, Execration and uh, Galaxy Racer. Those are going to be, that's going to be the first series we see today, and they're the tops right now. So it's going to be an interesting game. What are your thoughts on that one? I mean, Execration definitely feeling pretty good here, topping the group. And I would say the pressure is on Galaxy Razor because they want to get at least one point by tying the by tying the series. And we'll see once again the timing for these matchups. We got the first series, Galaxy Razor versus Execration. Definitely the one that I'm looking forward to the most today. And after that, we have got Neon Esports versus YC Esports. And YC Sports, they are they have not they have no points so far, so they definitely are not in the best situation right now, and they have to buckle up to grab themselves some points. Yeah, and it, it, to be honest, if if YC Sports they lose out in this series, I think they're going to be mathematically eliminated. So they really need to come out with at least a tie, hopefully a win. Uh, but throughout the stream, we're going to do a find the code event basically throughout the game there's going to be certain points where a comment comes up it's going to be the chat um some sort of text in the middle right screen and basically all you need to do is copy and paste it and into the comments um on whatever platform you're watching from be it youtube facebook twitch any of these things we're going to look at all three and then we're going to pick a random winner from those that have actually participated and then we'll end up finding you and we will get you the prize it's going to be dota 2 content that's something that you can easily do. It's a really quick way to do it. And uh, in addition to that, we have a share event. And this one's going to be, all you need to do is share the stream. 
wherever you are, share it to your buddies, your stack mates, your, you know, anybody. And basically, we're going to find you again, and we'll just give you prizes for that. So it's a very simple thing. Um, Arthur, have you participated in the Share to Win? Every day. I've been sharing the stream every day, sharing the post every day as well. I'll just making sure that I do my job to reach the milestone. And after that, mm -hmm. you guys will be the one, you know, being lucky and win all the, all the prizes. And you, unfortunately, you haven't won anything though, right? You would definitely mm -hmm. rub that in. Not yet, unfortunately. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you I've been the spot to be here to talk Dota <laughs> with you, and that's my greatest, that's my greatest prize already. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, okay, so we're gonna have a Galaxy Racer execration. I think they're getting into the lobby now, so it's gonna couple be a couple more minutes before we start with the the draft phase. But who do you like in this first series today? I would definitely say execration. They they come out. They came out with a very strong performance. Um, two days ago, and I feel like they have they have been surprising me quite quite a bit because previously my impression for them is um, pretty in inconsistent. But the, the performance that they put up that day was very convincing to me. And here we have Galaxy's Razors. They are their lineup goes Alacrity, KOXY, destroys three four three. We have got some veterans. We have got some really talented new blood as well. So a lot of reasons to be very excited excited for this roster. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, we've actually put KYXY as an offlane support. He's been more of a support than core. Is that uh, just a typo or is that going to be just something that we move forward? But I mean, we see Execration here with Raging Potato and this guy was playing like a core. He was playing very aggressive uh, in the previous game against Vice. So we know that this is probably the one of the bigger names on the Execration lineup. We we do love his play style. He's a lot of fun to watch. But um, yeah, we're, we, we just have, uh, you know, a really solid team in Execration coming up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Looking at the dual supports of Execration, BDZ, RR, they've been around in the scene for forever. And RR has been a very fantastic captain um, for a long time. So I do think that they have a lot of the very required qualities for them to uh, shine and eventually get to the tier one spot, uh, which is the aim target for every single team. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lot of this and it's great to not only, you know, uh, hopefully you stream these teams uh, in your downtime, but when you're not playing in these tournaments and leagues, but it, it's really nice to get that experience of playing against a high level team because it's completely different than any sort of pub, you know, and, and any other like the other stacks that you're talking about. So this is one of those things that even if you don't win out, you're getting something out of it, right? It's experience. It's definitely just how to learn how other teams are drafting, what you need to do. There's like a big element where you're not always exposed to this when you're just playing scrims. Definitely, because at scrims, some of the times, most of the teams are not putting their A plus effort. They are not at their 100%. But you know that when it comes to tournaments, every single team, they are going to bring the best out of their pocket. So this is the best time for you to learn. This is the best time for you to bring out what you have learned in the scrims as well. So definitely, we are looking forward to these two teams bring their A plus games today. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. I see that the players have actually got in. We're about to just do the coin flip and get things underway. So please do stay tuned for that. We're gonna be, you know, it, it's gonna be a matter of minutes before we get going on this. Um, but okay, in, in more of a, to just kind of talk about like the last one with Execration and Vice Esports. We saw that Vice Esports did end up losing that one. So. Um, I, I guess, what did Execration do really well? You know, like, how did they kind of stifle Vice in that first matchup? One impressive thing that they did was to tackle and spotlight the biggest weakness of Vice Esports in draft. Remember how the Venomancer pick that we really yep. disliked? Yep. Yeah, the one the pick Viper. they... Yep. yep. Execration really capitalized on that draft mistakes and then exploit that into have into giving themselves a very good laning phase advantage and that is experience over um that is experience domination there just right there by recognition coming out from the drafting from the drafter especially and then they they just play their lane pretty perfectly as well that is adjustment coming in so i would say experience and adjustment wise execution are definitely a better team than wise but today's game Galaxy Razor, they themselves have very experienced players as well. And the drafter is 343. He has also been to a couple of TIs, um, plays pretty highly as well. So I will say, experience wise, these teams are definitely going head to head, par to par. 
so you, you talk about the draft. Obviously, it's super important, right? It's a, it's a completely different element in, a, in and of its own. But as a player-wise, who do you think from, you know, either of the teams? Like, who, which, which, I guess, pick one player from each team that you think really needs to step up this game. I will say both of their mid laners, Alacrity okay. versus Ken. Alacrity. Ken has been pretty impressive for the last series, especially on his invoker. Very on point, um, very good ability to come back from uh, bad matchups. And this is what Alacrity does the best as well. But Alacrity, it seems to be more of a selfless player when it comes to mid lane. And Ken looks like the one that wants to get more resources. So I think, I feel like this is going to be Alacrity trying to just amp up his tempo and Ten break the momentum of Alacrit uh, of Execration. Yeah, yeah. Five okay, okay. So we'll see how that one goes out. Um, I, I just like the flexibility of Execration. I, I just like that the, their style. I feel like uh, this is a really... Uh, this is a team that's starting to build a little bit of confidence moving in. Um, and they've been playing better as a team. So we'll see how this one goes out. Obviously, with the the re reinsertion of Ken back into the lineup, um, ch changing things up a little bit from you know uh, uh, Carl. So uh, things are going to be a little bit different. But you know, Ken is the old stalwart of the team, so he should be uh, a lot a lot better. Yep, definitely. And if you say Ken has been pretty comfortable as well, I believe Ken was has always been the mid player for Assecration. So they should be pretty comfor Five comfortable with, that, with themselves. I think the point here is that will Execration or Galaxy Razor ban out the heroes that both of the teams really rely on. And I've been seeing Execration doing their homework already, banning out the Tiny. This is one of the Destroy's absolute best hero. And Galaxy Razor is going on to ban out the Magnus and Batrider. Both of both the heroes have a very strong presence in this current meta. Mm -hmm. And Execration starting out with the Venge first pick. What do you think about this? Well, I mean, in my opinion, Venge has always been one of the top tier position five out there. Radiant unless you want to switch or swap him to onto the other row, simply because having Venge, it creates so much synergies for your team. You could go for different kinds of combinations of draft. There's the Venge pop combo, there's a Venge TB plus draw combo. There's just a lot of things that you can go for when you have Venge on your team. And that is it, it is always to is it it is always happy to have a, a five position five that can save your your carry at, when, mm -hmm. when it comes to the, the late game. So I, I'm definitely I'm definitely loving this venture pick, and Galaxy will just will just go on and snap the step fire away. So. Like, okay, I understand why you choose Venge because it opens up options and it's very versatile. You can almost put it into, you know, maybe even a one if you wanted to, one, four, five, of, you know, that sort. But I feel like in this case, with the meta being as strong as it is, like, and we're seeing Galaxy Racer do this, is that they're taking the meta picks. Like, I feel like Snapfire is just like on another level in terms of support that you really need to kind of just gobble this guy up, especially early. Oh, yeah, definitely. You always want to... You will always want to shut down the Snapfire for a little bit so that he doesn't get to his Eclipse um, mm -hmm. timing that early. But one thing I want to point out though is that it seems like this Wenshu pick has given has given Execration a lot of value already given that Galaxy Razor went for the Snapfire and Faces Y combo. You already have a hero that can always save someone from the Chronosphere. And definitely, I could see this okay. as Wenshu does a lot coming into the mid game and late game. Okay, well, uh, I mean, Execration here have kind of picked up the Earth Spirit. Uh, this can is, is it's a, you know, BDZ is a spammer of this hero, um, but it can also be played by Ken if they want it to go mid. Um, so it has a little bit of flexibility in terms of laning. It has a definitely different ways that they can be played, but this Faceless Void pick, now, I think uh, previously, like 7.27C, it was like top three safe carry hero. I think we had that discussion earlier, right? But seeing as it's, you know, the teams have kind of reacted, it's a little bit different, 7.27Ds come along. I don't think it's really that first phase pick material anymore. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, we have seen, I, I believe we have seen this um, happen in a couple of days ago where a team just first phase, phase sword and get counted really hard simply because there, there are just so many counters in the game. Not only hero to hero counter, but you can draft specifically to counter this hero as well mm -hmm. I, I believe the last time it happens was i couldn't remember the team but the way of countering is just that you pick a lot of super tanky heroes that yes. don't really afraid of the chronosphere like the rave king 
Mm-hmm. Uh, like all the strength heroes just pump the yeah. timber soul, just pump them in into your draft and making sure that even though the faceless white gets a couple of man chronosphere, he wouldn't mm-hmm. have the enough he would he wouldn't have enough damage to to clean anybody up. Mm-hmm. But uh, Galaxy Racer here is pretty much going all in. I mean, Snapfire, you got your Mortimer Kisses, you got the the Earth Splitter from Elder Titan. Like they want this Chrono and they want this Wombo combo to happen. So. Whatever you're thinking, like, I, I totally agree with the fact that it can be countered. That, you know, they just need to work out with the strength heroes and all that. And just, you know, Aeon Disc is definitely going to be high on that list of things to buy in terms of priority. But we're going to have to see how they react to this. And Execration have gone with the Beastmaster. Obviously, it provides a lot of vision. But um, is this the right counter to face this void, especially in lane? Oh, yeah. Beastmaster definitely fares a lot better than a lot of other off laner when it comes to laning against the Faces Void. Not only because of... The bar being able to harass faces with a lot, but also when it comes to mid lane, uh, when it comes to mid game, the hot vision just gives you a lot more. It gives you vision advantage, uh, for you to initiate a team fight. And besides that, you always have this draw that can go through BKB against white. Whenever he jumps into Chronosphere, if you are not getting caught, if the Vip Saturn is not getting caught in Chrono, just draw the faces white, and there's no way faces white can do it any damage unless he gets a Lincoln Sphere, which is not mm-hmm. the optimal, which is not the most optimal item for Faces Void. So yeah. the other heroes have to step up here, step very other Titan. They need to make sure that their, uh, their spells are always connected to the Chrono Sphere. Mm-hmm. And Execration here, I mean, you know, like you're talking about, just the, the, the roar, they've got the Earth Spirit, which just has like an arsenal of different ways of the silence or even the stun. Uh, and then you've got the Venge with the swap as well, so which kind of, kind of can prevent or protect anybody who gets chronoed on. So you definitely have outs, right? And so I feel like Execration's draft has been like somewhat balanced and it actually at the same time is countering what Galaxy Racer really wants to do. So I'm kind of liking the way that this draft has been going for them. Definitely. But right now, I, the one thing I want to see from Galaxy Racer is that they don't pick, uh, they don't draft themselves a single call lineup where everything just rely on this Faces Void. I want to see Alacrity picking up uh, a more farming intensive or maybe a more linking Radiant intensive Pink. hero so that he could still act, he could actually take over the Faces Void and, and and contribute into the game if Faces Void is having a tough game because Radiant looking Pink. at the heroes of Execration have they definitely have a lot of ways to shut down this Faces Void literally three heroes from Execration have some way to deal with this Faces Void yeah, and uh, I mean, yeah, they had the control and to deal with the Faceless Void, but now they've got the TA, which can bring the damage, which they're going to need. They need to blow things up. But at the same time, Galaxy Racers lineup, if you're looking at it, Titan's kind of tanky. Sand King is kind of beefy as well. Snapfire is kind of hard to get to. Um, and then you got the Faceless Void, which can kind of shrug off a lot of the damage. So if they're going to go for burst, yeah, they'll probably burst somebody down. But do they have enough to kind of snowball this into a good team fight where you're killing just more than that one hero so we're gonna have to see how this one plays out Mm -hmm. i'm liking the sanking pick too it's just that i feel like this allows a galaxy reserve to start a lot of team fights you know because the one thing they are lacking so far is initiation you don't want faces to be the only one jumping into team fights every single time so sanking fulfills that role but you're playing against the beastmaster that will Pretty yeah. much 100% go for the Necro Necronome country. That's the biggest counter to Sand King, the ability um, to scout out or scout out him during the Sandstorm. So I can see Sand King having a pretty bad game as well. The mm-hmm. one hero that um the one hero that Sand King afraid the most anti-mage is still in the pool. And I can see Radiant if Escrocia picks up the anti-mage. Oh actually yeah. no, they wouldn't pick up the anti-mage given that there's a TA there. So yeah. they might want to get some carry that doesn't rely so much on farm and can come online earlier something like an ursa something like okay. a yeah just just some fighting yeah. heroes that can also win the sand king lanes would be pretty good here mm-hmm. yeah you definitely need to deal with the sand king there i mean it, it, and they're trying to protect it by you know a couple of the bands but um if, if you're looking at the bands for like they picked the ta fourth meaning that it's kind of vulnerable in lane and they did not want to deal with the Ember, which is, in my opinion, a 50-50 matchup. But the Viper one, that one definitely sticks out where he can kind of snowball and make TA's lane a little bit rough. Um, But they really need to carry something, again, just a little high tempo just to kind of end the game. Um, But yeah, I think Ursa is probably the way to go. I really like Lycan, but they banned that out. Uh, What other sort of hero, I guess... 
would you pick for Galaxy Racer? Like, what is that last pick that you're looking for to just kind of round off that draft? I think you really want a hero that can deal pretty well against the TA, especially on the lane. Mm -hmm. I think I think Kanka is pretty good here for Galaxy Razor. Not only because at the lane, you are pretty good against TA, but after the lane, you have a lot of synergies with the face as well. As well. It offers a lot of tankiness. It offers a lot of um, disable. It feels like Kanka has always been the hero that fulfills a lot of roles Dying when you're when you're landing a mid mid sure. um, okay. hero and Chan is surprisingly gonna be the pick for Ash's creation so Ooh, are we gonna okay. see a post one Chan like what Neon has been doing or maybe we'll just see something normal which is the vengeful post one they have a, they have themselves a very fast lineup though they do they do and they can and they kind of just end the game which is kind of what they can talk about right like I mean remaining. what we can kind of just end the game and you know all of those heroes can get off going right like beastmaster once he gets you know his book he's just kind of pushing along with chen as well just the potential for them to end the game in like 20 to 25 minutes is definitely a reality but you know what you talked about with galaxy racer on um, the perfect you know insight from you in the sense that you picked the kanka to counter out the ta so that's going to be a bit of a rough lane um or it's going to be a better lane for galaxy racer or Al alacrity there so um nice little bit of insights from you um, okay, so all the players have been selected. We kind of know what's going on, but it's going to be an RR5 Chen. So we're not going to see the position one Chen, unfortunately. Yeah, Asgrish is get, taking things a little bit less crazier. They will go for you to eventual <laughs> post one. And knowing the seeing the Chen, it just makes Kanka even a better pick here because having the ability to cleave through all the summon units is always going to be good. And you have this very tanky Kanka to sit in front of the tower whenever whenever Escalation wants to do a 5 man push, is also very good as well. You want the Kanka to be positioned in front to soak up some of the damage coming out from Escalation so that Faces Swipe could find the best timing to jump in for the Chronosphere. And if that happens, all the Wombo combo of Galaxy Rages could just line up. So I would say Alacrity is going to be, his item build, his positioning are going to be crucial here in terms of setting up the fight for his team. Okay, so uh, Alacrity is definitely the one that does a lot of pressure on. Who do you think from Execrations really need a stepping up? Is it still just Ken? I would say Ken, Ken is just going to do his uh, TA job, you know, just keep farming. So the early game is really a lot on Raging Potato and BDZ. This Beastmaster lane and Earth Spirit has to roll because without that, the R5 men, Death one lineup wouldn't be able to form. And a lot of these... A lot of the early tempo starts from the both this hero as well, the Beastmaster and Elspirit. So this off lane duel have to have a very good lane. But looking at Galaxy's races, the RC lane is also not that weak as well. You have this Elder Titan that can literally zone two minutes on his own. So you really want to shut down this um Elder Titan on 3-4-3 three, three hand. Yeah, it's so funny that you're like, you have to shut down the Elder Titan of all things, you know? Like, that's like a hero that you're thinking, it's like, oh, position five is not that much, but man, when he gets those creeps and the spirit comes back to him, he hits like a truck and he's on top of you so quickly. So definitely things to look out for. And I, I, I kind of like the, the, the power of the Elder Titan five. Have you been playing it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's why when whenever you are playing against the Elder Titan, you always want to make sure that you try your best to block every single camp from, from spawning so that he doesn't get to stack up his spirit damage and just whack you and chase you out of the lane. If you are able to do that, you literally takes away half of the ability of Elder Titan. And that's the one way of limiting this guy's effectiveness in the game. Okay, all right. But what do you think about, I mean, we haven't seen it in, in uh, the league so far, but what do you think about this Venge 1? Well, Venge 1 is not your typical winning post, winning condition post 1, but when you're pairing a Venge with a super carry like a Dusa, TB, TA, you're able to amp up their timing so much earlier, and all of a sudden, it creates... It creates a lot of synergy as well with the Beastmaster, with the TA. You are able to take down towers so much quicker. You are able to take down the Roshan so much quicker as well. And Galaxy Razor, they themselves are a rather slow tempo lineup because you you want the Void to have more items. You need your you need Galaxy Razor need their support to hit level six for the Wombo combo as well. So before that, I'll say Escalation definitely have a, have an upper hand going into the laning phase. Great. 
Uh, did you see BDZ in the top lane? He was actually trying to body block, but he let the, the range creep go. He's going to die first here. Are you are you okay with it just kind of pushing like this? I'm not sure though, because getting to level 2 has always been the priority for most of the teams. And if you're not able to get to level 2 first, you're actually going to you know, lose out a lot uh, in terms of power spike. So I'm not sure with that decision, maybe they'll just want the, the crit wave to be pushed so that BDZ can can start pulling some creeps or blocking the camps. Great. And also, uh, Sand King here, he's actually went with Caustic Finale to start things off. Are you okay with that as opposed to uh, the Sandstorm to kind of start things off in the laning phase at level one? Oh yeah, definitely. I think Caustic Finale is a much, it's often a much better spell to get at level one so that you can actually push out the wave and then allow your post war to just pull the next big camp. And that's, that is what exactly they are aiming for at the bottom lane for Galaxy Razor. And 3 3 here is actually going to chase down the career. Yeah, with... was... I mean, BDZ had actually taken the courier, like the, the creeps, right? He was cutting it through, but he actually missed Micro the courier on the way back. So a little unfortunate for him there, but Alacrity and... Uh... Okay, yeah, they were going to just trade blows in the mid lane, but that's going to be the end of that. And in the bottom lane, we're going to see Venge and Chen. Uh, both now just hitting level 2. Scatterblast slowing them down, but they should be fine with the uh, lanes creeping. But BDZ bringing the creeps all the way to the mid lane. Is he going to actually just try to feed it? No, he's going to just farm it here, trying to get some last hits. But Elder Titan has kind of scared him away. Yep. And he does get a level not 2. The, not the most optimal choices here because you definitely want the wave to deny your own wave as well. But Osprey has gone into the level 2 and he can start roaming around the, the lane right now. Top lane, there's not much Beastmaster and the Osprey can do to the Pacers White. So it looks like BDC's next choice here will be the mid lane. Oh, Alacrity is super coins. low though. Ken gets oh. Tybringer and he's going to look to go. Alacrity just trying to outplay him, but he gets right clicked. It's going to be so close. He's trying to... Uh, Ken, they're just kind of playing through. He's trying to just stream it through. Oh, the Tybringer as well, but they're just so low, and I think that's going to be the end of that. But, oh, Alacrity, he's not going to go up. Okay, that's going to now get the salve. Puts on the Refractor Shield. Oh, one more shot. Alacrity getting so low. Oh, he does get a level up. He's going to X and TP on away. He should be fine. Wow, that was a very close call. I thought PDZ would just, you know, TP, TP to the mid lane from, from the base and punish the XY, but... It seems to me like that was a very, very threatening kill and very potential kill. And bottom lane, Keras wise, oh, gonna put a big pressure on Palos. This cookie, but the magic missile is gonna stop Desiris, the wave of terror. Everybody's been targeted, but yeah. Three, four, three. It's like a pretty quiet game for, for, yeah. for the team so far. Mm -hmm. 343 just trying to harvest as many of uh, the souls as possible or just touch as many creeps, but Ken is getting gone on here. He does get the nice little torrents. Oh, this the tiebreaker almost killing Ken. He's looking so close. The side blade's actually hitting on the alacrity. But it looks like Ken has been backing off now. He probably just has to do the walk of shame and then TP back in. Yep, this is the power of Kung Kao versus TA on the lane. 3 4 3 meanwhile is chasing BDZ out of the lane. The reason being this is because Torrent can instantly um, just destroy every single bit of the refraction. That's why Kunka has always been the go to choice when it comes to um, countering the TA. Over one other time, can get destroyed, and that's going to be first blood for Alacrity. What a crucial first blood for uh, Alacrity. Now he's gonna hit like, level 6 timing much earlier than TA. And just and now just one rotation to the mid lane could just kill the TM once again. So Radiant you'll see if Galaxy Razor want to pull that off. Magic Mills miss has been committed. Palos is looking to fight this, but KYXY goes, turns around. He's got Burrow Strike as well. They got a scatter blast and they've got Palos in a bad spot. Wave of terror. He fairy fires. Destrace getting low and he does die. And it looks like they've got a magic missile and they've gone too far and they got two for nothing. All to Palos. Oh, mid top lane. And BDZ as well. We get a solo kill on to three four three. So this is it looks like a triple kill for the side of Execration as a team. Yeah, BDZ actually got the rune and the kill. So props to him for that. That's like the perfect rotation. And this bottom lane as well with the huge magic wand and fairy fire, especially when he's 
just be just right beside the chan you need to not un underestimate the heal the burst heal coming out milane though destroys like we said he's looking to pressure this ta a little bit with the ghost strip available on alacrity hopefully to kill ta once once and then pressure the tower with the catapult and here comes the boat. He's been level six, and they got the scatter blast. It does connect the snapfire cookie as well. But BDZ is here. He tries to kick him out. Ken is just looking to run away. The spirit is there. The stomp is actually going to connect, but he does have refraction up. And how much more can they go? They're looking to turn this. Three four three gets a one shot in, but doesn't really do any damage because the refraction is still up. And Alacrity will go back to the tower. Here comes the Chen. Oh, one more roll in. They found Alacrity. Nice little kick. There we go. And the stomp will still slow that down. Snapfire Cookie just buying a little bit of time. Deathstrike is still there. The Spirit, but Snapfire goes down. Deathstrike is going a little too deep. Torrent does connect, at least on the camp, but that's really not a whole lot. BDZ is super low, but he's looking to run away. He rolls on Ooh, in and he gets the smash, but he sacrifices himself for that. Typebringer will end up cleaning that up, and Alacrity gets the kill on that one. Do you see what happened with that? TA was constantly trying to deny the, the creep of Chen so that he creates the side blade that eventually took down 343. What a play coming out from Ken. Uh, we said that Ken versus Alacrity is going to the to be the matchup that we need to be watch out for. And so far both of them have been impressive. I, I don't know BBZ rolling in to to, to kill uh the, you know the Elder Titan there. Oh but speaking of BDZ getting a little low and it looks like Ken is going to look to turn this. Destrace goes down one other time to stop. Here comes the boat. It does connect. They've got him X in, so Ken's not going anywhere. The side trap is going to try to slow him down, but he's been X'd on back. Ken gets a refraction. The torrent one other time. He's not going anywhere, and that's going to be another death for Ken. Such on points, rotation, and foul usage from both of the sides. Unfortunately, the, the, the ghost ship didn't quite connect, though, but... The Torrent was the saving grace there for them to get kill and Palos should be in trouble here. Oh, the Burl Strike Sandstorm and Stomp as well. He's got nowhere to go. The Torrent and everything's being thrown around, but he's been swapped. Uh, he swaps with RR. He's alive for now. Alacrity's just trying to outfight this, but he's getting low. He's been killed. He does get the X off, and here's the Roar, and they found him in 343 as well. And it looks like Excretion are just going to look to destroy 343, and he's just buying time. Such a risky rotation coming out from Galaxy Razor though. The attempt is so risky because they are literally just committing under the tier 1 tower and once that happens, you have no way back uh, once you, you have committed to such a deep um, location and after that you just four, four man rotation coming out from Escalation being able to punish the aggression coming out from Galaxy Razor. So good, very good counter play coming out from Escalation so far. Vengeful is actually the one that's topping the network chart too, which is pretty surprising given that Venge is not exactly the the hero that can farm the, the quickest. Mm -hmm. But because of how aggressive the, the side lanes have been playing and the couple of kills that Palos have been have been taken, it tops him on the net worth. And this is a very worrying issue for the side of Galaxy Razor, I would say. Once Vengeful able to get all the aura items up, He'll just be walking down lanes with a TA and Beast Monster, and all of a sudden, you are running into this huge five man team fight. Roll strike into the stomp, but BDZ does roll in, but that's to his own death, and KYXY gets a double kill. They turn this around, and Execution, I mean, their lineup wants to push, and they just kind of want to end the game soon. But, I mean, with the lanes going the way that it's going, this is probably not looking as great for uh, Execution as they once thought. Swap in, Magic Missile. And uh, KYXY is looking to at least just to get the Burl Strike there. It's going to be used on Palos. But Palos is just going to shrug that one off. I still uh, managed to get a uh, force a 3 main rotation coming up from Aspiration though. Both of both the TA and Aspiration have TP top lane. And, or at least TA has walked to the top lane. So this creates a lot of space for Alacrity to kind of just push in the mid tower. And most importantly, Ghost is still getting the uncontested farm so far. Yeah, he's been uncontested. He's got an MOM here. He's got Battle Fury up next. Uh, Beastmaster, though, does have Necro 1. So that's just the beginning for this. But what time do you start pushing as the Radiant side? 
Okay, well, you want to get at least a Necro Book 1 on Beastmaster and then you start pushing, but it all just depends on the TA's tempo because so far TA hasn't gotten himself the best game so, so far. Mid lane though. Oh, the roar, but they got the boat. Mortimer kisses as well. BDZ does roll on in. He just got magnetized, at least on Alacrity. And the torrent is going to be off the mark, but they got the Burl Strike and BDZ is only level 5, so he could not have casted Magnetize. Yeah, thankfully, the, the ghost ship kicked in, so so, so the boat drum was there to help Alacrity tank through most of the damage. And a very beautiful 5 man rotation coming out from Galaxy Razor at this 10 minute mark. To just take down this mid tower because they know that with this Radiant's mid tower down, tower they can fall. easily infiltrate the jungle and take away a lot of farm coming out from TA, especially at the triangle. Yeah, it's actually pretty massive. I think that that's like a huge strategic point. So, but again, it's kind of you're playing so well, Galaxy Racer. That is that execution are going to have a hard time coming back and all they want to do is they wanted to push they wanted to have that early lead and to just kind of destroy towers and just you know be high ground you know at like 17 20 minutes but that's really not gone that way and galaxy racer has done a really good job of being stout bro strike here sandstorm palos is going to clear the creep wave but he should be fine mm -hmm. yeah i agree with you like execution should be the one being really aggressive so far the one grabbing and snatching map control away from Galaxy Razor, but all this has not happened yet because TA was severely heavily shut down in the mid lane thanks to Alacrity playing super well. And that's the reason why Al Galaxy Razors are able to be aggressive so far. But Escalation is looking to fight back now. Oh, they got the roll in with the dust, but two uh, and two TPs are coming. They do get the roar. That's going to be used. Estrus is in a bad spot, though. The, here comes the boat, the chrono. That's the first one of the day, but they found the one and they found Palos. And the Earth Splitter's on the back end of this. TA does go down. Palos just gets a wave of terror. Alacrity, as he's got Magnetize on top of him, and, but they want RR and they're going to continue to fight. But the Magnetize doing so much work. The silence, the damage, it's all over the place and he keeps it going. Raging Potatoes is looking to just slow him down ghost has got nowhere to go the boulder one other time but ghost time walks to the high end magic missile but he should die and that's going to be a kill going the way of bdz this is the five man power coming up from execration with all the summon units that is just crazy how much the summon units are doing thanks to the auras coming up from wench and the beastmaster you cannot underestimate the summon units coming up from chan anymore and we have just said that Escritia has a lot of ways to deal with this Faces White and we can really see the slows, the stun, the silences coming up from Earth Spirit especially just shutting down this Faces White. Faces White has to be really careful approaching team fights from now on because he opt, he opt for the Battle Fury build, not the Manta build that can debuff the silence, dispel the silence, not the BKB as well. So it's gonna be, it's gonna take some time for Faces White to have the equipment to deal with this Earth Spirit. What a crazy fight. Oh, they found the X, they found BDZ. He quickly silences. The stomp is there, though. But Ken is now in position as well. Mortimer Kisses is going to rain on top of all of them. BDZ just trying to just scurry away. Oh, he does get away, at least at, for now. Raging Potato is going to roar. He's going to look to go, but the boat in as well. The stomp one other time. Palos is looking to fight this. And it looks like it looks like everybody's going for it, but Raging Potato is now running. Nobody's really died. Everybody's getting very low. Raging Potatoes now should be fine. The board one other time. Ghost, he's looking for a bash. He does not get it. And he's been magical missiled, and that should be the end of that. Oh my god. Everything was so close. I think targeting uh, was a little bit off for Galaxy Razor. They're both BDZ and Raging Potato was about to die, but they just split their firepower onto this 2% and, and all their damage got divided. And after all, they actually get back off. To, their, to uh, safely, so definitely a huge loss, Galaxy Razor. But they are still looking pretty even so far. Looking at the skill score, looking at the map control, as well as the net worth, looks pretty dead even so far to me. Yeah. But everything is gonna change once they once TA gets to the Deso timing or the or the Blink Gate Dagger timing. Suddenly, it opens up a lot of opportunities for Roshan for tower pushing. I mean, Ken has not had the greatest of games. Even in that fight t at the T1 tower top, like Ken was just, he got killed early. But the thing is, is that Execration were able to win that game just on the back end of all the creeps that you talked about, um, the Magnetize, just all, all of that, just chaos. that just ended up winning them the game. So Ken now has actually been supported, so to speak, where he's given enough space where he could get scary. Bounty. Yep, yep, yep.
Oh, the dust. It looks like Palos, the though. The Pearl Strike, they found Palos. The Earth Splitter. Palos has got really nowhere to go. He's been set on back, and the and the Bash is going to be there. But Palos is just in a bad spot. Uh, Palos has to be careful, man. Even though you are playing the Vanch, but you need to know to yourself, you are a post one here. You are carrying with a, you are carrying a lot of net worth on your team. 6.7k. You can't afford to just see it so dangerously and so far away from your team. There's a lot of good catching abilities coming out from Galaxy Razor side. The X mark, the Sanking stun, good ways to punish you if you are just slightly out of position. Yeah. Like I don't know why there wasn't like one guy maybe in the back just like, you know, somebody to just swap back to. Right, like you need just like that emergency. It sucks for that guy to be that the guy that's just getting swapped into it, but you need somebody to just kind of like back up. Hmm. Yeah, or at least just play a little bit safer and a little bit near to your team, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean that'd be right. ideal, but if you're gonna make a play and trying to get something, I mean you need probably a like a, a like a buddy, like a safety buddy to kind of just help you out just in case. I thought they would get set for that guy though. That is gonna be the <laughs> escape goat for Palos. <laughs> yep. But looking at TA, not the best Deso timing uh, ever, but you have gotten that. You have got the Venture Street to ML, all the damage that you have. The, I would say oh. Execration are looking much stronger than they should be right now, given that they are not having the net worth lead. They're actually able to do Roshan, but Outer Titan, look at 343. He has already put in down the the career on the Russian pit to scout this out. Oh, the epicenter's been channeled. They get the pearl strike, but only on Palos, who's been swapping him back out. The earth splitter, the boat combo, and they do get Palos solo, but the hand of God keeps him alive just for a little bit longer. But the Mortimer kisses will end up killing him, and that will just kind of uh, they get the torrent on raging potato, and they want more. They got the pearl strike really simple on him, but the roar has now been used. But that's really not the one you want. The roll in from BDZ now is creating a little bit of chaos. We've magnetized, the dust has been used. Ghost is looking to fight this. He's focusing right on Raging Potato. BDZ is on a killing spree. He's getting, now the Chrono has now been committed. Ghost ends up killing him and he gets Raging Potato, but dude, does he want more? BDZ kicks away Ghost and it looks like they want Ken, which is the bigger fish. They had him X just in case, but with three down, I don't think you can even defend against Roshi. Man, Howler, Howler, this is support winning the game for their course. 343 was so smart to put his um, career in at once to scout out this Russian fight, but BDZ though, he wants to go in, he wants to set his ages. He gets the roll in, the boat has been committed, and Dyer does get it, Ghost as well, so that's gonna be uh, just a dead Earth spirit. Set sail for fail. Yeah, he almost put an Apu here, and also the Centaur though was very close in snatching or denying the ages away, but. What a play, what a vision coming out from uh, 343. To, just to put a career there in at once to scout out the potential Roshan because he knows that as the creations line up, they are always looking for an opportunity to sneak Roshan and they perfectly counter that. And this might just be the game winning core because taking away the Aegis from the TA, this shuts down the, the possibility of TA just snowballing with the Aegis and taking away most of the towers and team fight. And right now, Kanka has already gotten himself the Heaven's Halberd, one of the best items to counter both the Vengeful Spirit and the TA. Galaxy Razors are looking super strong right now and very confident as well. I mean, Ken was pushing the bottom lane pr prior to that, that Roche attempt, and he got Divine Favored into the pit. So they thought they could be a little sneaky just because they would show bottom, but then all of a sudden be somewhere else and taking that up strategic objective. But Galaxy Racer was like, oh, we saw this a mile ahead, and they were right on point, and they were able to counter that and get Roche on themselves, which is a pretty huge strategic uh, objective at this point. Yep, that was a very good offense coming out from Escalation, but just way better defense coming uh, from Galaxy Razor. So huge, big plays coming out from these two teams, and and this is why like we we have we have been saying right, this is the the one series that we are most looking forward to, mm -hmm. and it's definitely it's definitely closer than we thought it would be, or at least myself. Yeah, it's really. This is why though he went for the Battle Fury build, which is what which is one of the most popular build that. Um, 23 Savage has been lacking a lot recently, giving you the having the mass of Magnus first, giving you the ability to farm and also fight. And Battle Fury, just a very good flash farm item that carries you through the very awkward mid game timing for Faces White. 
I, I think it's even better in this game because of the fact that there's so many creeps, so many, you know what I mean, things that just get in the way. So just having that Battle Fury just, I, I, I think it's an overall really good item for him in this game. It definitely has a lot of value. But looking at the top lane, Execration wants to make a move here and KOX is already positioning himself here for his right defense. Too. Right next to him, he just right clicks him straight out of that. KYXY just burrow strikes away. They do have the trap, but that's really not enough time. But they can use the roar on Ghost, and that's the one they want. And Aegis has now been popped. Mortimer kisses are hopefully Zona, but here comes the boat, and Alacrity just deletes him. And he looks to go. Ken is down already, and BDZ's gone too deep. Ghost and time walks that way, but he probably should have gone the other way and try to catch as much as he could. Very good move coming up from Galaxy Razor, good rotations. And I am very surprised that Execration actually committed themselves to the Fistless Void there because TA has no BKB so far. Once you committed yourself into such a deep position, there's no way out. Kunka is always going to be eyeing on, be eyeing on you. And Raging Potato just barely walks out of the vision from Alacrity here. Any teamfight victory here for Galaxy Razor is a big win because they are not supposed to be the one leading right now given how the draft was proposed Execration, they want to be the one controlling this game Galaxy Razors, all they wanted to do is just to buy time for Face and Sword to come big for Kunkka to get to his really tanky items but having the lead right now for Galaxy Razor is just a big, big bonus I mean, for themselves is it over for Execration? because I feel like, you know what I mean? like their, their lane up was to push and to go early and they haven't gotten any of that so it feels like that's that entire approach has just been completely thwarted Yep, I would say the, the idea of death balling is definitely off here for Escalation, but don't but we cannot count that up just yet because the explosiveness of their draft is still there. If you're able to get just one or two small streamers just going on to the way of you, uh to be favorable for you, Escalation can just rely on that and take down a lot of the towers in one go, given how strong and how aura stacked their their lineup is so galaxy razor still they need to be super careful here we have seen this mistake coming out from galaxy razor when they're up against neon a few day, uh, two days ago where they just have 10k goalie they, they lose one fight and all of a sudden the game changed this could happen as well against escalation's lineup okay so just at a moment's notice like it, you know the game can turn on its head so to speak so okay i see that but i mean when you have as Galaxy Racer, your T1 mid, your bottom T1 still standing, you're kind of like, I'm okay. I'm in a good position considering I've only lost for one tower throughout this entire game. Yeah, definitely. It feels much comfortable for Galaxy Racer right now. All they have to do is minimize their mystics, minimize heroes that get kept caught out by Raging Potato. Pearl Strike into the stop. They do have the Veil, the Epicenter, the Earth Splitters all being channeled and the Gobble Up. It is going to throw Alacrity into that just to get some Radiant's assist gold. Tower is under attack. And that's the Academies of Sanfire coming in handy. Very good usage and they will be able to take away this top tier one. And then eventually just sit on the high ground, sit on the triangle of Escration. All they want to do is to take away the high ground advantage that they have. And most importantly, the, die, the Roshan advantage too. And they got the, the T1 top already. They were going to try to, you know, they pretended to TP bottom T1, but they canceled the TP actually, and so they just continued on with the T1 top. But they got that very quickly. Um, quick little happened? pause here because BDZ just de DC'd. But okay, what do you do as execration? Like, how do you get back into this game? Other, you know what I mean? Like, wh what do they need to do to to snowball to to kind of get themselves back? One thing for sure is that you are as as execration, you are not looking to take five on five team fights for now especially uh, BKB is up on Kunkka. So all you want to do is to utilize the vision that you have on Beastmaster and just try to grab yourself some pick-offs. You want to pick up hero left and right, making sure that Galaxy Razor has no, is not in position to pull out their five-man Wombo Combo team fight ability. And that's how you win uh, and or at least come back a little bit into this game. You want to be able to catch and then hopefully lead that into the second Roshan and claim the ages on the TA, and that's one way of coming back into this game. Okay, okay. All right. I mean, it's just one way. Hopefully, uh, they can kind of work it out because uh, they have a long uphill battle in front of them. This is not the easiest of games to come back from. Uh, but 5K down, and you know, in, in terms of kills, it's a bit of a wash in terms of 1915. But the net worth is the biggest one because of all that tower gold. 
exactly. And Galaxy Rigger, Razor looking at their movement. They want to move down here and try to take this tier 2 towers away. And, or at least just absorb all the map control coming out from Excretion. They have, they have the power to do that though because they are definitely just much stronger right now than the Execration and all Execration have to do is to avoid team fights. That's why they are just splitting the map up, dividing, they are dividing the map control, making sure that they don't get choked by Galaxy Razor so early in the game. Yeah, but Faces has got what? He's got Manta, he's got Battle Fury, MOM already. I mean, like it, it's scary. Ghost is definitely getting to that point. Oh, uh, they found the X in and the Beastmaster, Raging Potato, is getting bursted, and he does get killed. Oh, uh, they got the Gobble up, and they got BDZ. They're looking to go. The Snapbar Cookie is going to lock in BDZ, and they get the Scatter Blast, and he's going to die there. They're looking to... Uh, thank God Ken for, thank God for yep. Escalation. The one that fall wasn't uh, wearing the Ventral or the PA, but... SSP. Newels, they found Palos, the Burrow Strike, the Elder Titan is nearby, but the X is going to stop him from going anywhere, but the boat is going to be committed on Palos as well, and that's the one with the Torrent, and Alacrity get, is a dominating streak. Very good punishment from Galaxy Razor so far. Top lane though, Ken has to be really careful because there is a step fight behind. Oh, and the Mortimer Kisses with the Chrono Ken not being able to do anything in the long range. Mortimer Kisses just killing the Chen army. RR is trying to run away, trying to TP, but a dilation. No, Yules is going to be there. They have him committed. The Snap Art is going to miss, but RR is running for his life. He's been scatter blasted and he's been running into the trees, probably crying for Mama. But no, Ghost is going to get a double kill. Uh, at this point, it just feels like as a creature, they have to throw body left and right just to stop the tempo coming up from Galaxy Razor. All they want to do is just flip push as far as possible. But the catching ability is just too strong for Galaxy Razor so far. Raging Potato. They found him again. The stop. Leap, the Earth Splitter, but Roar's been committed. But no, 343 with the staple gun punches him in the head. Oh, 7k goalie just happens just like that. It was 4k goalie just a, just a minute ago. Thankfully, Roshan still a little bit longer. Uh, uh, Burrow strike, they found Palos with the Veil, and then the Stomp, the Torrent, just the entire combination, and he's now been x Here comes the tour or the Boat, and that's going to be another dead Palos. Radiance middle tower is under attack. It just seems like another tower will just be claimed by Galaxy Razor. So far, I believe this is like a what? 8 to 0 trade so far. Galaxy Razor have, hasn't have any one fallen just yet. And it's just Galaxy Razor been chasing out uh, Escalation so far. It has been a huge drought for Escalation for the past 5 minutes or so. They have to get themselves some footings into this game, especially now that Kia has oh. the BKB up. He tried to go for the gobble play, but Ken just blinks away. He's fast fingers and he's going to TP. I mean, he's providing a little bit of space. X in. They found BDZ. 343 is running for his life now. They're going to look to back up. Ghost, Torrent. They got BDZ and he does die. Roshan is up, I believe. Look at the mini map and Kanka just. 1k one, one away from the Assault Kiras and when that's up, there's going to be a lot of survivability coming up from Galaxy Razor. Butterfly done on Faces White already and, and the Monkey King War is nowhere near for TA right now. She doesn't even have much space to farm. Oh, they found Raging Potato one other time. The Roar has been committed but Hand of God as well. Here comes the boat. But Ken's been BKB'd and that's the reveal and he's looking to fight this but Ken is getting focused and he can't actually outfight this and he goes down. Palos is now gonna have Manta there. KYXY just body blocking the magic missile. Not enough wave of terror as well and he's looking to do this and if anything Palos got the career. RR is gonna get time dilated and you know destroy there the time lock and everything with Ghost and now they're gonna focus on this T3 mid. I mean, just 10 minutes ago, I believe that the Q score was even. And it, it was like a 15 to 14 or 15 to 15. And all of a sudden, it's 15 to 31 right now. It feels like a 16 to nothing run for Galaxy Razor that Escalation haven't been getting a single kill for the past 10 minutes. 
as Galaxy Rangers are just doing everything they want, everything they wish in this in this past 10 minutes, given that you know the just how big LFT was in this game, and we have said this at the very beginning of the draft. Kanka is going to be the one that set up all the tempo for Galaxy Rangers, and he did perfectly just just for his team. Yeah. So okay. I mean, they like they won the laning phase. They just kind of destroyed it, and then now you know, uh, Ghost has just kind of gotten out of hand in terms of itemization. Uh, Alacrity has been on point as well, but like they've just completely destroyed you know this game from beginning to end. I would say. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, Lane Palos is working his way to his BKB. His five hundred go away, but even with this BKB, what? What else can he do though? He's just he's just gonna he's just looking to use this PKP to help himself survive. It's not a killing item whatsoever. Radiant I feel like Escalation right now they're just busy surviving rather than fighting back against Galaxy Razor. And that's what worries me a lot. Oh, and Roar, and they did find him, and Alacrity is getting a little low. Snapfire cookie for the save, but he's looking to fight. Ken is just truly what Ken Pearl Strike on Palos. BDZ, he comes rolling on in, he's got the magnetize. Snapfire's down already, but here comes the Chrono on the back end. Found Ken and Chen together. And with the Battle Fury just doing a lot of work, BDZ misses the roll. And it looks like Alacrity is just trying to get him. He's been silenced, and he gets... And BDZ ends up getting that kill, so they get something out of this. But that's... He's the lone survivor, at least for now. BDZ just trying to roll out. He does get away. He does have that long range. Oh, but the time walk still continue to run. He's persistent as ever. And BDZ is going to place a ward and TP away, and he does get away. The only Radiant's one. Top tower is under yep. attack. Nonetheless, a great team fight coming up for S3, uh, Galaxy Razor, and they'll just walk right into Roshan Pit and claim these ages on, on the goals. Pretty clean game for a goal so far, very on point Colonel Spirit as well. And with these ages on him, as well as the Satanic, I don't, I really don't know how Escalation kills this guy unless goes really over uh, overextend his own position but yeah, without that if ghost plays this clean it just looks like a it, it's it's galaxy racers game to lose right now at this point i think it's almost insurmountable at this point this lead that he has i mean 22k net worth lead or sorry 22k net worth versus ken which is 1300 or 13,000. excuse me Right, this is a pretty massive lead that he's got, plus the fact that he's only died once in this game. He's 12 one and 6 so just like, how do you kill Ghost? What do you do? Yeah, there's still one way they can do that though. You, you could always just swap Ghost when he's trying to uh, come through your high ground, swap him into a, into a raw, and try to take out the first life. Uh, there's, there's this possibility that it all comes off the execution though. It almost feels like this has to be a perfect execution. Otherwise, KYXY is going to jump in with the huge um, epicenter and burrow strike. And that's where you know that things have gone south. Also, 3 for 3 with the insane amount, insane ability to counter initiation with the Echo Storm too. You have to be really careful of this counter initiation coming from Galaxy Razor. So, like their team, it, has to, it has to be yeah. a perfect, it has to be a perfect execution. But it's so difficult. I mean, you, you talked about the Stomp, but they got the Bow, they got the Sand King, like, the Chrono, like, there are just so many different ways. And look at this, Palos is getting, I mean, look at how low he gets. Yes, they got the Roar, and that's gonna expend it, and that's gonna be Ghost Walk, or is a Ghost Time Walking that away? But it looks like Aegis has been popped, but Palos is dead, no buyback. The Burl Strike is now gonna hit onto Ken. He's been Yules, the Boat is now coming, Ghost is back. Earth Splitter is going to be committed as well, and BDZ gets destroyed. And it looks like they're just going to focus on Raging Potato. They even kill his boar. I mean... And a Chrono for the, the Disrespect Fountain Dive into a GG Galaxy Racer with that win. 33 minutes, 40 to 17. I mean, it was pretty much systematic from them, right? Yeah, that was the last, that was the last hurrah coming out from Execration. And we talk about the perfect execution. It didn't happen. I, I'm not sure what happened at the very beginning, but Wenchpu just got caught off by Faces Why They tried to bring down the first life. But after that, they just don't have enough firepower to keep dishing out to punish the Faces Why until Alacritic comes in with the, with, the, um, with the boat. Everything is just over. Yeah, I, I felt like just... 
you want to push, you want to end the game, and you you must have an awesome laning phase. And they just really like it was kind of like a mix. Like they kind of were like even, but with this lineup, it's definitely you don't want to do that. And they focused on Ken. They made sure that he had a really bad game or a really rough start. And I mean, you put a TA behind, he has a hard time catching up. Oh yeah, definitely. I think Ken has to readjust his mindset coming up into this kind of coming out in this kind of matchup because you are playing a, you are playing a TA right he doesn't want to just keep staying in the mid lane with such low HP trying to outplay yeah um Alacrity you want to make sure that you put you want to make sure that you push out the lanes and then just doesn't want to lane this Kankai at all because there's yeah. just too much killing threat killing potential mm -hmm. okay and so as you saw that highlight there that was first blood that was given up by Ken uh, really nice play by Kunkka there. Alacrity just outplaying him. And the lucky viewer for this one is going to be Godwin Janeo. We're going to reach out to you. We're going to find out how to get you those Dota 2 cosmetics. So please, a uh, really good job of just making sure that you're eagle-eyed and catching the, all of the little chats that we have. And they're going to be out throughout the entire game. Uh, but we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to be back with Game 2 very soon. But it's going to be Galaxy Racer Execration Game 2 coming up very, very soon. We'll see you soon. สวัสดีค่ะโนอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวทโนอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็นไทยแลนด์แอมบาสเดอร์ของท็อปแคน สนใจก็เข้าไปดูรายละเอียดตรงลิงก์นี้ได้เลยเดี๋ยวเนยจะขึ้นลิงก์ไว้ให้นะคะส่วนตัวเนยแบบเนยชอบเล่นมาเวล
Joining it are the newcomers Dota 2 for PC, Tekken 7 for PC, and Marvel Super War for mobile. Competing the least is Tom and Jerry Chase also for mobile, with its top lens appearance being its first esports event in Southeast Asia. Top Lens 2020 will fuel the passion of countless gamers around the world with the total prize pool of 85,000 US dollars. I am a gamer, creator, and Facebook streamer. I've been playing video games growing up, but never in my wildest dreams that I imagined doing it for a living. I officially started streaming over a year ago when Amplify gave me the opportunity. Since then, I have expanded not only the games I'm playing, but also my community. And the most important thing is that I find passion in playing games. I mainly stream mobile games and I occasionally play computer games. As for me, passion is doing something without you even knowing it. It's like a part of you is missing if you're not doing that particular thing which in my case is playing games and interacting with the people I met online which are now my friends. Toplands 2020 tournament will begin on September 25 and we can watch through Toplands 2020's official channel. Their official Facebook page is facebook.com slash official and their official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Let's follow the game together and say this is possible! Welcome back to Top Clans 2020 Dota 2 SCA Invitational. This is going to be game two between uh, Galaxy Racer and Execution. My name is Huller and I'm with Arthur. How, how did you feel about game one? Yeah, very good game coming out from um, Galaxy Racer. It feels like a big difference from the games we had yesterday. Uh, this is all about disciplinary, super clean execution as well. Yeah. Galaxy yeah. Racers are doing the things that they should be doing and avoiding the mistakes that they are supposed they are not supposed to be doing so i'm i'm very happy with the performance from, from galaxy razor but as for aspiration side they they went for this very one dimensional draft which is the five man death for like pushing lineup and for this kind of drop to run you just couldn't give away any kind of single mistake everything has to run perfectly but ta not having the lane is just the one big things that didn't have their whole entire lineup going is this more of a draft issue or more of a playstyle thing from execration i would say the playstyle definitely has no issue because on paper it does seems like a very strong five-man unit it's just that the the way they played it out is just a little bit questionable because you have ken on the ta at the mid lane always constantly trying to bring down alacrity he's always trying to outplay alacrity with very less status and that just gives a lot of room that just opens out a lot of room for mistakes for him to commit to and with that two kills that alacrity had on him it just breaks the entire idea of aspirations lineup which is to just keep the snowball going all uh, all ken had to do was just avoid that and focus on his own farm <laughs> i'm kind of feeling like the ta pick was a little too soon like I, I look at TA kind of like a Meepo in the sense that like you you last pick it into like its most favorable matchups, right? Like I think that they picked it a little bit early and I felt like, oh, we can just kind of protect it by bands and stuff like that. But as you can see, like he really struggled against this Kanka. Yeah, that's the thing about having first pick, right? Because mm -hmm. you you wouldn't have the last pick. You have mm -hmm. so e either your fourth pick or fifth pick the TA. It wouldn't make a difference. GS GXR still have the last pick to counter this TA. So the point is, if you're running, if you're having first pick, do you want to have such a big, um, su such such a mid laner that suffers from a lot of the counters? Normally, you will see the TA being picked at the second pick at the, at the very last to make sure that yeah. this TA has no counter in the game. So yeah, that's that's yeah. my only issue here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I agree 100%. I felt like just that the whole fact that like, you know, Alacrity was actually out able to one-on-one -on -one outplay him. Um, it just it just goes to show just you know, like why you don't really pick that hero in that position. Yeah, definitely. But Ken's okay. hero so far though, he has been playing 
in Walker, TA, it seems like most of these heroes are really highly dependent on how the lane goes. Mm -hmm. So I would say snatching the second pick away is definitely very important. And in this case, Escalation, they do have themselves the second pick. So I want to see them utilize this and pick Ken, a hero that can really shine with the, with the last pick. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, and Galaxy Racer, you know, again, just really loving this Snapfire. If it ain't broke, why fix it? They go right back to it. It also just opens up so much um, synergy as well. Mm -hmm. You could have the Snapfire Clockwork synergy, Snapfire Faces Void synergy, and especially with the Agonies build up, you can actually just throw Gobo up and throw anyone in to the team fight and start the super amazing team fight. So, mm -hmm. like you say, if it ain't broke, why break it? Yeah, my 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 only concern is, as a creation, do you really prioritize this Venomancer pick so much that you want to let go the snap fire though? Mm -hmm. So we know that the Nyx was a hard counter to it. What else do you think that's kind of just destroys the snap fire? This is going to be hard because it feels weird just to pick a hero, a couple of heroes just to counter this potentially post five mm -hmm. snap fire because if Galaxy <laughs> Razor sees too much of a counter for this snap fire going, they can just simply switch this to a post five and all the yeah. counters coming out from Execration would just be worthless. Uh, that's why it's hard. I think mm -hmm. maybe, I think you want to come out with a draft that just can ignore the power of snap fire, pick mm -hmm. yourself heroes that can build the pipe build the Garden Grief so they can sustain through the power of the Mortimer Kisses, etc, etc. Or just mm -hmm. pick heroes that can really just, the one hero that can jump to the back line and find the staff every single time. It's like the White Spirit, like the Clockwork. And as we speak, Clockwork will yep. be the choice of Execration. Okay, okay. I know, I see it, I see it. But like, okay, if you're Ice Frog here, what do you do to Snapfire to kind of balance them out a little bit? Pixel, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just say that Aghanim's build, the Aghanim's rush thing is just mm -hmm. too strong right now for stat fire. You might want to look at the Aghanim's effects. I think the other spells are okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, have, they have done a couple of rounds of nerf on stat fire spells. It's just that the Aghanim's is just way too strong right now. Okay, okay. I mean, I've only seen it in my Five pubs where remaining. the stat fire eggs ends up gobbling me and throwing me into Radiant my own death. Never like a good thing, like where you do strategically where it's like saves you, you know what I mean? Like it has so many options, right? So it'll be interesting. I mean, it's like we've seen just how good it is and, you know, the pros definitely play it. They know how to use it. They don't really grief too much with it. So uh, just a different level. Mm -hmm. And speaking, of, speaking about this Mars pick though, I'm not sure how good this Mars can be because you're picking it into a tusk and Tusk can always just easily use his snowboard to protect his pals that is getting caught in the arena. Mm -hmm. So I would say Tusk have a very good value here. And 343 is a big Tusk player too. It, it has potential. Again, I, I don't know. I kind of look at Clock and Mars as kind of being one and the same, right? I mean, he has like a baby arena in the sense of like the cogs, right? But he's like kind of like creating a controlling space but the fact that you have like two heroes that are really going to be doing this i don't think they really complement each other very well so again I, i'm just not a huge fan of execration's draft so far yeah true it feels like a li little bit overkill on dis disability also snapfire and tusk they have their own ways of getting out of the cogs as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so also also man since we are mentioning snapfire and tusk there's a lot of flexibility too this task could easily be post four or three, uh, post four or five, and Snapfire's role are still uncertain right now at this point. Okay, okay. I mean, uh, interesting enough, Galaxy Racer bans out the AM. What about that lineup, Mars Clock, that you're like, oh, I think that AM is actually a good complement to that. Radiant team back. Mm. Maybe Galaxy Racers are thinking themselves, uh some some intelligence hero or maybe they they just want to play a very fast tempo and five man unit team so they mm -hmm. they they are just banning out heroes that can that they are super strong when it comes to the late game and have the ability to speed push so be have anti-mage and morphling out of the picture they are gonna fix they are gonna force execution into picking yeah just carries that couldn't really do the speed push very well and they are picking lifestealer into task 
which is not the best case because Tusk always have the uh, water sponge to, to cancel off the rage or the rage yep. TP. And so I, I, looking at the three picks coming of excursion so far, I feel like this life is a little bit too early. It seems and, like they're okay. And all all right. right. So Timber is, <laughs> that's a great pick here. What can I say? <laughs> As a creation, yeah. I just, we, we, have, we have to say this in the in the pre-game analysis, right? As a creation, mm -hmm. they are great in identifying the weakness of opponent in draft. Mm -hmm. And Galaxy Razor, they have 3 for 3 as the drafter. He has the same ability or even better to do that. And this Timber Saw pick just totally exploit the weakness of Execration. How are you going to do with this? Well, how are you going to do with this Timber Saw now? Yeah, with the Viper, I it seems. I mean, Viper is one way, but it's kind of like... It's, it's a difficult way to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the best, hardest counter, or so to speak, but... Execration right now, like they have, you know, a whole bunch of melee, you know, heroes aside from the Viper, but like this Timber just hard counters everything right now. So they need, really need some sort of magic to kind of just help blow this guy up. And that's not the easiest pick going in. Yep. And look at Execration. They are lacking of a post fall here. And otherwise, unless they want to put Clover as a post fall. I think you do. Um, I think you do. Yeah, I think you Maybe. do, right? Because you, you don't want to have the Clover and Love Stealer against the Himmelsaw. You want a a magical post five hero that can kind of zone the timber saw out of the lane but there's uh -huh. just not much heroes that can fulfill that role though yeah like i was thinking maybe you do clock five mars four but i think that's really underwhelming in the lane especially against the timber saw so i don't know i don't know what what, what would you pick here if you're execration well normally you want to have post five that have got a lot of magical burst in the, yeah. in the lane so that you can force the team out of the lane or maybe find some ways to kill him. I would say Oracle is one of the better heroes. Mm -hmm. Skyrath okay. used to be one hero, but Skyrath is just not exactly the best hero right now. So mm -hmm. maybe Oracle is that one hero that Excretion can consider about. I don't but know. They... Whenever I see a Viper, I'm always like, yeah, you have a good lane, but like it really doesn't carry the game for you. You know, it doesn't end up closing games out like a typical mid, you know, even or even an offlane Viper would do. Like, I just feel it's very underwhelming. So I'm not a huge fan of that pick there. Exactly. Most of the time you pick Viper knowing that you are 100% going to dominate the lane, the, the, the matchup mm -hmm. and also be uh, effective at the mid game against other heroes. But blind picking Viper into Alacrity though, Alacrity is going to come out with heroes that are able to completely you no know, farewell against this wiper. Yeah, yeah. Radiant. I don't. I don't know what you would do. What what you're looking for, but uh, Galaxy Racer are looking to protect their timber as they ban out the Zeus here as well. Um, actually, did they ban out the AM because because they were looking to pick the timber? I mean, even then, it's kind of like, is that really the Ten best seconds. hero to ban? Like I, the AM one befuddles me. I'm just stuck on that. Like I'm trying to think of the logic. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. I'll just say that AM is one of the heroes that Galaxy Razor doesn't want to play with with, with their idea of draft they are going in, mm -hmm. into this game. Like I said, okay. they might want to look for a very fast game or a mid game that is very afraid of split pushing. But having AM off the pool is always is always a one thing that you can be always happy about because you don't have you don't have this very big late game threat that you have to be always worrying about. Galaxy Racers, though, they are definitely in the driver's seat right now in this um, draft. You have TB against Lifestealer. You have Timber Soul against Tree Strength Hero. So no matter how I see it, I see that Galaxy Racers have a lot of advantage going into the game. Mm -hmm. But Execration, if anything, they have the last pick so they get to see something. It's going to be the Void Spirit. Um, he's probably expecting a Void Spirit versus the Viper. What do you think about that matchup? Well, this is just the most classic Alacrity hero. It's either the Ember Spirit or White <laughs> Spirit. Yeah. And you definitely need a, a Spirit hero Ten for you to remaining. create space in the mid game for this Tyro Blade to farm up. But White Spirit is not Five the seconds. best hero against Viper, though. That, that's something I worry about. But given Alacrity's ability, he's most famous of playing an advantageous line, disadvantageous matchup. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure Alacrity, if he doesn't make careless mistake he will be able to uh, survive through this lane and then make rotations to to the other side lanes okay 
so we know it. It's Grimstroke that you were talking about. Just that silence, the magic. It kind of, it, I mean, the silence is almost instant on the timber. So you definitely have some outs for that. It's not the hardest of counters, but it does work. Um, but Ken Viper, like, again, I, I'm not a huge fan of this mid. Mm. I'm okay, though. Like, Viper is not getting countered on the lane. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> He's like, in fact, he's actually having a pretty good lane. Viper versus White Spirit. If Viper yeah. is able to pop off, I can see him being very big in this game. Okay. But the problem is, like right here, you need to deal with this Timbersaw early game. Because if this Timbersaw is not dealt with, I can also see Timbersaw just completely snowballing this game over and put... And I have a lot of pressure into this mid game with, alongside with White Spirit. Do you maybe start this game as Execration as a, as a try lane maybe? To just kind of force out KYXY, force him to, you know, be back, not have those reactive armors, that early level three, just, you know, zone out as much as you can for Palos. That's a very good idea. I like that. I like try landing against Team Persaw a lot because level one to level three is the weakest point of a Team mm -hmm. it, it would be even better if you could force the Team Persaw to get Team Chain at level one. So I, I definitely yeah. think that try landing him is one way of dealing with him. Okay. Mars against TB plus that fire. I think Mars is going to do okay at the top lane one versus two, because Mars is not the easiest hero to to be killed. So I do like this tri lane proposition from you. Okay. All right. Well, I'm. A, I hope Execration is listening to the in on this, and then hopefully they're like, oh, we could use a coach, and they'll c contact me on this. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that, that would be the best, right? I can dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we know the lineups, we know the games, what's going on. Um, Galaxy Racer is already up 1-0. This is probably a must-win game for Execration. I think that, you know, coming out with a tie is definitely in their cards and then what they want to do. But what do you think and, and who do you think will win this game? Draft wise I'm definitely favoring Galaxy Racer. You have Team Bristol against Tree Strength. You have TB against the Nikes, and TB is just one of the best um, carry right now in the current meta, mm -hmm. given that Swan is not in the pool, Fister Swan is not in the pool. I don't see how Lifestealer can go head to head against the TB and this Wiper pick. You know that if Wiper doesn't start snowballing, he is gonna fall off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. He's gonna they are, yep, they are, they are definitely, they are definitely playing on the timer on Excretion and Galaxy Ranger. They they can just afford to shoot to chill a little bit until this TB become really um, fat and take over the game. Okay, are you saying that Galaxy Racer are winning because you're biased and this team is from Malaysia, so you're just rooting for them? Or is it just the draft? Be honest. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll think this is a draft. <laughs> if if they are, if they are if the team swaps around, you know, I'll yeah. say if Escalation have the draft of Galaxy Racer, I will definitely favor Escalation as well. Because okay. I'm, I'm just not a big, big believer of Wiper in closing up the game. And Nikes hasn't been the one hero that impresses me a lot when it comes to closing yeah. out games as a winning condition post one. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I feel like Nikes needs a lot of assist from the post two, simply mm -hmm. because of the inability of him just chasing one guy down. There's always a lot of ways to kite this Nikes around. And if your post two are not able to uh, fulfill that kind of role, Mm -hmm. Which in this case is a wiper. I, I I'm just not liking the chances of escalation mm -hmm. when it comes to late game. Yeah, and, and I agree 100. Like if if Ken was playing something a little bit more high impact, a little bit more tempo, maybe like a storm, something of that sort, I, I'd be okay with that because like you you have so many more options of just like kind of taking the fight to them. But what execration is kind of drafted is more of like. Yeah, you have, you know, the Mars and the, the potential initiation of uh, Clockwork as well. But at the end of the day, this is definitely more of a passive lineup, right? And I don't know if that's really the meta today where, you know, you just want to constantly just create a lot of pressure, take away space, let your TB farm, and then just end out the game. And uh, this is this is worrying going into game two. Definitely. But there's also one possibility that Escalation can be in that can always just rely on their snowball ability. In mm -hmm. that case... They have to do really, really well when it comes to the lane. Because mm -hmm. looking at the lineup, they are very good in punishing out of position hero. They are very good in punishing if a team is not playing with discipline. You know, you could you could easily just walk over them if Galaxy Racer does a lot of careless mistake. 
But so far, Galaxy Razor, they have been very disciplined. That's my biggest concern because you are hoping to beat the team by their strength. And mm -hmm. I I'm not liking their chances by doing that. Yeah. And Ghost here starting off the, the game with a bang in terms of summoning an Immortal Treasure 2. So no matter what, if he wins or loses this game, he actually gets something out of this, an Immortal Treasure. And and for the viewers at home, if you want to actually win treasures on your own, we are going to have some... Um, Throughout the game, we're going to have a little bit of chat that's going to come up. It's going to be a little message in the middle right of the screen. Uh, so please do stay tuned for things like First Blood, Triple Kill, Rampages, all of these things that could potentially happen. All you need to do is type it in, put it in the comments, and of course you will get those prizes. So it's the easiest way to win. So please do stay tuned for that. Um, but okay, we know the lanes. We know the the, the matchup. This Nyx Grim against the Timber Tusk. What are you thinking about this one? I'm liking the Tusk. I like the I like the decision. I like the decision that Galaxy Razor put the Tusk on the top lane simply because whenever Bruce wants to use the Ink Swall on the Nines to go on the Timber Soul, you can always just save Timber Soul with the Stone Ball. Mm -hmm. And I think that would help Timber Soul in just asserting his dominance on this lane. But we also see the aspiration they want to be offensive. Nines, he hacks, he has the black stone. On himself so they are definitely looking to punish this imbersal as much as they can yeah but you were talking about the tri lane it is not happening and i'm starting to be worried for execration <laughs> so i like even as the tusk i think you just give him a little bit of space you just kind of push it out just make sure that your timber gets going because i mean once that guy is again level three you're gonna have a hard time but uh bdz here is just trying to zone out as much as possible probably take the next creep wave but KYXY getting a little low to start this game. Well, Team KYXY also wants to be aggressive. He has the level 1 uh, Reeling Death. He wants to pressure out Palos a little bit, kick the Palos out of the lane too. That was a ballsy move though, because without the Timber Chain or without the Reactive Armor, you need to be careful here on KYXY yeah. as we see Destroys. It's already doing the lane shenanigans here, pulling off the wave. Oh, the well, it does end up connecting, and they're going to do a lot of damage. And KYXY with no reactive is going to just take a lot of that. So, um, in, in terms of healing and his regen is a sustain, he's going to have a little bit of an issue. But I think he has a salve coming on his chick. And so, uh, Paulus had actually taken back the entire uh, wow. creep wipe. Look at what 343 is doing here. Ah, he. He almost managed to aggro his own creep to the to the big camp, which is gonna be really big for them. But unfortunately, Regine, he manages to aggro back himself. It seems to be a pretty quiet two minutes so far. Alacrity is also doing fairly well here. Nine last hits already. Even he's up against Khan as a wiper. Has been killed. So he's starting off with a pretty decent start. I mean, nine zero oh, nine. Sorry. 10-0 versus the 8-2 and two of the Viper. So, I mean, it's a bit of a wash in the mid lane, but I think that's more of a testament to how good of a, a, a player Alacrity is. Oh, definitely. And also look at Alacrity. He just bought up the bounty room. This is something Galaxy Razor has been doing very well. They always leave the one bounty room for Alacrity to border up so that he will have enough regen to play against this Viper, especially when this is a disadvantageous matchup for him. So... This is something we all can learn, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if if opponents are paying attention to the stream and they get that little insight, that's a, that's a pretty sizable one. But Inkswell is going to be used. He's been sharded in. RR's trying to run. He gets the two-man stun, though. But the, the whirling... Uh, okay. And he's just going to run away from that. The whirling death is just doing so much damage whenever your enemy is being caught in the trees because those are extra magical damage pumping in. BDC, I'm two. still... Still not feeling the impact of this clock work though. You are you are yeah. letting go you are like you are letting go of the opportunity to try lane this team Mercer at level one. For what? That's my biggest concern. Oh, oh my wait. first blood Ken does get it. He's so low, he's at about 20 HP. And he's got creeped on his tail. But he, I think he's okay. He got his redemption kill <laughs> on the other PC. Oh, but Destris oh, is now here the shards, and Ken just sticking around. Destris like, this is the easiest kill ever. Yep, thank you for that. And now I'll just get border refill up by my, by my meat. Yeah, good, good rotation yeah. coming out from Destris. Was that 
he did he not back because it got DC'd? Is that what happened? No way, right? No way. I think so. That would be like, really why would you stick around, right? That was super risky. I'm not sure about that. I hope that's not the case because that might be very tilting. That could be really tilting. Yeah. You just feel, you you feel really good one second killing, killing, solo killing the enemy mid hero and then all of a sudden your screen goes black and then you die. Damn. Like, oh, yeah. That is not a good oh, feeling yeah. at all. All right. So we'll see. Um as he tries to reconnect here, but um, all right, last inning wise, I mean, 18 and two from your TV versus the 18 and two of Mars. So a bit of a wash in the, the bottom, but um, like, I, I don't know, like Mars just needs to kind of just be careful of the metamorphosis at any moment, but like Mars can farm. He does, he does fine against the TV, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think having Mars a uh, good lane is BDZ's job here. At least that's his purpose. But bottom lane, BDZ they got it with a snapfire cookie to start, and the tag team just doing a lot of work. And the snowballs there, raging potatoes like, I can't help you, brother. Oh, I can't room getting picked up by on the West Grid. Well, the best room that he could hope for. Very good to start, uh, but yeah. So things are a little bit quiet in that sense. But Raging Potatoes got the oh man, Ken just he has to dissimulate away because <laughs> Alacrity's gonna have a hard time in this lane. Yeah, Alacrity just like I'm done with this. I'm not <laughs> going to you know hold up the ego battle just to lane against you. I'm actually gonna oh wait, KYXY. Oh the inks well, and they've got them where they want them, but the reactive armor just out healing all the damage. <laughs> okay, right. Team is level 3 now. This is going to be so hard for Lifestealer to deal with. Ghost pops meta, and he's looks to go. Raging Potato taking a lot of damage, but he'll just kind of back away, and he'll just get a whole bunch of uh, creeps with that. Uh, imagine if this offlane is not the Team Bristol, they Galaxy Razor can easily just lose two lanes, and Escalation <laughs> can just snowball off it. But because of the Team Bristol pickup, they're able to survive through this was Spray versus Viper matchup and have destroys on the mid lane to get up the deck speed while Timbers are not getting punished. So this is yeah. a definitely a big, big win for Galaxy Razor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, just tremendous value there. Just you metamorphosis, you, you zoned out Raging Potato and then you got the stack. I mean, you even helped 3.3 uh, get some farm in as well uh, and XP. So, you know, I, I, I think Galaxy Razor are in a pretty good spot even losing the mid lane. Definitely, definitely. It's just like they are, they are beating two lanes right now in mid lane. But look, oh, they got the Phantom. They've got him in silence. He doesn't really have much. And he's getting slowly taken away. He does die. And it looks like they're going to glyph and counter glyph just to take this T1 mid. Good rotation coming out from Grimshook. But 3 for 3, as we see, he's also moving towards the mid lane, trying to defend his tower. They're, they're doing a lot of chip damage, which has been good for uh, Execration. And they, they wanted to push, and they probably should have been pushing like this last game, but unfortunately not able to do that. Shards are going to be a little off the mark. BDZ's here, he's got the cogs, and he's going to look to snowball forward. Destris is going heavy into him, the Scatter Blast slowing him down, but it looks like they're going to just retreat here, and Galaxy Racer are going to just get away with nothing. That's a good leader offense there, but not going to be enough though. Are they going to time this? Yes. Nicely done. Alacrity. Nice little deny there, yeah. yeah. Yep. But Ken with a two-level advantage. Alacrity has to dissimulate to the high ground. He's been chased. BDZ uh -oh. does see him. Now we'll be using a snapfire cookie. At least fine for now. The remnant, but he's been cogged on in. And the inkswell and the Alacrity again goes down. And 343 is running for his life. Go, snapfire, go. And he dies. All right. These are the baby steps that Asecration have to do. Or uh, if they want to, if they want to snowball this game, I, I feel like Galaxy Racers they are playing like Execration last game, mm -hmm. you know, Alacrity a little bit too forceful uh, in my opinion. I think I think he might just want to just stay in his initial um, idea, just to survive through the lane, get to level six, and then make his presence known at the side lanes, not on this wiper. You want to do your best to avoid this wiper, make the wiper rotate off the other lanes so that the mid lane is, will be open for the rest of the Galaxy's Razor's member. Mm -hmm. I think fighting into the Wiper is not the best decision here. Yeah, I, I, you, you kind of like got to look at him as like the timber in that sense. 
just like give him his space like at the end of the day you know as long as we survive to mid to late game i think we'll be fine but oh my god paul's taking a ton of damage he has to infest into a creep he takes that creep and he starts running and dexterous is uh is gonna attack. chase after him? no no they find the creep is under attack. okay oh you can make deliveries when you're infested okay <laughs> oh the tag team all right all right that's an end match but they got meta yeah. here and it's looking to take the top t1 wow last is rushing for the most from so uh, this is one of the way where you play against the uh, Timbersaw, so you want to have the Javelin, so hopefully you can prop some magical damage against Timbersaw because you know that physical is not going to do anything to him. And having a Mewstrom is just meaning that you have a lot of ways to catch up. Bottom lane though. Oh, oh no. 343 just barely able to TP on out. Raging Potato was suspected something, he was trying to find him, but the spear was a little too late. Mm -hmm. 1k go late and ready for excretion. Pretty decent. But Ken has to be careful here. Oh, they found Ken with a snowball, snapper, cookie as well, and Ken going down, and that's a streak. You don't want to give those up. Three pieces of mm -hmm. Carlos will just let him go. Bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, nice decision from Ghost actually. Like he he ditched his safe lane very early on, just to, uh, to the top lane. Pop his mana mark fistus to take down the lane and now he could just leave and breathe in his triangle this is what a tb wants to do you don't want to be laning um for too long because you always you, you know that you are always more efficient when you're in the jungle especially in a triangle so mm -hmm. very good decision making coming here from ghost so far and palos as well going for the maelstrom first i like it a lot it ensures your ability to um, to flash bomb and also to just catch up to this tb yeah and They've got three heroes top execution, but KYXY sees that and he does Timber Chain away. Got it. Yep. There's one thing though, I, I feel like a lot of the more immature or inexperienced Timber Saw would do is to extend their um, their strength. You, you always see this Timber Saw overestimating themselves and then just die one or two times by bottom lane, 3 for 3. Oh. He's under this tower, and the Snapfire Cookie is going to actually stop Raging Potato for now. So step in to dissimulate, and that's going to be a kill going the way of Alacrity. So worth it for the next Raider. This is so worth it. Suddenly, with Mars down, you are able to clear out the bottom lane that is getting pushed so uh, so far away uh, by this Mars. And all of a sudden, the space that you uh, occupied is, is now gone. So big yeah. loss for, uh, for Excretion there. I mean, execution to to their point or to their you know their team doing well is that they've gotten both the T1 mid and the bottom T1, so that's a really good start. But they haven't been able to kind of push beyond that. And I mean, Palos and KYXY still like uh, like this is a better love story than Twilight. They've been together for 11 minutes now. <laughs> both both of these players are not just just not backing up, but actually, Ghost has been killed. Uh, we we didn't quite catch that, but. I'm not sure what happened in there, but that definitely was a very good kill for Excretion. But I want to see them forcing issue harder here on Galaxy Razors or even try to take out the top tower so that they could actually go into the triangle. Because right now they haven't been they haven't stepped their foot onto the triangle yet. Oh, they do have vision for that. The dissimulate the Mortimer kisses and the snowball. They found Ken, the walrus punch is there, slowing him down a little bit, but Destris has gone a little too deep. He's gonna get slowly whittled down, and he does get killed for now. That's a streak. The stroke is gonna miss. Radiant's three, four, three, running. Under and all they got was Destrus. As a creation right now, they are putting a lot of firepower onto the bottom half of the map. But I'm not sure if this is the best place to be crashing at, because you know that the TV is gonna spend most of his time, most of his time at the triangle. I would say the top part of the map is the most crucial part of the map for you to mm -hmm. pressure right now, not the bottom lane. Yeah. Uh, they found Desdra's uh, 3.3 just a little too deep. Well, I mean, execution that is. They went a little deep just trying to get it, but they got something out of it. Ken's been pushing the mid lane, so a lot of space is being created. Mm -hmm. However, that being said, though, if you are able to get some free kills, then why not? Mm -hmm. Ghost top and Desdra's are making their way top. They're going to try to find out Palos. 
play it. I mean, he's completely full right now. And he's literally just trading shots with KYXY. He does see them now. Tag team, but he's going to rage. The shards, the walrus punch. And they're looking to turn this. But Ghost is actually not committed meta. They got the snowball. They do find the creep, though. And he gets away. And he actually chat wheels. Surprise. Good play coming here from Palos. He almost got baited, though, but this, as we speak, there's a three-man smoke coming here from as creation. And you can see the line being drawn. Now they are going for the triangle. They are hearing us. I mean, of course not, but they are, they are sensing the urgency to shut down this TV. But it's been popped. The stroke has been used, but on BDZ, and he's got the Inkswell hook shot, and he locks in. And his ghost actually just uh, sunders that one, but he's been stuck on in BDZ trying to go for the snowball, but it's actually a little too far, but they get something. The wall response on the clockwork and he dies as well, but it's a two for one, pretty good deal. Jules, they found him. Uh, the arena is going to be used, but uh, Mars just gets destroyed. Ken, Ken is there. The stroke, or sorry, the ink does end up connecting at least onto Alacrity. He's been slowed down. And the Timber Chain, Ken, just trying to outfight this, but the Astral step away, mm -hmm. Alacrity getting a low. Ken does die as well as Alacrity, so it's not the worst trade. Palos is now here. They've got the Silence on KYXY. The Rage as well as the Inks. Well, and it does connect on the two, and they get three for three. KYXY is a little low, and he's looking to fight this. Palos is looking to just man fight the Stroke. Oh, the, sorry, the Shard actually does block him away, and uh, Timber does get away. The amount of magical damage from both sides are actually pretty insane. I did not expect Wiper to die so quickly there, but the mm -hmm. Chakrams, the, the Timber Chain was just doing too much damage on the Wiper. Wiper has to be more careful, but Palos, he's going on I'm Ghost. Deep. He really wants Ghost, but he sees the TPs and he kind of, uh, he took like a, like he made a right when he should have made a left, but the Snowball forward, they found RR, so they got something out of this. Alacrity gets that one, he astral steps to the high ground, and it looks like the, the Chakram is slowing down the approach, and here comes Ghost, he does have meta, and he ends up destroying Clock there. BDZ goes down, Rage is gonna be used for Palos, and they got the, the Timber Chain, Infest in, Raging Potato. He's trying to re regroup with Ken, but they still want to fight. The Snapfire Cookie and the Infest is now going to be used. The Shards as well. Snapfire does go down. He gets destroyed very quickly. Snowball forward. They get Ken. And he got the tag team as well. And Ken is just trying to man fight this. But he gets pulled back by the Remnant. But the Arena is here. And Palos is looking to turn this around. He does have a Kinnick Ghost. He's looking to turn this right onto KYXY. He gets a bunch of right clicks. The Phantom is there. The Silence as well as the Inkswell. And he's been stunned. He could not Timber Chain away, and Palos is just right-clicking him. It doesn't care about your reactive armor. But yes, he gets away at the last second. Oh, it seems like a pretty even winner. trade to me, but they want more, though. Alacrity. Mm -hmm. he All right, he's going to play safe. He's going to play safe. But Viper, one thing to note that he's going for the Orchid build. So nothing like the Guardian Greaves, nothing like the Hood. He's going full offensive here, which is... A good idea. Oh, the remnant just barely connects into RR. The dissimilate hits on the two. The snowball, the walrus punch on RR. The spear pushes him away, and they've been soulbound and silenced. But can they get more? Here comes Ken, and he's just looking to just poison attack all of them. And Alacrity goes down. Not much you can do. Destris almost got away. God's rebuke was there and says no. And they get more. Full shot might be coming in any second. Oh, the Rage is now going to be turned up on Palos. He's looking to fight this. He's getting a little low, so he doesn't need to be careful. But 343 gets, ex like, destroyed there. Timber just gets speared back. Does end up connecting. There's a tree? Anyways, he's been silenced. He doesn't have any mana. He's going to stick, try to keep alive. But the Timber Chain is not enough, and he does die as well. So that's a four for nothing going the way of Execration. Raging Potato has been so on point in this game. He's using Ice Shot to his own use. Getting Alacrity there was very big. Look at Alacrity's net worth. He's not even close to the Mars. Also, Raging Potato is really single-handedly putting his team on his back right now. And also, they are using, they are really utilizing this ink as well as goals getting scouted out by the rocket, by the rocket flare. He has to make a move yeah. right now. And TP is like trying to get Manta. He doesn't really have that first big item yet, but it, it, that's a pretty big power spike when he does get it. But he's been so busy fighting that he hasn't been able to farm enough right now. Oh, and they found RR. So that's another kill. And he, we were talking about how Alacrity can get back in the games, and this is how he does it. He just waits for the mid game and gets some pickoffs. Yeah, this is what Alacrity does the best, but you want to make sure, uh, as Christian right now, they, they want to make sure that 
you punish this alacrity and doesn't give him the space that he needs to come back you want to be the one making the move first this is how excretion has been winning winning the scrimmages so far and this is another reason why i'm not a huge fan of viper right we're seeing just the, like the lack of like he had a great lane but that's pretty much it here's the arena they get the spear raging potato getting killed and he does go down, Astral step away, BDZ does dies as well, that's two for nothing so far, and the Metamorphosis, does he get the Sunder? No, Ghost actually goes down, Alacrity goes down as well, and they've got both of the cores, and this is not good RR with the Inkswell, does end up slowly him down, the Shard is going to block the approach, but Palos is looking to turn this up, he gets Walrus punched away, KYXY gets to the high ground, the Chakram, he's looking to turn this, Snowball one other time, just to delay the inevitable, he actually picks up his friend, and he actually goes for both, but now the Inkswell was perfectly timed, and they get Destrix, and Palos is turning it up, he's looking to fight this, he wants to go for 3 4 3 the Snap Bar Cookie just pushing KYXY stun, doesn't really matter, KYXY doesn't really the damage, he Timber Chains away. Palos has been an unstoppable force so far, and I want to say one thing is that in swell usage has been perfect so far they are always getting multiple man stunned and even the wiper has always been the one that getting burst down super quickly in the fight but it doesn't change the fact that palos he has all the damage to to bring down this tb right now and as well and also the rest of the the team timbersaw always has been the one lonely survivor but what else can timbersaw do though when he's out of mana that's not, just not much so i'm really lacking excretions idea in the team fight that they are always ignoring the timber saw and go for the easy Q. Like I thought Ghost could get that Sunder off. That was like the biggest thing. If he gets Sunder off, that like completely changes the dynamic of that fight. But uh, Yules, Remnant, they found Raging Potato on the Walrus Punch and he gets Yules again. He's been glimmered, but they do end up killing him. They found RR, the Snowball with three of his friends and they've got him. Inkswell's not gonna go off there. And Palos is now here and they're like, hmm, can we take this guy on 4v1? doesn't look like it is 343 is looking to just tp away the cogs is a little slow and i think that you know Paulus is like Dyer's the police in the sense that he's just breaking up parties yeah remember us talking about discipline and this is galaxy Razor at their best disciplinary play because if this was mtg or a droid they'll definitely try to turn the game you know we just killed two guy we are three versus five why not we fight but knowing that their status are so low, Galaxy Racers know them to themselves they are not having a very great game. So any kill would be good. They don't want to force things too hard because when you're playing to oh wait mid lane. Uh, Astral Step, Yules, Remnants, and the Mortimer kisses. Ken is taking a ton of damage. He does get the silence on Alacrity, which he can turn this up so he actually man fights it and he wins. But he gets Walrus punched here, and that's a dead Viper. He flew in the air. That's the highest I've ever seen a Viper fly, and he just dies. Oh, I'm not sure if... Uh, well, yes, since Viper is so far ahead of One Spirit, getting a trade kill there should be good for Galaxy Razor as a team, but definitely not good if you're thinking from Alacrity's personal perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Ken, I mean, he had Orchid. That was the silence, which is like the big thing. And he's going to get BKB up next. But like, again, I, I, I just look at the skills of the Viper, and I'm just like, if they had any other mid... Could they have had a better game than what they're having right now? Most probably. Because they, they are they are picking Wiper just to counter this Timbersaw, but Timbersaw I mean Timbersaw have hasn't have a great game so far anyways. So with what is going on recently, uh, right now, I would say Ghost Flair is there. Meanwhile. They do find Ghost and they got him speared back. And do they have enough time? They with a nice hook shot there, that was perfectly timed, not even enough time to get the Sunder off. So Ghost goes down one more time. Dyer's bottom tower is under I'm really liking how Excretion is approaching to the game right now. They are being the predator. They are just looking for kills. They are punishing the speed push units from Galaxy Razor so far. And Palos, a little bit in danger, but he should be fine. Yeah. He should be fine. I mean, yeah, he's a little low, but I mean, his buddies are right next to him. It's more of a trap if anything else. Alright, Wipers BKP is going to be up soon. This is the biggest momentum swing for uh, Execration because Wiper has always been the first one to die in the team fight. With this BKB, is going to help him. Oh, RR 
found Alacrity. He's been stroked, and uh, he asked for some mm -hmm. back, but Pallas is now here. He does have the feast. The remnant is not going to be enough. The Yules, the Soulbind, so in case he gets near anybody, he does get near 343. He's been forced on back, but they're stuck together. The snowball safer, at least for now. They're looking to turn this. The Walrus Clutch on Reality, uh, on Raging Potato. Alacrity, Remnant, one other time. He's fine, but K but Snapfire does die for that. He pays for his sins. Uh, Timber's been Yules up. KYXY trying to be survived, but he does get killed as well. Destris is getting gone on by here. He's trying to juke him through the trees. He's got a salve on up. He gets a snowball, but he goes deep for the RR. And now Ghost is a very low. He's, Sunder's just barely surviving. BDZ goes down as well. He's been disarmed, and Paulos is looking to turn this up. He's like, okay, you're disarmed. I'm going to go for you, but Alacrity gets the Yules. Paulos buys a little time. Paulus is like this, like the, the serial killer who's like Jason, who's like coming after you, right? He's like literally doing everything by himself. He gets the feast one other time. The snowball into the creeps. Paulus is nearby. He's got the rage and he blinks away and desperate to the plays. I can't believe that Galaxy Rage actually won the team fight. Ghost was <laughs> so close from dying, but he, this time he managed to pull the Sunder off. And that was a very sick snowball save coming out from Destroyers as well on Alacrity. It allows Alacrity to just survive at the edge and still able to pump out all the all the nuke onto the rest of Escalation but speaking of that Raging Potato he wants a solo kill they've got the Yules in the arena nope. and the gods rebuke but he just gets outside the arena he's like alright I don't need to get in and the Remnant connects Alacrity's looking at TP oh but the hook shot from downtown BDZ does end up securing it and Alacrity goes down what a play by BDZ what a boss Man, this is where you'll be shouting, Kobe! <laughs> what a sick hook shot coming out from BDZ. But as you speak, Ken as well, he's asserting his dominance right now. No one is running away from me, especially when I'm, I've got a haze. It's a good kill coming out from Wiper. Yeah, it just makes quick work of that guy. I mean, you have Orchid, like, he has no skills to get away from this guy, and Ken is just like this toxic machine. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're gonna take the T2 mid. Uncontested. Yeah, the only hope you, to get out of this wiper is that you, you the the, re, the moment you see him, you need to TP a race straight. You need to TP back straight away and hope that there's a no there's no hope shot to stop you from that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's pretty much the only thing they have to kind of like lock you into place. Like the, yeah, the spear can potentially the hook shot, but like that's kind of it. Oh, the Chakram, they do have him locked in, but uh, the Walrus Punch, and that's going to be a dead BDZ. Still, though, Escalation is holding 8k in terms of net worth. 8k lead seems pretty good, and I feel like this Nice is in a very good, comfortable position to go head-to-head -head with the TB. He wants to complete his Bastion as well, old mid lane. Double Astral, and he gets the Yules on Raging Potato. Oh, mass TPs are coming. He's got his friends. The Arena is there. The Metamorphosis on the back end, and he actually gets healed. He's fine for now. Oh, my gosh. This has turned into a disaster with three down, and this is without BDZ. And it looks like Ghost is going to look to just TP away. Are you ganking me, or is Raging Potato <laughs> ganking everybody else? Like, the Arena, the... the just the arena just killing galaxy razor on top especially the nanotoxin was on top of that and the use after pick up from raging potato was just saving the day because he was able to use himself up to buy time for his teammates to arrive and it was just a very risky move to pick up someone else when just in front of the tier one tower and another thing this is like the power of friendship the og motto in the sense that like yeah raging potato was gone on but you saw insta tp three people were coming in like, how many games have you played where you get gone on and your teammates are all TPing in with you? The only thing I see is just pings instead of TPs. Yeah. Everyone just ping on like, me. Uh, I'll see four pings instead, instead of four TPs. And I know that, all right, I'm getting reported soon. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this Arthur guy, his positioning is so bad. Yeah. yeah. Why is Arthur here, man? Like, what is he trying to do? Rip Imagine more, if... But imagine if there was the TP, like yes. what Escalation did there, we could easily just wipe them instead exactly, of just getting, exactly. of just getting pings. It's so sad. <laughs> why, are you, why are you reminding me of my sad, sad day? Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Alacrity, one other time, he's been trying to uh, just create some space, but Palos is like that big, ugly monster that nobody wants to fight. And they're going to look to take Roshan here and just turn it up with Roshan. Alright, this is gonna be the last weapon for Execution to gather before they run onto the high ground. 
And with these two lives on the Palos, so far they have been fine. They have been struggling to take down Palos on the life stealer. With these Aegis, that's gonna give a lot of confidence into Execration in closing up this game. Yeah. I mean, Ghost is going to be getting BKB. If he gets that third item, I mean, each of these team fights is going to be just drastically different, right? Like, they're not going to be in that power position that Execration have been in in almost all the other team fights. Because, like, the BKB, it's going to mitigate a ton of the damage that Execration brings. But Paulus, again, he's the one you need to really worry about. Yeah, you already have not much chain stuns to start with on the Execution side with this BKB. Astro. Okay. No, Paulus doesn't care. He's just going to continue to focus. He's the power. Uh, and Ghost is just going to look to just create space by pushing the bottom lane. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think that's, uh, they're not going to get much. I mean, especially with Ghost pushing bottom lane, somebody needs to fix that one. Apparently not, though, because Escalation didn't want to go. Even without yeah, the fix. Oh, and here we go. They got the Yules on KYXY, but the Yules on the Raging Potato. The Soulbinds connecting on the two. They got the one they want, which is a little alacrity, but he's going to dissimulate away. KYXY has to buy back, but they turn around and they focus on the towers and they're focusing on objectives. And the Mortimer kisses. Raging Potato has to Yules himself just to keep himself alive. Uh, Palos is looking to fight this. He's been taunted, but he goes for Alacrity and he does kill him. No buyback there. Ken is looking to turn this up. He gets it right on the 343. Ghost has been stunned and he's looking to just uh, mantle away and get back into the fountain. But they've gotten three for nothing so far and they've just looked to focus on the top racks. Is that the right call? Oh, definitely. RR, though, he's making a lot of happen. Ghost? Man, oh, but he gets forced away and he just barely survives there. That was a clutch force, but uh, Tespris, okay, yeah, they're just zone heal back up by a little bit of time. But I mean, only Snapfire's got buyback. They lost the top and the mid racks already, and it looks like Excretion are gonna look to wake their make their way bottom, but they do have that T2 bottom, so instead, T4s, let's go. Wow, the ability to just... take down towers is so insane, especially with the Solar Crest on Palos. Not much you can do right here, and RR and BDZ are in perfect position to just kind of jump in on anybody who kind of goes near him. Alacrity pushes forward, Ken has to BKB, he's looking to fight this, but Palos has been chunking on the Ancient, and look at how fast it's going down. The Illusion, Alacrity one other time, he just tries to jump in. The Arena's been used, the Snowball's safe for now, but he's going in. The Yules on Raging Potato keeps him alive, and Ghost is in the heart of it, he's looking to fight this, he's looking to go, but... Palos is just turning it up. Ghost dies. He has to buy back. 343 just backing up, trying to just create space, but he goes down as well. He buys back as well. Ancient is about 75%. Hook shot in, but it's a little too deep into the fountain. He's been cogs and he's stuck himself into that. So he gets tipped to there. What do you do? But Palos is looking to turn this. He's looking to fight. He's just raging and he's actually going he's looking to fight this. And he gets the bash on Ghost, the first one. Inkswell, it's charging up and it does end up stunning until Alacrity and he does get pushed back. That's a die back. He's dead. Palos is just this machine that nobody can go on. KYXY gets the Yules. Keep himself alive. Destro's gonna miss with the Snapfire Cookie. He gets the Snowball up on Raging Potato. He's gonna Yules just to keep himself up. Inkswell, he wants 343. That's the easier target. He goes for it and he does have a killing of 343. And this is it. An Ancient is going down and that's gonna be GG. 39 minutes or 31 minutes, 39.26. Really well played by Execration. What a comeback from Execration. Very good bounce back. They play with loss of com um, confidence and aggression this game. They, they're doing exactly what they need what they needed to do in game one, which which is to start the start the snowball going and, and to win their lane phase. Wiper winning winning Alacrity and at one point he was actually two levels ahead of Alacrity on a Void Spirit and they're just making all this aggressive move. One thing I love the most is that they are ignoring Timbersaw most of the time. So that they are just going for the TB, they're just going for the Void Spirit, they're tackling the weakest point of Galaxy Razor instead of the stronger point. And this is something that every team should be learning. And one thing Galaxy could do better is to play with the Timbersaw better to utilize the strongest point. I mean, look at Palos, 11-0 and 11. He did not die a single time in that game. He had the most damage with 41,000 damage, which is insane. And then we saw Kit, I, I, like, yeah, we bashed, or I bashed the Viper, but man, he really showed up today. I mean, he died eight times, which is the most on the team, 
but he got 16 kills and 18 assists. That's like a really good game by Ken. Not something you see all the time. Uh, but okay, quick highlight right here. Uh, we're going to see just kind of the Snapfire cookie at least, and then the Ink Swell, and that's going to kill Alacrity there, who just couldn't really get things going. And Ken just turns it up, gets on to 343, and kills him as well. And then you're going to see the chat on the side. It's going to be too easy for Ken. So congratulations. We're going to announce the winners uh, very, very soon. And, you know, oh, the lucky viewer. There we go. JZK and uh, Maka Kit UV. I'm pretty sure that's not your real name, but it might be. <laughs> Apologies if it is. But nonetheless, congratulations. We're going to reach out to you, get you your Dota 2 cosmetics. But again, last words with those with that game. Yeah, I, I'm just. That was a great comeback from Excretion. It shows that they are strong teams. They are able to learn from the mistakes from game one very quickly and make adjustment of that. This is something that a tier one team. This is the quality that you need to have if you are looking to go to tier one. And Excretion, they show a lot of promising um, qualities here for the side of Galaxy Razor. I think there's a lot of learnings to do, but it def they are definitely show still showing a lot of talent. What a great game. All right, so, okay, that's gonna be the end of the first series between Galaxy Racer and Execration. They'd end up tying on that one. Uh, we're gonna go to a break, but before we do, just know that the next series is gonna be Neon Esports versus Vice Esports. It's gonna be a best of two. We're gonna take a quick five or 10 minute break and we'll be right back. Halo semua, perkenalkan saya Fanji Eko Gevani, dikenal sebagai Polisi Ganteng Gamer Sebuah kebanggaan bagi saya menjadi ambasador di Top Clans 2020 untuk Indonesia Ini adalah turnamen e-sport multi game paling besar ya di Asia Tenggara di tahun 2020 Menurut saya Passion itu adalah menjadi lebih gigi, berani, dan pantang menyerah. 2020 ini adalah tahun yang sulit. Karena COVID-19, banyak orang yang kehilangan nyawanya, kehilangan harapan, kehilangan keyakinan untuk masa depan, 
Tetapi kita tidak boleh menyerah Tetaplah menjaga jarak, menjaga kesehatan, memakai masker Dan percayalah pada harapan Turnamen ini akan dimulai tanggal 25 September 2020 Dan kalian semua bisa menonton melalui channel-channel official dari Top Clans 2020 Ada Facebook, ada Youtube, dan juga ada Twitch Mari kita ikuti acara ini bersama-sama dan ucapkan slogannya dengan semangat This is passion Jadi buat teman-teman semua Jangan lupa like video Papol Dan dukung terus Papol Terima kasih Hai salam semua, saya Master Kukan Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020 Iaitu acara terbesar untuk pertandingan uh, C Multi Games Esports 2020 Top Clan akan mengadakan tournament terbesar mereka Dengan hadiah yang terkumpul cukup lumayan Bernilai 85,000 USD Saya adalah seorang content creator dan juga saya seorang streamer Cara yang paling penting bagi saya adalah saya mendapatkan semangat dan juga kepuasan ketika bermain game. Bagi saya kepuasan itu adalah apabila ketika saya bermain game. Ketika saya bermain game, saya berpeluang dapat berkenalan dengan kawan-kawan baru. Dan perkara yang paling penting sekali adalah saya dapat menjadi ahli gaming community di dunia ini. Itulah dia kepuasan kita. Pertandingan ini akan bermula pada 25 September ini. Dan kita boleh menyaksikan secara live di saluran rasmi Top Clan 2020, Facebook, YouTube dan juga Twitch. Marilah bersama-sama mengikuti permainan dan juga perlawanan ini. Dan tidak lupa untuk melawangkan slogan, This is passion! Peace! It's me, your Ate Nikki from facebook.com slash playwithnikiniki. I am a gamer, a streamer, a shoutcaster, and a host. Everyone, I'm Sher Talentino Bernacha, also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassador of Top Plans 2020. Hey guys, Asura here, and if you guys don't know who I am, I am a professional uh, shoutcaster, esports commentator, uh, content creator and streamer residing in the Philippines. Hai, salam semua. Saya Master Kokan. Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020. Hello everyone, I'm Rosda KAG, also known as Madam Mayora. I'm the team manager of Team Rosda. Halo semua. Perkenalkan saya Fanji Eko Gevani, dikenal sebagai polisi ganteng gamer. สวัสดีค่ะหนูอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวทหนูอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็นไทยแลนด์แอมบาสเดอร์ของท็อปแคนสองพ
The pandemic affected us in a way that some of our players were not able to practice and play because they don't have their own computer. And we're usually present and cheering for our teammates in person at events like this, but now we're not able to do that because of the pandemic. So this pandemic has definitely hit everybody hard, even those, you know, working in the esports or gaming industry. People might think that, you know, we all do our job at home, and some of the time we do, but some of the time we also do those big events, live events. The epidemic affected us in the ways that we can practice together because one of my teammates doesn't have own computer. But we're still practicing and teaching him our new strategy during ECQ. I think passion is defined by your Passion for me is still doing what you love even though it was really hard for you. Passion is what drives me to prove everyone else wrong. Gaming is my passion. Passion for me and for my team is what pushes us to grind harder and what motivates us to push us to our limits. Gaming should not be all about competition. Gaming should be about passion. I hope that Top Grants 2020 will bring out the best in every team that joined the tournament. And thank you as well for the opportunity uh, for us to play in your tournament. My expectation in Top Grants 2020 is a successful tournament and I know that we will get a champion and show to all people that our play is remarkable. I hope that Top Grants 2020 will be four and five like last year, Top Grants Arena. We have been waiting for this. And I cannot wait to see the result. Top fans are turning this year to become the platform for gaming entertainers and to give an opportunity for competitive gamers to showcase their talents and be rewarded. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is passion. 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 It is passion. This 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 is passion. Hey, passion. This is passion. This is passion. สวัสดีค่ะโนอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวตโนอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็น Thailand a m b a s s a d o r ของ Top Can 2020วันนี้เนยจะมาแนะนำ Top Can 2020ซึ่ง Top Can 2020ก็คือการจัดการแข่งขันเกม e-sport ที่ยิ่งใหญ่และสุดพิเศษที่สุดใน South East Asia ของปี2020นี้ซึ่ง Top Can 2020เนี่ยเขามีการจัดการแข่งขันเกมมากมายหลายเกมเลยเพื่อนๆคนไหนที่สนใจก็เข้าไปดูรายละเอียดตรงลิงก์นี้ได้เลยเดี๋ยวเนยจะขึ้นลิงก์ไว้ให้นะคะส่วนตัวเนยแบบเนยชอบเล่นมาเวลทอมแอนเจอรี่เพราะว่าแบบสนุกมากเลยเพลินเล่นได้ทั้งวันเลยค่ะซึ่งไม่ต้องสงสัยเนยนะว่าทำไมเนยถึงเล่นหลายเกมนะคะเพราะว่าส่วนตัวเนยอ่ะเป็นสตรีมเมอร์เนยต้องค้นหาแพชชั่นจากการเล่นเกมซึ่งแพชชั่นของหนูก็คือการทําให้คนดูมีความสุขยิ่งหนูเห็นคนดูที่ดูหนูมีความสุขยิ่งทําให้หนูมีแรงผลักดันในการทําสิ่งนั้นอ่ะต่อไปให้มันดีขึ้นเรื่อยๆค่ะและสุดท้ายนี้เนยอยากจะชวนทุกคนไปชมการแข่งขันที่จะเริ่มขึ้นในวันที่25กันยายนนี้เป็นต้นไปได้ที่ Top Can 2020 Official Channel และอย่าลืมกดไลค์กดติดตามเป็นกำลังใจให้เนยด้วยนะคะเนยอยากให้ทุกคนมีความสุขและสนุกไปกับการแข่งขันนี้ This is passion
Welcome back to the Top Clans 2020 Dota 2 SCA Invitational. Today is day four. My name is Holler and I'm with Arthur. We've got Neon Esports versus Vice Esports coming up next in the best of two matchup in the round robin stage. What do you like about these teams? Well, Vice Esports, they have shown quite some promising um, talent. I'll, I would love to see a better draft from them and a better execution as well. And as for as for okay. another team, Neon Esports, of course, they have been, they have gathered a lot of fans so far, and I'm just always excited to see them. And before we go into the game, let's give a quick shout out to our uh, partners at EGG Network, AIS Play, Kumu, Lazada Live, and Lazada, uh, Lazada and Lazada Live, Likey, Nemo TV, Twitch, TikTok, and production by InfoFed an ancient galaxy because without those guys we wouldn't have had any of this and of course if you're new if you're tuning in now please tune into the top clans official channels at facebook youtube and twitch because uh, this is all on that one so again you need to just kind of pay attention to all of that um but we're gonna get into the draft soon um any other thoughts before we go into this i mean they need to draft a little bit better um what else is there well, I'll just be honest and straight here. I think mm. Neon looks like a much much better team than YC Sports, given okay. the fact that Neon has accomplished way more than YC Sports when it comes to international tournament. But don't take that away. I do think that YC has a lot of good chances to take down Neon and pull an upset. Because Neon Esports, looking at their previous performance, they're not looking like the best. Um, they're not looking that like they are in the best form. So if there's a chance for them, for Wise to put an upset, you'll be this one. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, not the greatest of showings in the more recent ones with Neon Esports. Um, I think there was like, what? Fourth place, ESL One Thailand. Uh, third place, Omega League. Uh, second with Moon Studio Asian League. And so like the last one they won was uh, Libertango Cup, which is a while ago. Uh, Vice Esports, unfortunately, they don't have that pedigree to their name so that they're kind of like the underdogs in this one. Um, but again, this is Dodo, really. Everybody starts from square one, so to speak. So we're going to get into the draft here. Um, what is like the one hero that you want to attack if you're going to ban out like, you know, one of Neon Esports heroes here by Vice? I would say Tiny or the Earth Spirit, you need to take away this playmaking um, supports that Playheart are so Playheart is so good in. You don't want to just let Playheart do his best thing. Because roaming around, creating space, just making explosive moves is the best um, that what Playheart can do so far. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're gonna attack that. And then what do you do with Neon Esports? Who, who do you attack on Vice? Is it Cirque? Is it Mm, Bob? I'll say Bob. Way, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, also a spread. So this is what wow, okay. Alright, that whirling death. Wow. Sound effect just stopped all my train of thoughts for a second. <laughs> and also the fact that they opened it with a timber soft first pick. We, we like previously we have known that Neon is what they love to play this um very unorthodox support like the legion commander support the faces white support i wouldn't be surprised if this team Bristol at the end would be flexed into a post five support are you serious like i don't think i've ever serious. seen a position five timber that just seems terrible to me no i like, mean what does he bring have you imagined faces white post five that that i can because you have the chrono you have the time lock you have ways to you know you could you could time walk off damage you have an escape you have those things right and t while te technically timber does have a timber chain but like what else is he bringing chakra willing death yes it's percentage base but like like is that really the support you want going into a, a league game like this well all right i, I don't want to dumb i i don't want to dumb this team so in the post five and talk a lot about that because <laughs> if you do that and turns out Timber so is just a post three, we look I'll look super dumb. So. <laughs> but but I can definitely imagine this Timber so being at a post five and just spamming running death to zone out the enemy off lane. And you can really tell that wise esport they are getting caught off guard because they are spending so much time and they are spending one pick to counter this Timber so. So Neon is right. in terms of drafting, in terms of yeah. strategic 
they are definitely winning on this because they just literally force a counter pick from YC Sports. And this is what the first pick Team Bristol wants to do. They want he wants to force out as much counter pick as possible and then eventually just throw this Team Bristol in the post five. I mean, this has got to be a set strategy. Like, if it is a position five, I would love it because it would totally throw everything into a loop because, like, oh, you now you have all these heroes and you're looking to just counter the position five. Um, and Puck is kind of like one of those other ones that can kind of play literally, you know, probably two through four, if anything. Probably not the position one, but it, it, it has a lot of versatility. It can go almost anywhere. Um, but... Again, this this draft is turning really crazy already. I mean, you're showing a lot of your cards, but could potentially just be like an, a, a, a like a bluff. Yeah, this is it. Feels like playing poker right now. And the only people are just showing hand, but yeah, they are not really doing that too. Team Bristol and Puck, they can literally play any position, any role, and any position. Same as the Osprey and Wiper as well. We have seen YC Sport um, Andrew playing Wiper as the post tree. That's not the greatest, but. Mm -hmm. If Timbersaw ends up to be a post five, I think Wiper could back. actually deal with the Timbersaw post four, post five pretty decently on the lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so yeah, it, it all depends on how the both teams are trying to uh, finish their draft and eventually get Radiant themselves a favor back. favorable lane. Yeah, and we talked about the previous games. I mean, Vice e Sports had only two games, but they lost them both. But it was, you know, the Enryu on the Veno and the Viper. And I, I was, we were kind of talking about how just underwhelming it was. And like, we were hoping that he would go away from these type of heroes. But it looks like Vice e Sports, they just really want to just let him play his Viper again. Yeah, he feels like it. I, I have no idea. Maybe Andrew has been finding a lot of success with the Viper off lane in somewhere else so that they have a lot of confidence still. On this hero but i would definitely love to see it work as for yeah. the team Bristol, once again you know we have been just talking about post three and post five but team Bristol, he has a hero he can even go for the carry or even the mid so there's definitely a lot of possibilities that we are going to see here on this team Bristol. i'm just lacking the fact that they have the boss to just open up the draft with have team Bristol, and i love the courage from neon yeah Rich or stupidity, I'm not entirely sure. We will find out in the game. But for now, the draft is still underway. Um, I, I guess if, okay, if you're building around a position five timber, what else do you complement it with? Like, what are the other heroes that you're looking? Because, I mean, he has a lot of holes in, in, in his kit, so to speak, especially as a position five. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really crazy. Just thinking about that. But, uh, all right. Um, second, the next pick is going to be out of Titan. So still... Loss of flexibility. There's no certain heroes going on certain roles so far. So not easy for Wise to analyze here. And right now, but one thing to be sure is that both Timberstone and Elder Titan has got pretty strong lane. They've got spells that can zone out the enemy's hero. And for YC Sports, it's up to them to counter this hero. Mm, I would say Oracle would be one of the better position 5 to countering the Elder Titan on lane. If this other title is going to show up on the Oracle lanes, to me because um, the first spell can always just dispel the spirit damage coming from other title, making other title not a strong hero anymore. So, okay, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Dream Coil into Earth Splitter, like I get that combo. I like it. Um, I'm just trying to see like how the team, like like the 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 heroes, like synergize with one another, right? Like, hmm. Yeah. I, I, I guess what would you, what do you, how do you uh, counter what you're seeing right now? Oh, they can win with the Undying. Right. So, okay. Undying potentially going to be the answer to the Team Bristol and Elder Titan. I was just, what I, I just wanted to say that YC Sport, the last time we saw them, the one mistake that they did was to target counter some other heroes, right? They had the Venomancer against the Fist Sword. But the matchup didn't happen because the enemy just dodged the lane. And yeah. this is something that creates a lot of holes in your draft because you pick this hero particularly to counter one. And then that counter didn't happen. And all of a sudden, this countering hero has no value in the game anymore. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it could easily happen on this Viper and Undying as well. But YC Spot is going to run out the f second phase with this anti-mage pick. I'm not sure if this is the best pick you are picking anti mage into loss of magical damage mm -hmm. when elder titan is in the pool 
because mm-hmm. Elder Titan Nature Order is just going to amp up all the magical damage. Yeah. And you have Puck, which is a one of the best counter against anti mage with the silence and dream coil. Gyrocopter is a very fast paced carry that can often just look to snowball the, the game and and make sure that uh, and have the ability to close out game very early on and also have the ability to go late as well. So uh, looking at the fourth looking at the four mm-hmm. picks here, I'll definitely say Neon they have answers to this anti mage. Like I, I'm like you have the dream coil, you have the potential stomp, and like the homing missile, right? But like those aren't really like that hard lockdown that I need to deal with the AM. He could still be elusive, right? Yes, magic damage is going to be a problem, but if what Neon is kind of building, which is like this team fighting, you know, Timber in front baiting, Gyro just shooting call downs, you know what I mean? Like blowing people up as well, but like. They're going to look to just five-man death ball it, right? And so I think Vice is like, okay, we can't really team fight them. I think that with Viper there, you don't really have that team fight to kind of deal with this. So maybe we just look to split push and just kind of create our own game and just buy time that way. Yeah, that could be a way. I think I think that could be the idea of YC Sports, actually. You you want anti to be always split pushing. You want to be drawing Neon Esports hero to chase you around the map so that... You know, you buy time for this anti mage to be big, but looking at, but most of the time, if you want to have a good anti mage lineup, you want to make sure that four other heroes are well capable of fighting five heroes on your mm-hmm. enemy side. Because mm-hmm. you that that's the way of buying time for anti mage. You want to still be able to win team fights by, b- despite being outnumbered. So, Wiper, Earth Spirit, these are definitely the heroes that can do so. I want to see another hero that can also inject into that. Uh, in terms of winning team fights despite being outnumbered, and that's gonna be the doom. Okay. Um, doom. I, you got a, a bunch of targets that you can go on. Like, who's your main one of the neon esport lineup right now? All right. If I'm only looking at four heroes, I would say mm-hmm. Puck is the one that I want to shut down, because mm-hmm. looking at the lineup, Puck offers the Dream Coil that starts everything. Right. That starts the Earth Spritter coming in. That starts the that create the space for Gyrocopter to come in with a huge call down too. So definitely Puck is the one uh, main control that Neon Esports have. And all right. Oh my I gosh. Am it's it. Right. You it is right. the Team Bristol Post Y. Oh right. my gosh. We're seeing it. JG picks his Puck and I was like, oh no, are they doing it? They've got the Timber 5, the Skem 1, Yopaj 2, Play Hard 3, or sorry, the Play Hard uh, 4. Uh, and JG is on his puck on three, and they're kind of throwing everything in a loop right now. I mean, thank you, Neon. Like, <laughs> this means that I'm not just a complete dumbass, right? <laughs> if, if this ends up not a Team Vessel 5, I'll sound like a dumb, and right now I sound like a god. Wow. Yeah, I, that's a well, fine line between a genius and a, <laughs> and, a and an idiot, you know? And these are the perfect as something to showcase that. But anyways... Wow. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, have you seen the Timber 5 before? Is that why? I have seen it played by a guy called... What's the name already? He's, he's one of the guys that is pretty well-known in the Philippines scene as well. I couldn't remember okay. the name, but I have seen this before and I've seen it work too. And I know that the fact Jano, he loves to play this un- un- unorthodox post-5. And one, yeah. and the reason you open with Timbersoft with the first pick is that you have this backup for him to go to post five? Otherwise, yeah, yeah. you won't be you won't be opening with it. Yeah, you know. And I, I feel like Dion they have done what they wanted to do in the drafting phase, which is which is to force counter timber counters coming from Wise, and they force two the Wiper and Dying and even the Doom. Those are the those are the timber yeah. counters. So it's up to Neon here to play this this draft out. All right. I mean, they're doing the Enryu Vi- uh, Viper, right? Which is the off lane, and that kind of that is really underwhelming at this point, just because of the fact that like that's definitely not what you want. They've got the Doom mid Circ uh, AM. We expected that one, but the Viper off lane, like I don't think that. I mean, yes, it's a counter to Timber, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why they insta picked it right after the Timber. But like, he loves that hero. I think it doesn't really matter too much about what was picked ahead of him. But man, this Timber 5 is going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, I want to see this Timber Soul 5 winning, winning the game because I feel like he has done half of his jobs already just by forcing the counters <laughs> pick up. <laughs> yeah, Janu here must be feeling very good. 
and the draft as well. He must be feeling that he's outsmarting Wise for now. Okay, <laughs> again, like we, we saw the pick, and yes, you were correct in the sense that the timber was the five. But you know, you were talking also about you know the fine line between you know being brilliant and an idiot, and we have yet to see the game play out. Okay, that's true. So that's this true, might go true. disastrously for them. So we're gonna have to see how this one goes. But it's an interesting start already. Yeah, definitely, this is why we all love Neon. All right, all right. The first, the first time I did a cl- really close following to them was at the One Esports League, and they just pull out all these Legion Commander post five, Faces White post white, and they make it work. So mm-hmm. it's hard to not fall in love with this kind of team with such huge creativeness, and I want to see this work. I want to, I, but. At, on the other hand, I also don't want to see this work because I don't want to be running into my pubs tonight and see a bunch <laughs> of Timbers of Five. <laughs> All right. If they win, I will play a game tonight where I'm playing Timber Five. Oh, I'll no. Do it. I'll try it. And I will, uh, everybody will be like, what the hell? This is the dumbest guy ever. And I'll probably get in, stuck into low prio. But if they win, I will do that. <laughs> All right. Only if they win, yeah. Only, Only if they, they win, win, of course, of course. Because if not, it's it's garbage, and my in, the initial instincts were correct. <laughs> Do you even practice? Crushing dreams is kind yeah, of yeah. But job. let's. I mean, we we have talked about a lot about neon, but looking at wise, one thing I want to, I'm really hoping to see from them is the synergy between our heroes. Mm-hmm. And I'm not seeing anything here. I mean, they are—they have three heroes that are green. I guess yeah. that's yeah, uh, one synergy. Yeah, that counts. That counts. <laughs> yeah, but uh, speaking about anti mage lineup, right? You are you are having this anti mage as your winning condition, mm-hmm. but you are also having Doom that is rather, rather, rather greedy, especially when you're putting him on the mid lane. I know Doom, you have a very good, you know, timings on this item, but he's not exactly the best space creating hero. <laughs> oh, they've got him locked in. And Zenki, this might be a bad start to him. He's been pushed forward. John Well getting low himself. He gets a whirling death. And I think he got first blood. John Well gets first blood to start things off. What is the damage? Skem is getting slowed down. And Enryu, they get a return kill. And so, yeah, that poison attack just slowing him down. But that was crazy. Holy crap, do you see the damage that finished off <laughs> Undying? <laughs> and then he was literally sitting at half HP, I mean, 50% of his HP bar, and then one reeling death just killed him instantly. <laughs> That's the power of post fight Timber Saw, Yeah, okay, power. okay. All right, so what is the itemization you go then? Um, oh, look at that spirit is... from downtown. All the way from the bottom lane is a TP top. They got the homing missile, and Ryu gets killed here. So again, more power to this position five. <laughs> 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 it's just fun to see, man. It's just fun to see them making this work. And also, we have said that Gyrocopter, a lot of the the recent the recent build right now is to go for the max, or at least one or second two skill point on the homing missile, just mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. so that you can chase your enemy down and also provide the the instant damage. So I, I'm I'm it, it allows Gyrocopter to be to have a lot of killing potential, uh-huh. especially in the lane. And your punch right now is just do a lot of damage onto this Doom. Yeah, he's done a ton. But, uh, I mean, they really need to kind of uh, pull the lane back, you know, bottom. I think that it's the equilibrium is in a terrible spot for them. Um, but, again, Cirque is kind of uh, tops in terms of last hits. Was well, 7-1. Well, the Doom just overtook him, but they're doing okay. Yeah, Puck and Outer Titan are not exactly the best hero to zone out the end. The end. The, the anti mage, I would even oh. say anti mage would feel pretty comfortable on the top lane. But meanwhile, Pop, he's taking a lot of harassment coming up from Ryopash. I love this from Ryopash because he knows that he doesn't want this Doom to be comfortable on the lane. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's one thing to get, like maybe snipe out, like get a power shot, kill him, or whatever. But like, you're okay with Doom kind of being on the low end. So I, I think that's okay. But Cirque in a little low. He blinks away here. Um, and Zenki loses damage. his career. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but good good kill coming out from Wise. Undying is a very good hero when it comes to cowering the anti machine because you can always throw body in front of the anti mage, but boop, bop, bop, bop. He has so to be careful. Low. Oh the power shot just misses. Close. Very close. Oh, but they get done well, not really paying off. The rocket brush doing a lot, but okay, he does end up getting Samuel. They got something out of this. He's dead, so 
Andrews, making sure he's proving us, you know, this wiper often could work when he gets a favorable matchup and he has, he will always have the spirit to tank a lot of damage for him so that he could just stay behind and get the free free hits off and there's just just nothing um gyrocopter can do about that <laughs> yeah all right so uh i mean look at this yopage like 16 and 10 10 denies which is pretty insane he's got a level lead he's just kind of picking off bob and uh this is kind of what 7.27D is done to Doom. He's not that I I incredible beast that he previously was, that laning monster. Yeah, but the, the dynamic is going to change in this lane because Bob just found the best laning creeps for him, which is the Ice Armor Creep. And now he's oh, sitting the at... Shackle. They got him under a couple tower shots, but that Frost Armor, man. It, the it's frost armor, he's not going to die here. He's <laughs> not going to die here. Until Green Ranger gets the level 6 timing. Then Green Ranger will pose a threat to him. So okay. until then, Doom should be pretty safe in, in the mid lane. We gotta keep tabs on this uh, Timber saw Johnwell bottom because I feel like levels might be an issue for him. Oh, but Scam getting so low. He's at 28 life. He's been zoned away. Cirque gets killed as well as Doom in the mid lane. So Bob goes down as well. So not the greatest of starts for both lanes. Yeah, two kills on the core heroes on Wise simultaneously. This should be a very strong instill of confidence into Neon Esports so far. I think Gyrocopter has to be a bit more careful though. But they want to go on? Nah, not really. Yeah, homing missile is just a, a zoning one more than anything else. But uh, Yopaj is level 6 versus Bob's level 4. Crazy. Yopaj, I, I, never, I never knew that Wind Ranger could do so much better than the Doom on the lane. But bottom side, double, double ring death. Uh, he's trying to get the five minute rune and the rocket barrage doing a lot. The whirling death as well. Samuel has been homing missile, and yeah, the kick's not gonna do it. Oh, but the homing missile actually connected onto uh, Enryu. That was the right target. I thought they were gonna just make sure that they got the Earth Spirit there. Oh, by the way, I just realized that the position four of Wise has changed. It's not Lucify anymore. Yeah, yeah. All right, so focus I'm not sure fire what on to that. Bob. The power shot as well, and Bob is slowly getting whittled. Here comes John Well. He's just tanking the tower damage. The timber chain is gonna miss the focus fire. He's focusing on it, but actually, John Well, this is like, this is like me playing timber <laughs> salt position five, right? Like, <laughs> what should I'm I do, taking, guys? You know, taking, <laughs> going under tower and just getting destroyed like that. Like, yeah. th I get, this is this is me later tonight, guys. <laughs> if they win. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, oh no, I forgot that I don't have reactive armor because I'm a post five. Yeah, he's uh, level three here. He just trades the bottle, refills it, and passes it back. So a little bit of micro there. Yeah, but so far, everything is looking great for Neon. Both Puck, despite dying once, he's still sitting at the top of the net worth. And Antibish, why is he so behind? He got a f yeah. he he got a first kill on Puck, but he died afterwards. But it's obviously hurting his net worth a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yopaj still level six to five. Bob's looking to just focus on him, but the frost armor is nullifying almost all of what Wind Ranger is doing in terms of damage. Um, and Samuel here just kind of uh, helping with the uh, creeps. Hollow, you were Play. asking. Oh wait, top yep. lane though. Yeah, we were, you were asking the itemization, but mid lane also Doom was committed, and that's a very nice kill from Bob. He even frosted the TP coming out from Scam as well, so very nice rotation. And he also did the BM tip there as well. Uh, but they got the homing missile. I think he's... Oh, he just oh, barely gets away. I mean, Scam's taking mid lane just to give uh, Janwell a little bit more space and XP. But sorry, you were going to ask a question. Yeah, I, I was just saying you were asking the team missile itemization and yeah. I kind of picked. He's going for now Talisman. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, yeah. Pretty Force, interesting. Uh, focus fire, and then the shackle right onto Enry. Really nice rotation. Samuel, I'm just gonna walk away here. But... Yeah, like mo like traditionally, we are seeing you know a couple of brazer on the team mm -hmm. but how how times have changed everything. Right now, we are seeing this team bristle post five with no no talisman, so that he could amp up his um, damage coming out from timber chain and running death. This is a lot of creative creativity now. I mean, I get with the mana regen, you're going to suffer and all that stuff. But, like, I guess, what is the next... I mean, he's got two Null Talismans of all things. But, like, 
Oh, they got the break here. The roll in from downtown Samuel with the play and the kick in. They made sure they got it, but Enrio just gets the kill. The stomp slows it down. Shackle doesn't connect onto anything. Samuel's trying to run for his life. He's going to stick on back. And it looks like Playheart is going to get gone on with the poison, uh, t uh, the nether toxin as well. But he's just barely out. I think he might tick. He does. And Enryu scores another kill. Yeah, very good fight back coming out from Wise. They are utilizing the strongest point, right? Which is the Wiper and also the Aspiri rotation. Making space in the mid lane, especially. I'm liking this execution of Wise already. You always want to play with your strongest uh, point in the game, with the strongest hero, your strength. And I'm just liking the, the fact that they are just cowering this Wiper everywhere he goes. Rolling bowler, and then she's gonna kill him. I don't know if Mana Void, I heard the sound, but Skem is gonna continue just be there. But they have four heroes bottom, and it seems like too much. Yopaj is looking to turn this around. He focus fires, he kills Enryu, and he looks to turn this right onto Zenki. He's looking to just focus him single shot by single shot, but Zenki just moonwalks away, does a little dance, and they should be fine. But I don't think Dream Coil was committed. He's been invised, and JG's just kind of stalking around. Wow, big stacks there for Scam to, to pick up there. And taking on the Wiper is definitely the, the biggest victory here for Neon as Puck is lingering around with the Envy Rune, looking to cash out Zerg, but he's soon gonna be walking to the Sentry range. They see him. And Timbersaw, look at his build. It's two in Whirling Death and three in Timber Chain, nothing in reactive armor, so he has literally no regen in that sense. Um, what do you think about this build? I mean, he's going all in pretty much for this magic build, right? Yeah, so far he has been paying off, right? Oh, oh JG? they got the Doom and they found JG. The homing missile is going to connect on the Bob, but he's just running right at Puck and he's going. I and mean, the homing missile buys a little bit of time, but the Doom should tick and he does end up getting that kill. John Wells getting low himself. He's been poisoned attack. He tried to go for the deny. He did not get it. Yopaj is now running for his life. He does have win run and should be fine. Gonna pick, gonna pick up the Arcane Rune. I was. I want to see if he would turn here with the focus fire on him. He has also got him with Javadin as well, so... Oh, he's gonna, just going to TP out. All right. What, you couldn't have picked up the uh, the bounty before you TP'd away? Like... Yeah, that's true, though. <laughs> oh, the shackle Bob. doesn't actually connect onto him, but Bob is there. The tombstone has now been committed. They got the dream call. He's got nowhere to go. He's stuck under focus fire. The call down as well. The spirit is jumping around. He's trying to get the stomp. Nice three-man stomp there, but they're turning. They're trying to get on Bob, and they're focusing him up, but he's just so tanky. He does die in the end, and here comes the El Earth spirit. He's got the magnetize as well, but it doesn't seem like there's anything else they can do, and they get him all for four for one, but Skem goes down. Wow, the team fight power coming out from Neon, especially with the Elder Titan. It's just crazy. The, despite having a bit of disadvantage, but Neon, they still make it through. And you were asking about this now, Talisman. I, I think it's just for the cost efficient, right? You want to deal as much damage as you can while you're alive as a post fight team assault. And now Talisman is definitely the best item for you to do that. Yeah. It gives you some stats, it gives you some spell M too. Especially when you're playing with an Outer Titan that could also amp up your damage. It just feels good. Oh, and it looks like they're gonna turn this one. Earth Playhard thought he was fine, but he just gets gone on. He gets silenced and kicked, but he's still a little bit tanky. And it looks like they're gonna turn the Skem is now here. Samuel, oh, and the explosion from Zanki ends up destroying him, and they're looking to turn this, but a nice Dream Coil catches on to two. AM is dead. Circa is down for 29 seconds, no buyback, and it looks like Enry is looking to fight this. Samuel misses his boulder. But John Well dies as well. Three for two, and JG sticking around, and here comes Yopaj. He's got the focus fire, and he focuses on every single time on the mid laner, Bob. But that frost armor is just nullifying most of it. I don't know if that's the right target. The frost armor is just making him so tanky. Oh, but he's been doomed, and Bob's like, all right, you're going to focus me? Let's go. And they've got the, the boulder, and then as well, but this, oh, and they get the deny. So JG or uh, JG actually gets the eye on that one. Really nicely played. Yep, nicely done by JG. But you also have lost your your part, your mid, your mid player. And like you say, I don't think Bob is the target for mid ranger to go now, as Bob is showing a lot of aggressive aggression coming out of Park. Won't quite get the kill, but he's definitely tanky enough to survive through the 
the focus fire from Green Ninja until maybe the Green Ninja picked up his Monkey King bar. Maybe things would change, but the Frost Armor definitely helps a lot there. Yeah, I, I mean, Monkey MKB is going to be just massive. I mean, he's got the Naked Javelin already. He has it queued up, but um, he's still a ways away from it. And uh, I mean, that's going to be a game changer in terms of how much damage output Wind Ranger can do. But we're still kind of a ways away from there, considering that it's, you know, 16, 17, only 1k net worth lead in terms of advantage. But Doom is actually the highest net worth. So something to note. Oh, but the Dream Curl has been committed. They've got the silence as well, and Cirque just gets, ex like, destroyed. John Well, look at the plays, man. Position 5, there we go. Yeah, making plays. This is why I was very afraid of the anti-mage game, especially when it comes to mid game. He's so, so far away from the Battle Fury. He's gonna project from the laning phase until the until the mid game. This part are just he's just gonna put his eye targeted on the anti mage and wherever anti mage go, he just follow. And you don't need a lot of resources as well. All you need is a timber sword that is post fight that follows you. <laughs> it, it, it's just so weird to me when you say position fight timber, but yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> he's still so far from being scary at this point, but um. I don't know, like, he, he needs to just, he's trying to get farm at the list of games, but Doom is really keeping them, them in the game as well as Enryu, who've been on point in terms of just providing space, getting some kills, putting them in a position to, you know, I mean, they're 50-50 right now, um, just to keep them in the game. Yeah, definitely. I was I would say wise, they'll need much more than this just to f have a little bit of a better po um, position in this game. Because mm -hmm. Wiper, he's going for the Orchid build once again that we saw last game. And I want to see how effective this Orchid build can be because you are not looking to build into the tanky items. You are going for much offensive item. And that could backfire a lot if you if you start dying a couple of times after the Orchid, Orchid pickup. Yeah, but actually I kind of like the Orchid because of the fact that like... I mean, they have so many magic users, you know, uh, that are going to want to cast a lot of spells. So, oh, but they used use Doom, and they found him the Infernal Blade, a boulder, one time, and they've got him locked in. And yes, they're going to let Bob get the kill on that one. Killing Scam there. Yeah, instantly the BMT coming in from Bob. This would be great. Dream Quill. They got him. Enryu silenced up. He's got nowhere to go, and he does die. And Bob is in there. They've got the Tombstone, but JG, Infernal Blade, he's going to phase away. But no, not enough. And he does get killed in the end. Offlane for offlane trade. But if this allows them to defend this mid tower, it would it'd be all worth it. The death from JG. So, general though. The stomp that's going to set things up. Can they get anything going? Here's the Timber Chain into a nice, easy shackle. Bob is under tower, and he's getting focused. The call down has been used. Zanki's just tombstone. Well, like, can he use his tombstone? Heal himself. Tried to dance away. Was unfortunately not able to in Yopaj with the double kill there. All these tanky heroes from Wise, they just don't feel tanky at all. Where Timber Saw is there with the Rilling Death. And this very good... Good defense coming out from Neon. They utilize their, the outer type a lot, just setting up for these defenses, especially for the Shrekker shot as well. It will allow your punch to find the best angle for the double shackle. Yeah. They did a little chip damage, and that's pretty much all they got out of that. But, I mean, with Doom coming back very soon, it's probably best to just kind of retreat here. Mm -hmm. There's no Doom, though, and Neon knows it, so they should look to make something happen here, or maybe just chill for a little bit, wait for your push to finish up the Monkey King bar, and of course, for Gyrocopter to pick up the Agony Scepter. Yeah. Also, Puck, <laughs> he, all right, with this wave, he's gonna, he's, he's, he got his dagger, so this is where, this is where Neon will look to make aggression on wise. They're in position, I mean, almost has MKB very close, the stomp does connect, Oh, they're lining, trying to line up the Earth Splitter. They've got it, but I don't know what they want to go up to high ground. And they just commit that, but they just run here. Yeah, they saw the BKB on on the Doom, and immediately they know that this is not the this is not the one guy that could that could get uh, that that could get with this combo. I, I like the discipline coming out of Neon. Right now, they need to identify the threat, which you know you also need to identify which are the easiest target that you can can get so that you can get a quick kill and then just disengage after that wiper and teammate are the target just not the doom yeah it, it's so weird because you're looking for like 
you know, the easy pickoffs or whatever. And like Earth Spirit and Undying are not the easiest, not the squishiest of heroes to go after, right? So yeah, you're, you're kind of forced into going for the AM or the Viper, which sounds weird at this point. But yeah, definitely. This is why we have been seeing, you know, this Strang Post 5 coming up, you know, the Tusk Post 5, the Clock Red Post 5, just to make sure that you are not um, a piece of cake for the uh, for the enemy cores to take down when it comes to mid game. Yep. Yopaj is, does have MKB here, and they're trying to find Bob. They do have him Dream Call, but BKB is going to be committed, and uh, he's looking to run now. John Well, he gets the Doom. He really wants this. Position 5, he's thinking, uh, I don't know what he's thinking when you're running after a position 5 <laughs> Timber, and they're going to try to give it to Cirque. Cirque does end up getting that kill. And mid lane. Meanwhile, Yopaj. They got the boulder. But, oh, they're gonna they, pay got for this. they got Yopaj for that. That's a kill streak. That's pretty massive. Wow, Bob is feeling it today. He has been, you know, just constantly BM tipping his opponent, trying to tilt them off. But that was a very good Doom and BKB Forest by Neon, though. <laughs> like, Jenna would be ha more than happy to just take that away. To tank that, especially. Yeah. That is a, a call down. Homing missile. They found Bob, but I don't think they're going to go on the other side of the river. Circus continue to farm. He's been silenced. Undying is in the vicinity. Um, Cirque, man, does not have Battle Fury. Oh, he does have Battle Fury. Excuse me. He's going to get Yasha up next. So. Yeah. Not the best Fury timing. He got it at 17. But still, he has managed to outfarm the Gyro. And that will be the case for the end of for the rest of the game if uh, Anti Mage doesn't doesn't die too much. So Gyro right now it feels like Neon they are slowing down a lot. Ever since this Bob gets the PKB oh, himself, but nice about that. shackle and the focus fire and the MKB with Skem, just the amount of damage that they have doesn't matter if you have Frost Armor or not. They're gonna kill Bob there. Well, where's the team coming from Neon? They're not tipping back. <laughs> Come on, guys! You guys need to bug up. You need to tip back. You, yeah. you don't just let anyone BM tip you, and if you kill them, <laughs> you need to do something about that. You need to punish the this kind of attitude. <laughs> not that this kind of attitude is not good, but of course it's it's good for the viewers, right? Always love to yeah. see some emotions in the game. Yes, yes. I, I mean, if they win the game, I think that that's when you'll start seeing the tips. Like, it's more of oh. like, we haven't won anything yet, you know? Like, I don't need to tip now because it only further enrages it. But like, I when I know I'm winning, I'm just like, oh, that's when I'll start tipping. That's true, that's true. Right. T1 mid. And Circus continue to farm. He does have Yasha. He's going to be looking to get Manta. Uh, but Circus kind of come back. Like, if we're looking at net worth, right? Like, this is pretty much a wash in terms of one, two, three. It's like, literally, who has the next camp? <laughs> and we're all seeing that. Real punch. He smoked up. He wants to get a kill here. Can see Cirque. him. Smokes with pop. No with a counter way. spell. <sighs> and the quick fingers by Cirque will keep him alive. Yeah, good, re good reaction there. Samuel. Oh, they got a boulder. They got a boulder on somebody. They're going. One other time. They found Yopak magnetized. They got him all over. And Cirque is now looking to turn this up. He's got counter spells just in case. But the mana boy will pop him like a pimple. Yopak is down. Oh, Wait. look at that. Oh, my God. Death. Whoa, that whirling death did a lot of damage. <laughs> there is a max level of uh, burning death as well. Wow. Generally, what if he solo kills the anti mage there? That I'm sure insane. that tonight everybody will be on this hero as post fire. <laughs> this is crazy. Like, no stops. JG's in the vicinity if they want to go, but no Yopash for 20 seconds. I think that is a very risky play. Throwing out Chakram just a little bit more zoning, but they're focusing on that tire. Vice really want this. They get it, and they're looking to take it, at least the outpost. And they back up, and they have all five heroes here, and they smoke up instantly. Yeah, and, and you can see the line drawn. They want this mid, they want this mid tower as well. Your push has to be careful. If he TPs down mid and get and die again, that's gonna be disastrous for her. But it seems like he is gonna to move to the bottom lane and they will get Cirque. They will get yes. Cirque, and they did. Yeah, so John Will, I mean, gets the kill, but like that whirling death is just does so much burst, you know, it's like no one expects that. And that with the puck and everything, and you just destroy Cirque. Unfortunately, the four men spoke from Wise did not catch anything and they lost the anti mage too. So, very good read coming out from Neon Esports. Yeah. It's really nice in terms of uh, 
I mean, it's so even, right? Like 23, 22, losing circle there was pretty much like pretty big, um, it, it, like a, a bit of a mistake there because if everyone's going top, then you're by yourself and circle needs to play a little bit safer, right? But yeah, definitely. You always want to play safe when your teammates are smoking up. So maybe a little bit of you know, mistake there by Cirque. Because he has survived through so many gangs, right? So he it gives that it gives the kind of false security to him, knowing mm -hmm. like just thinking to himself that I have survived through the gangs from Wind Ranger, I could probably survive the next two. But the dream call is something that can really catch you off guard. That you you as an anti-mage cannot counter spell off as well. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of overconfidence, I would say. You just need to be a little careful in terms of what you're trying to do because, again, you can get caught out. You can still get bursted. You're not that almighty six-slotted AM that we're... Oh, they get the, the boulder in. Silence. They found JG. One other boulder, but Cirque is just coming out now. He's going to orb away, blink bottom, and he just should be fine as he TPs away. Yeah, sadly, Cirque could... Uh, blink, blink cooldown was, was off, so... He wasn't able to be there to finish off JG, but this is a lot of space created for for Scam and Yopach as well. I would say Roshan would be the next big thing for both sides. Why is what they don't exactly have the best lineup to do Roshan, neither Neon has. But if they are able to put Yopach into the Roshan pit and sneak that away, it will be pretty big for them. Especially, as we speak, he has a DD rune, okay? So, oh my gosh. Roshan becomes a piece of cake for them now. And Yopaj is like literally tangoing with Roshan. I'm getting dizzy just watching Roshan, but the Shackle is there. And they're just going to make quick work with that Focus Fire and DD. Um, and Aegis is going the way of Yopaj. So this could be a uh, potential huge moment. Being able to just kind of push some towers out of this. Yeah. I'm lacking, I'm also lacking the the decision that they put the Aegis on Yopaj because Yopaj you know that your push is always going to be eyeing on the anti mage or the doom so that you, you you are going to perform a long chase if you want to solo kill anybody with your focus fire so having the ages on him give, gives him the kind of protection to go for all this risky play and when your push is going i mean it's already got mkb we talked about that it's going to be going bkb next um my own like i guess uh at what point do you go blink to kind of help initiate. Well, I guess when all your auto towers are, la are out and wise and when okay, never mind. Mid lane. The doom has been used. They've got skim, and the BKB is also. But the long distance rolling boulder Samuel from downtown gets him. He's got nowhere to go. Infernal blade as well. Skim is down for 64 seconds. They're trying to go through. Sankey's looking around, but it looks like they're going to look for Yopaj. They pop him. Aegis has now been popped. He's going to come back. And they're sticking around. The boulder's going to miss. I've done that before as an Earth Spear player. <laughs> so I've been there, man. Your Earth Splitter is going to be used. They do get the timber. And they're trying to get more. They don't have the stun for play hard. And he does get away. And Yopaj does get killed in the end. So, wow. Like, that was effectively four kills with Yopaj dying twice there. Well, sick punishment coming from Wise. And they are looking for more. JG. Can he get out of here? He's going to miss. Samuel? The orb. Um, play. Okay. And he's away. What right. happened? Is this it? Well, like... <laughs> it just careless mistakes coming out from Neon. They did not communicate well enough. Wind Rangers was too far away from the Giant Crafter and knowing that Gyro did not have the Aegis, Bob just instantly, without hesitation, jumped on the Gyro from the Doom team and there's just no way Gyro Crafter can survive through that. So, I'm not sure if you want to be pushing tower without the Aegis. Whoa, the other st uh, the stomp is going to slow them all down. Bob has been slept though. And they're trying to get at least something. The Timber Chain forward, John Well, he's gonna just orb. BKB's been used. They end up getting the Undying there. Zenki will die. Samuel rolled to the high ground. Bob should be fine, but oh, they got the Dream Coil. They do have him. Circus continue to farm though. Uh, but we found Bob and he's looking to go. Yules, they do have him one more time to stomp as well. And they're just gonna slow him down the Shackle, which is this easiest one ever at that point. And Bob goes down as well. Uh, some a bit of punishment here coming out from Neon as well. Managed managed to force the BKB coming out from Bob, and Bob did not get to run away from that. And speaking about neutral items, we are starting to see these tier trees. But oh no, Enryu! The focus fire and Enryu. Man, John, well, like okay, the whirling death, like the amount of burst that it happens is just it's pretty. Crazy. 
yeah, it's just insane. Especially against these heroes that are supposed to be tanky. Yeah, all of a sudden not tanky anymore. And anti-mage. Is he getting a BKB? I think he needs it. Because of all the burst damage coming out. Yeah, he does has he does has a BKB. Yeah, it's a very it's a, it's a necessity here. Just against the other Titan. And Elder Titan is gonna fall here. Force away. He's been glimmer though. They do have him. The dust was there and they found him. Playhard goes down. Clumsy has been used, but call down is here and Skem is looking at turns around with the tombstones on the high ground. And it looks like Zenki's gonna die as well. But when they get John Well from that from Samuel from downtown, try to go for a boulder. He misses. JG is gonna just dodge that, but it's a two for one on that fight. Yeah, definitely a good trade for YC Sports. All they lost is only the Undying. And they buy all the time for Anti-Mage to come online as well. With this BKB pick being picked up by Anti-Mage, he will be feeling much um, safer going to the team fights. All he needs now is the Abyssal Blade so that he could kill a Wind Ranger or maybe uh, or maybe the Puck when it comes to, you know, if both, if both of them are just speed pushing at the side lanes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, Bob has done well, but what is, like, the itemization? You, I mean, he's got uh, Halberd now, which really helps against the uh, the Wind Ranger. He's going to be looking to get Shivas. I think that that's the right call, right? Yeah, I would say Aconemus doesn't feel like it's going to offer a lot of uh, value in here because you, you can the only the only passive to break here is the Timber, so, but this Timber is the post-5, so you don't really want to commit 4.2k in it into just that so i would say shiva is definitely the best or even a sub curious could be good as well either one of them oh glimmer they found and they know he's nearby zenki just trying to ward <laughs> oh the dream cool is gonna miss though bob's gonna run away here he's sticking to the low ground circus just continue to push with all that space that's been provided but timber okay the itemization was arcane boots and the glimmer is that is that a good build <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I might have yes. to play this hero later. So you tell me if it's good, <laughs> and then I'll do it. I mean, you always want you always want your post uh, post four or five to build these kind of um, saving abilities items, right? Either four staff or like glimmer cape. Especially when you're up against the doom, four staff and glimmer cape are the necessary one. And general, look at him, glimmer, glimmer cape saving his life. They get the stomp. Earth splitter is being lined up, and here we go, Samuel. Gets destroyed with, you know, the Timber Chain, Whirling Death, Earth Splitter, all that. And Play Hard will get the kill there. Yeah, this synergy is just very amazing coming out from Neon, our Titan, and Team Assault. The burst damage is just unreal, man. You could not see that coming. You could not calculate that. And whereas a lot of times, wise heroes, they are just getting, getting caught off guard, getting surprised by that. Yeah, it, 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 like nobody expects that much damage like that. It's just, it, it, like coming out of the blue, like almost. It, it's very surprising for almost most heroes. Yeah, but, this is why why is they are just building BKB after BKB. There's this tri call BKB timing right now for them to make something happen. Shackle last the ball. focus, and that does so much work. And Bob, man, he gets destroyed now. Yopa is just becoming this like focus fire machine. They're trying to chase, trying to get something. Cirque blinks forward. Let's go for it, but it turns around and just gets a ward. Samuel found him. Magnetize has been used, but he's got BKB. Yopaj is looking on the run. Samuel misses the second roll. John Wells around. Chakram is being used, but that BKB is going to expire. They got a nice dream coil there, and it's going to stomp and slow them down. John Wells running. It looks like a little bit of a retreat here. They have all five, and mind you, they don't have... Okay, but Sir gets the explosion on JG, and Samuel is looking to get killed here. Scam is looking to focus him, but the Glimmer is keeping him alive just for now. He's going to roll away. Just barely getting away. They do have a homing missile. They have him, and he should be dead to rights. The rolling boulder or not. That's two so far. Zanki's Glimmer one other time. They got the dust, and he's shackled, and that's going to be a dead Zanki. So three for one. What a crazy fight. Yeah, what a... What a chase coming from Wise, and they got punished by that. There, very nicely done by uh, by Scam to turn the fight around, and also Wind Ranger utilizing the Gleamer Cape coming up from the Timbersaw also managed to to turn to perform a turn around. You have to be careful on Wise because they are not exactly the best. Uh, they don't have the best lineup to uh, to do all these chases, you know. Mm -hmm. And Dying Wiper, these are very slow heroes. 
because so that if you if you are doing these long chases, you are going you are going to split out from your team, and splitting up is not a good choice when you're up against Wind Ranger, Puck, and the Gyrocopter. Yeah, I, I didn't like the fight because Bob had died. Whatever fight you're gonna take, you're fighting it four v five, and that's never really a good situation you want to be. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. If you're playing basketball and you're playing four v five, you're gonna have a hard time. And in the same way, like it doesn't really matter how fat you are. In this case, it's the same way of trying to fight four v five. It's like an uphill battle. Yeah, I've said this before, and just want to say this again. You know, good teams that pick their fights. So why are you committing to a fight that you know that you are not at the advantage? Four v five is. Pretty, it's pretty clear to anybody without yeah. 10 to 20k net worth lead, those are not the, op the most optimal fight that you want to be looking for. So mm -hmm. you want to be disciplined in this case, especially when this when the game is so dead even, any single team fight is going to change the game. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it really comes back to Cirque on that one. I think he made the call because he blinked in forward and the team was like, oh shit, now we're going and we're going because he his, he felt the strongest because his net worth is the highest, but your team is kind of faltered off, right? If you're talking about net worth alone, you're only slightly up 1K, meaning that the bottom two, Earth Spirit and the Undying are basically melee creeps at this point, right? <laughs> they don't have much. So you're going to have a hard time and that balance really isn't there, especially if you're going to get, you know, go into a fight 4v5. Yep, I totally agree with that. I think Cirque overestimated, overestimated himself a little bit, but right now with the Abyssal Blade, he could make that same kind of move happen because right now he has the ability to just finish off any hero by his by his own. So that there is not so much of pressure for him from his team, teammates anymore. But smoke here, and they want to get some sort of pick off. Probably turn this into a roach. Zenki's nearby. They do see him. The stomp is going to miss, but they found him, and he's just by himself. Two himself from the high ground. He's going to uh, use the golem, and he's going to look to put at least some sort of a uh, space between them. And they want more. They found Cirque. Counter spell is going to be used. Mana Void is not. The decay, the heal, and Cirque is going down, and he gets whittled down, and he gets killed here. This is the, and the BM tip is coming from Playhard, and they want more. They got the Dream Coil. And on the Samuel, he's been Yules up. And Samuel's trying to run away, not able to do that. Three for nothing so far, and this AM does not have buyback. Oh no, this is free Roshan for Neon. Not like that. Yeah, that Alright. Okay, fortunately for them. Alright, never mind. Fortunately for Neon, Roshan is up, and they know that. It's just a easy task for them right now given that Antimage has no buyback that was not the best initiation for them he had the BKB he did not pop that he was surprised by the second shot and he was just during the second shot second shot duration he went from 100 to 0 just like that so it has to be very careful with this you know with his movement with his calls yeah. he's the only winning condition here for Wise he need to be careful with all these movements. But he was just like by himself. He was like under the T2, like just really bad positioning, not with the team. Like this is a, a little bit of a pub mentality, I would say. Oh yeah, definitely. You see this a lot in Southeast Asia, you know. This is the one thing that has been stopping a lot of Southeast Asia team to, to be great. Because at the very late game, these cores are just were so great. They're, they're just so hungry oh. for kills. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the Dream Cool, speaking of being hungry for kills, it looks like they've gone a little too far. Samuel's gonna die as well. And man, they've got two buyback coming in. Samuel, they're looking to turn this, but that was not a good time to go in initiate. Well, oh, that's the slowly just throwing this away. Centaur Stomp, they got scam where they want them. The Magnus Eyes is bouncing all over. The homing missile is gonna be blocked out by the BKB, and Bob's looking to turn this around. Infernal Blade on John Well. And they're looking to focus. Cirque is focusing hard on Scam, trying to outfight him. Cirque realizing he doesn't have the damage. Even with BKB, he blinks away and he's trying to keep himself safe for now. But Undying has been killed. They have totally lost their pick timing. The Abyssal Blade timing was supposed to be uh, the absolute, you know, max capacity of anti mage. They're supposed to win a team fight, go into Roshan. Claim an Aegis on the anti mage and just roll and just look to end the game back right there. But because of that one attempt on the Elder Titan, they, they lost everything. Like, what are you going to gain? What 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 will you gain by killing the Elder Titan? Not a lot. Oh, Dream Code one other time. Abyssal, they do get your pops. Aegis has been popped. He needs 1v3ing them, everyone. But he's been slept and the Earth Splitter in Cirque just gets decimated. My sadness that you're gone. All right. Another 90 seconds. 
on the sideline without a buyback. This is, you can see the line being drawn, entire neon. The three man unit are just looking to be disciplined, connect to their connect to the gyrocopter and timber saw and look to go to the high ground and claim another, another pair of racks. This is just discipline. This is experience going into the game. A YC spot they had they had the control of this game, but because of the hunger for kill, they lost everything. They just lost everything like that. Like Circus trying to 1v5. He's trying to take over the game, but you cannot take fights 1v3, especially when you're behind. I mean it's a 17k net worth advantage that they have. And you're trying to 1v3 the, the top three cores on their team, like you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, to be honest, we couldn't blame him on that as well because he got coil, so nothing like there's nothing he could he could do about that. He had to fight Bob. They're going for this. The centaur stop. The uh, Samuel rolling boulder, the chakra Mr. Zoning, but they've got him doomed. So if anything, they might be able to kill Scam here. He cheeses on up and he turns it around. And he thinks, oh, you're trapped in here with me? No, I'm <laughs> like, he turns that around completely. And Zenki, he's going to get killed as well. And I, I think that's pretty much all she wrote here. Yeah, I feel, as a, I feel like the game is over right here. That's just the team not being on the same page for for just, you know, one move or, or one or two move and suddenly by doing that, especially when you're facing against a much better team than you, you are going to get punished. And this is Neon punishing the over aggressiveness from Wise. Hold on one other time, a little bit of disrespect. Enrio goes down, Ancient is now exposed. Circ is there, but he gets the BKB. And he will put back in the fountain and Bob has been shackled. And uh, that's a dieback for him. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Really nothing Circ can do is just other than protect his own KDA. And that's going to be the ancient there. 39 minutes though, 44 28. Neon Esports for that win. Well, I would say this is definitely not the cleanest game that Neon can pull out. But this is definitely the cleanest punishment that I've, I've seen for a while. You know, just, just capitalize on the mistakes of YC Sports and then turn them into this insurmountable advantage that they have instantly killed anti-mage go into roshan claim a pair of racks killing anti-mage again knowing that he doesn't have buyback and then just end the game right there it, this is neon esports closing out the game in two minutes yeah it was super quick i mean to be honest the most disappointing thing about that game was the fact that um neon one was position five timber so it looks like i'm gonna have to play that in my pubs later today i think that that's the saddest thing that we're going on in uh, let's go into a quick highlight of the the the, the chat. This is the moment where um, you know there's a huge team fight in the mid, and it looks like they're trying to go. Yopa just turns it up here, gets both of the supports as well. JG with a double kill there, and they got four for nothing. This is when Cirque was going in. And then if you see in the, the middle right section, let's do it. And then that's the comment that we had, and we're going to announce the winners shortly. Uh, but yeah, just really tough game, kind of hard to kind of just do this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's the lucky viewer. It's going to be Cywar Gaming. Congratulations on finding that little bit of text. Uh, we'll reach out to you and make sure you get that Dota 2 cosmetic there. Uh, but yeah, any final thoughts on that game? It's, it's just the same problem for YC yeah. Sports. They have to play with more disciplinary. They have to execute the game plan that was, you know, laid down by the coach with the draft and also anti-mage you you have got to know that you are carrying the entire team on your back you sh you need to be more careful with your move because just one mistake cost them a game yeah okay so uh that's gonna be game one we're gonna have another game right you know there's gonna be the rematch it's the best of two of course it's gonna be neon esports vice esports coming up soon stay tuned also known as Cherry Zawa, and it is my great honor to be the Philippine Ambassadress of Toplands 2020. Hey guys, Asura here, and if you guys don't know who I am, I am a professional uh, shoutcaster, esports commentator, uh, content creator, and streamer residing in the Philippines. Hi, Salam Zuma. Saya Master Kokan. Saya berasa amat bangga kerana dapat menjadi duta Malaysia untuk Top Clan 2020. 
Hello everyone, I'm Rosdak AIG, also known as Madam Mayora. I'm the team manager of Team Rosdak. Halo semua. Perkenalkan saya Fanji Eko Giovanni, dikenal sebagai polisi ganteng gamer. สวัสดีค่ะหนูอีค่ะหรือว่าอีโวทหนูอีหนูรู้สึกเป็นเกียรติมากๆเลยที่ได้เป็นไทยแลนด์แอมบาดเดอร์ของท็อปแคนสองพ
Oh yeah, definitely. It feels like just, you know, bad decision making coming out from YC Sports just won mm -hmm. and they get punished for and, yeah. and it cost them the game. Yeah. I mean, it was just like one bad decision and then it was like bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. And it kind of, we kind of felt that like the snowball effect and it just really kind of affected them. But before we go into that game, let's give a quick shout out to our partners in EGG Network, AIS Play, Kumu, Lazada and Lazada Live, Likey, Nemo TV, Twitch, TikTok, and production is done by InfoFed and Ancient Galaxy because without those guys, we would not have any of this. So please do support them. Please do give them a shout out. Do what you can for, um, for all of these people. Now, mind you, another thing that they should be following and liking and subscribing and doing all those good things too is where at Leon Arthur Dota. So please do find him on YouTube and uh, Facebook. I think that those are your two main things. If you like his insights, please do give him a follow. He's the guy. He's the guy to my right. Uh, he's the intelligent guy, and he's bringing all the insights about Dota. So big <laughs> shout out to him for that. Um, okay, so let's go into the game. The draft is kind of underway. Um, let's give it another minute or so. But okay, Vicey Sports, what do you say to these guys? How do you get them back in the game? Well, I'll just say it was a pretty impressive showing to just go, you know, 50-50 with Neon. Because definitely with Neon with so much more... Um, international event experience is is a big it's a big improvement for 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 at least the first 30 sec, 30 minutes for YC Sports it's just that the ability to close out the game is just not quite there yet but I do mm -hmm. feel like this is just a, all about decision making though as long as mm -hmm. they want to be disciplined they can be so it's just about okay. taking things a little bit patient if you need 45 minutes to end the game then just take for the mind five minutes. You don't have to rush that because it feel to me like there is no reason for anti mage to rush himself there. He has already gotten to the max maximum capacity. He could just play the game a little bit more um, patiently, look for the correct and better an engagement, and they'll <laughs> they'll have a completely different result. So just sure. a be patient would do. But okay, we 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 talked about the fact that like. Vice's esports, they kind of weren't really synergized that well. Um, and we kind of saw that with elements that, you know, some people were kind of doing well. Like Bob was having a great game, great laning phase. They were kind of just snowballing and getting going in that sense. But it seemed like there wasn't really that synergy mid game. And we kind of we really saw that. Yeah, simply because the mobility of the heroes are not, just not there, right? Mm -hmm. Doom, Anti Mage, these are the. These are the heroes that you want to be initiating on the back lines. Just killing off the gyrocopter, anti mage jumping on the back lines. But meanwhile, you also have the undying and the wiper that just they are just so yeah. slow. They couldn't just keep up to the tempo or the momentum that anti mage or the earth spirit is having. So you really want to play, be playing around your wiper and maybe the tombstone as well. Because every single time it just feels like tombstone was set down here. And then all of a sudden, team fight are happening elsewhere because a spirit and anti mage are just rolling in or blinking into somewhere else, and all of a sudden, undying just feels like a melee creep, like you said. The the power of the tombstone was not utilized in yeah. the game. So, didn't you feel like Enryu and the Viper, and he's only played Viper and Veno in this league, but don't you feel like that that hero he should be playing like a traditional offlaner? Well. I don't want to be, you know, telling YC Esports what to do because you obviously they are, pick <laughs> they are picking Venomancer and Wiper because they have found success with these heroes. Mm -hmm. It's just that execution-wise, since you pick a hero like that, that is not the traditional offlaner, you want to be playing to Wiper's strength. You want to be playing to the Venomancer's strength. You don't want the Wiper to be ch chasing you. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, anti mage, please slow down a, bit, a little bit so that I can catch up. You don't want these things to happen, so it's about the team being on the same page, executing the same game plan. Dire team back. Okay, okay, all right. I I get that. I just, I mean, I, I'm not here to call people out or anything. Okay, I I just think it's more of like a draft thing. Like when I see. Like, if you're looking even at Neon Esports, where they had a little bit more of a traditional offlaner, like, you felt that. Like, you, there's a reason why they're traditional and they tend to go with those those heroes because it adds an element that the team is really lacking, right? And if you're kind of going with, like, this Viper that's going Orchid BKB, very selfish and not really utility items, then you're kind of putting your team behind, I would say. 
Oh, exactly. I love the fact that you point out this because as an off laner, you want to play for your team, right? Yeah. That's what JG was doing. He played Five for his team. He, con he 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 jumped in, uh, put down all this coil for his t for the Wind Ranger and the Gyro to to dump in all the damage. But Wiper doing that very selfish Orchid build. He's playing for himself and he wants his team to yeah. play for him, which is yeah. not the optimal one, right? Because you have this, uh, you have the you have the Doom, you have the anti mage in front of you. You want to play for these guys. You want. You want to help the anti mage carry the game much easier for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so yeah. that's my point. You need to mm -hmm. identify you, the players. They have to identify and understand their own role. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. I want to say. That's why I'm not a big fan at all for the okay pickup. No matter how you justify it, that's just not your role. Mm -hmm. So it's coming back to. Like Cirque is, we we you see this guy's position one. I think he's definitely he plays like a position one, no issues there. Bob is definitely a very good mid laner, but like Enryu, like I'm f figuring out with this team, like where does he fit? Where do you need you know what I mean? Like to play that off laning role, you need to ensure that you're kind of playing to your team's strength. And you need to sacrifice yourself a little bit for those other cores to have really good games. You protect your supports. Um, but again, like as I say, this Vice Esports goes right back to the Viper, and I'm 100% sure this is going to be on Enryu again. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure where the Team Bristol wants to go. It could very well be another post 5 Team Bristol, but this Chen, though. Are, will we see a Chen post 1 here? Like, we have gotten a very crazy oh day so far. I wouldn't count this out if we are seeing a Team Bristol 5 and a Chen 1, but it still comes down to uh, the second phase of the game, of the draft, for Neon to really set into stone where are these two heroes are going to go. There's a there's a lot of like lot that you throw. Like now you're like, oh, they first picked it again. Is this gonna be a position five timber again? And uh, I mean, maybe Vice doesn't try to hard counter as hard as they did last game, and maybe they go a little bit more balanced this time around. Yeah, this is mind games, right? Coming from Neon Esports. They are trying to condition YC Sport or any other teams in this league to think that they are always going to just play this Team Bustle 5. And then at one point, your opponent are just going to have this mindset going in. All right, this is for sure a post 5 Timber. And suddenly they could pull out this surprise element, switching Timber Saw to the post 2 or the post 3 and have, um, uh, and can secure a very good lane for themselves. So, this is a lot of possibilities coming out from Neon Esports and it's up to them. It's up to Ten them right now to showcase their creativity, their creativity and innovative. Five seconds. Radio yeah. team I mean, it's creative, but at the same time, I think it's just like you're playing a ton of mind games more than anything else. And I, 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 I appreciate that because, again, like the draft is about just getting yourself in the best spot, right? Picking the best heroes and throwing people into a loop and... Uh, if you can outsmart people, all great. But at the same time, you need to execute. I think we see Secret doing that. I think that their drafts are kind of, they're not always meta. And they're they are different at times. But they're able to execute. And they're probably one of the best teams out right now. So can Neon Esports, with their ability to innovate, you know, get to that level? I mean, it's all about execution at this point. Yeah, it's about, you know, having five players be on the same page as well, knowing exactly what is the winning condition and executing for it. And that is one thing that I'm I, I'm not seeing YC Esports doing right now, is the ability to execute that same game plan. It mm -hmm. always feels like everybody has their own thoughts and trying to do their own things. Whereas Neon, they are definitely a much united unit here. And YC Esports is just going to go for the counters of the counters, you know, Wiper to counter Timber Saw, and this Chen is in the pool, so AA to counter Timber Saw and Chain. Mm -hmm. Seems pretty reasonable for me, but I want to see synergy coming out from synergy, uh, synergy coming out from Ten YC Sports here. Remaining. Okay. No, I, I like the AA pick here. I think it messes, obviously it screws with Chen and what he wants to do in Timber, just locking him down. But if it's more of a Timber 3 with actual reactive armor, you know, skilled up this time, it, it can kind of mess with that. So um, I, I do like that pick, but yes, you're absolutely right. It does need something to synergize with, maybe like a Faceless Void, something that kind of locks people into place just so that he gets that Ice Blast off. Yep. And speaking about off lane. I would love to see a Slada here from YC Sport. I want to see 
Viper being switched to the position two. I think Slada would be a super great hero here against Ricky, against Timbersaw. Mm. If you have this team, if you have this Slada and AA counters to Timbersaw, you take away the regen, you take away the armor, suddenly Timbersaw just becomes a melee creep that has a bit of mobility. <laughs> and most importantly, you have Slada against Ricky as well. You need to find a way to counter Ricky because Scam's Ricky can be very explosive. Don't and I've personally that. witnessed this very closely mm, how so Ricky just completely demolished the game. And speaking of Ricky though, JG has also played Ricky on the position three as well. So mm. we cannot count, that out, uh, count the possibility out too. But like, I mean, it's so crazy. Like Neon, like any of these heroes, I feel like at this point can be in almost any lane. Five right seconds, really? like maybe not so much in the mid lane but maybe like you know rubik timber but like everyone else can be almost anywhere else right yeah i'm actually feeling this timber saw post tree a lot now especially if you have gotten the swan timber saw is a great hero against swan at the mid lane uh, at just uh, on it on the lane especially you have this rubik constantly you know have the ability to just reposition swan I feel like this Timber Saw and Rubik lane could be very threatening to YC Sports safe lane. And I would love to see the adjustment coming out from Neon Esports, the flexibility kicking in to create the advantage for themselves. Mm -hmm. Wow, but uh, yeah, let's see. I, do you like the Sven pick though? Mm, I like it. If uh, Sven doesn't get demolished by Timber Saw at lane, I can see this Sven just carry, carry the team on his back, you know, Sven is a mm -hmm. great hero against Ricky, against Chan, also against the backline heroes like Rubik, especially when you get the Academy Scepter. You can just simply burst any single anyone on on top on, on Neon. So I do love this Sven only if he gets um uh, a good early game. Okay, okay, okay. It's gonna be super important, but I, I this is looking more like a traditional Timbersoft offlane, like a JG one, right? Five seconds remaining. Yeah, I would I would like to think so. I, okay. I feel like Timbersaw is the best hero so far against Swan. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't see Ricky off lane for uh to be great uh, against the Swan, so back. definitely not mm -hmm. Ricky. Uh, yeah. unless they want to pull out something new. We have seen the Yopash Rubik mid. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that there's definitely still a lot of flexibility coming from this Neon lineup. And I want to see how they surprise us, surprise us with this last pick. There's a decent amount to steal. But it, like Neon really needs that. I mean, if it's going to be a scam Ricky, I get it. Ten but then... Remaining. Hmm. Like, I, again, Neon, just the way they draft, it just, Five it, it's not traditional. Three. It's not normal. Like, if you're looking at Vice Esports, you're looking at this and like the Tusk Viper. Okay, that's your three and four. Pretty obvious. AA... Sven, 1-5, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's very traditional. And then the Kunkka last pick, like, this is textbook in terms of generally, like, how you draft, right? But Neon, it's kind of like Timber Chen. Like, we just saw a Timber 5. Like, where does he go? What is he doing? Rubik 3-4, like, you know, like, is it a 2? Is it, you know, like, like, and that's the whole versatility that the players bring, the skill level, just being able to do everything. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, exactly. And it's also a very good in throwing your opponents off guard as well. Mm -hmm. Because right now, I, I do feel like this Rubik has a lot of value going to this game. You can steal Dantotoxin, Ice Blast, Stun from the Swan. Can, this, all, these, all these spells that you are going to steal are going to be, to be game changing. And looking at the last pick from Wise, it's going to be a Kunkka. You can always just put the Timber Sword onto the mid lane against the Kunkka and have a very good result. Yeah. Or you can stick to something else, stick to Timbersaw being a tree and pick something that can just completely throw this Kunkka out of the, of the way, something like a Monkey King. Mm -hmm. um, just anything that can deal with the Kunkka very well on the mid lane. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I mean, I mean, you have last pick, you have that huge advantage. You have the player versatility, which can play almost any of these heroes. Like, it, it, it's really nice to see something like this. And this is why Neon is going to be strong. They've decided to go with the PA here. Um, wow, Yopaj Rubik. There we go. JG insta pick with the timber, so we've got that. Uh, but we're looking at a position four support Ricky, yay or nay? I'm not sure though, because normally you pick Ricky because there's a couple of squishy heroes that you can kill yeah. off, 
But looking at why this one, everyone is rather tanky except for AA. You you don't really want the Ricky to be a four just to target down the AA, right? You want the yeah. Ricky to offer much more than that, much more than just killing down the AA. So and also not to mention they are picking PA into the wiper as well. Mm -hmm. So you have got this Timber Soul and PA core that are getting countered by one hero, or maybe two hero, the wiper and A. So drafting wise, I do feel like Neon they are challenging themselves a little bit here, mm -hmm. and I do feel like Wiper has more hero counter to Neon. It's just all up to execution right now. Yeah. Yeah, and like the whole thing that you're talking about with like this Ricky thing. Yeah, he's got smoke screen and can kind of create a, like a little bit of a like chaos. But I mean, Bob is like on the Conca is already super tanky. I mean, assuming he gets his boat off and all that stuff, like he's probably not going to die right away. Cirque, if he gets his God strength, War Cry, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter if he's smoke screen or not. If he's silenced, you know, he's going to fight you regardless. So like again, I, I'm seeing the fact that like yeah, this this play hard Ricky is going to have a hard time. Definitely. I would even argue both Timberstone and PA are also are also going to have half time. I would say drafting wise, wise they definitely have a lot of advantage going into this game. Mm -hmm. I feel like Neon is, but if they want to win, they will have to outplay wise in every single aspect, skill usage, positioning of the game, map movement. They have to do all this much better than wise. Okay. I agree with you. And uh, it looks like Neon's going to do a little bit something different in the sense that, like, all five of them are going to go bottom. They're going to look to probably get some sort of first blood. Um, they're sneaking through. Not every team does this. And we have not seen this. Not as not the best um, five-man lineup to to perform a, a level one smoke, though, because they don't really have the, inis the initiation unless you want to force Rubik to get a level 1 telekinesis, otherwise you have to engage the fight, initiate the fight with the dagger coming up from Scam. Oh, but we'll Henry see. does not see this. They do have vision of him, and it's going to be a surprise! They blink strike, and JG's in position. He was trying to get a body block, but he actually messed that up. And they got the stifling dagger, and they're going to look to just focus on Enryu. The chains, one other time, Enryu, one other time, and they're going to give it to Yopaj with a fade bolt, and that's going to be first blood. A nice start to this game. Nicely done. I feel like Neon are just having a lot of fun in this series right now. They're just coming out with this uh, very fun hero to play, very creative drafts, and they're definitely feeling themselves right now. Your punch is definitely feeling super confident, having the first blood, already starting the lane with a free no talisman. Yeah, that's a really nice start. Oh, but play hard. He's looking to steal the rune. He does not get it. This Samuel has a faster fingers. But it looks like, uh, what is going on? Hang on, what is PA doing in the mid lane? Yeah, they're doing a lane swap right now. They want okay, to September. they want to dodge the PA versus Wiper lane. And they also want to make sure that Timbersaw is laning against the, the Swan. <laughs> and Timber's doing the long route all the way down, but Viper is going top. So he will eventually meet the PA, which is not great. Yeah, but most importantly, you want the timber saw against the swan, and, and that's why you pick the timber saw. Mm -hmm. mm. So quick having the trend here. also gives a lot of advantage to these lane swaps shenanigans because you can always just recall one guy to the lane uh, to fix to fix the to fix the lane swap thingy. So mm -hmm. I want uh, I wonder if you see that happen soon. Okay, uh, play hard is in position. Gonna get a snowball thrown at him, but he's gonna just back up here. And uh, JG play hard. And I mean, is this, is this tri lane? Is this what's gonna happen? It looks Samuel's like it. looking at tag teams, looking to focus on play hard. They're just kind of hitting one another. Um, Yo, yeah, and Bob. I, I do love, I do love this tri lane coming out from Wise because you know that Wiper can be completely fine against the PA. And then Timbersaw, this is what we talk about in the series of Galaxy Razor, right? You want to shut down the Timbersaw pre-level 3. Mm -hmm. so, and this is what exactly Wise are trying to do. But what is Viper doing? I feel like he's, is he DC'd or something? Oh, he's so low, he can't do anything. Oh, he's been completely zoned out by the daggers and everything. And look at the PA with 6 and 3, Viper has literally one last hit to his name. I mean, Chen with the best creep 
of everything, right? Just uh, constantly put, um, dumping out the, the chain lightning, just forcing Wiper off the lane. And once again, Wiper not really uh, having the ability to do what he wants to do. Which is yeah, I think they're diving on him top, and they're going for him. They're trying to find Enryu. He's been slowed in with that Chen creep as well, and Skem will get that kill. Sad day for Enryu. Oh, the storm hammer, rightly, nicely timed. And JG, he's been frozen into place. Is the timber chain just barely away with the right click? And Zenki will secure that kill. This tri lane is paying off in spades. Yeah, but when Timber Soul gets to level three, everything is going to be harder and harder. My only, my biggest, biggest concern is Wiper. Having such a bad lane, what if if this goes on, right? What is the role for this wiper? He'll be a non factor very soon. Yeah, he's kind of already fallen off. And like, this is like the like, this is his strongest, right? Like, this right now, he should be the strongest. And yet, he's limping back to the lane. He has like what one last hit. He's the bottom in terms of last hits, and he's still just just trying to get into the you know, into the, the, the lane equilibrium. Yeah, it was also very unfortunate that for him that Chen managed to find the Harpy to zone him out. That was the that was the key of him losing out the lane. Bottom lane JG is gonna play a little bit safer. He knows that Wise is what they want to kill him, and his JG as a rare experience of lane player, he's not going to give him that. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's been doing, trying to get some uh, right clicks on JG. Timber Chain trying to force it on Samuel, but Tag Team is now going to be used. JG and the uh, Cold Feet has been used. He's going to back up and just get out of that area. He should be fine. And Sir here is just like, you know. Oh, the Storm Hammer with all the creeps as well. That's value. That's value right there. But top lane though, Andrew, not being able to do anything. But, he uh, just having the game of his life right now. 20 and 13. 13 last hits, man. Come on. You don't... You didn't pick Viper into this thing. <laughs> and, like, like Johnuel is just like... You know, he doesn't even need to be in the lane. He can just kind of just farm in the, you know, the jungle if he wanted to. But he's looking to make a move mid. Um, yeah, but he backs off. He realizes that there's no creeps to kind of dive under tower. Why Cirque is only level 3. This is a little bit of backfire when you are doing a offensive trialing because level wise you are always gonna be behind the enemy carry because look at PA, he has gotten a complete free lane on his own, he has gotten even got a one kill too, so Speaking about that, bottom lane, Samuel. Strike. Samuel getting a little low. And there we go. The Storm Hammer will secure that one. So, yeah, we, we I mean, we talked about that they might be a little under leveled, but they've been getting some kills and they've provided a lot of space for Cirque to get kind of get going. I mean, 26 to 7, I mean, it's not 33 and 15 like the PA there, but you're going to take what you can get. That's true. Not too bad. They wanted to shut down the Timber Saw, but they're shutting down the Ricky as well. I would even say shutting down Ricky is also as effective as shutting down Timber Soul. Because all of a sudden, Tim, like Ricky, he, he couldn't do what he wants, right? Which is to disturb the mid lane, disturb the support. He, he was not able to do that because of the tri lane. So now I also want to know that what is the role of this Ricky? Yeah. And Ryu here, did you see this? He's level four, but he's only skilled in three. And TP instantly from Januel. Doesn't no really just gets on out. Yeah. No walrus punch, no actually follow up. But he loses his creep family now. Most importantly, Harpy doesn't die. And Harpy yeah. is the key of shutting down and zoning off this uh wiper. But where is said that, you know, because of the under level thing, Tus is only level two in six minutes. Didn't have the snowball, that's why he wasn't able to stop the TP. Radiant He's gonna Harrier. Do a little killed. bit of stacking here for the Swan Dyer's to come back into the game. Playhard's just following up with Zenki. Okay, PA top is actually level six at like under five minutes or under six minutes. So, uh, Scam just having a field day in the top lane with 40 and 25 denies. Good God. Yeah, everything's false under Bob's shoulder right now. Swan is not exactly the hero that you want to be, you know having him moving around the map, creating space. You want to create space for him. But this Wiper also needs someone to create space for him to come back as well. So no one else can just, no one else can do anything except for Bob right now. He's level seven. He need to utilize his ability to create quick kills on these side lanes. And I will say scam. 
Oh, That's TP's the biggest kill that Bob can look for, and instantly, as I speak, Bob TPing down the delay. Bob is dancing, he's trying to get him, and gets the, the poison attack. The X, not quick enough with a blink strike, and here comes the bow combo with the torrent. And there we go, and that's one way to get back in the game. He's been broken, and that's one thing that Enryu has. So, but Yopaj is here, no real mana, and they won't get any follow up. Yeah, great rotation coming up from Bob. And meanwhile, bottom lane, JG is level 5 now, so he's not afraid of the Swen anymore. He is the one uh, pushing out Zerk off the lane. So suddenly, Bob, you have to do much more than just killing the aim now because Swen, he needs help as well. I mean, you gotta give it, like, Enryu's gotta go into a different lane, or what do you do? Like, because it doesn't seem like Bob is gonna leave the lane top. Well, I mean, Nether Toxin is just strong, you know? You know, uh, so he, he really just needs the Kunkka or the Tuska to play around him, utilize the fact that Nether Toxin does counter PA and get some kills out of that. Oh, they've got Enry one other time, but the X is there. Samuel is also the Torrent. They've gotten Scam and the Shards are there, which is pretty nice, but he does die inside of them. Yopaj gets uh, Tidebringer damage, does a lot of work. Here comes Zenki, and Playhard is back. He's blink struck. But he's been stuck. No, Tricks of the Trade will keep him up. And he's going for Bob, and they're committing a lot for this. And he's somehow out healing this. Here's the boat. It connects onto two. And he's looking to fight this one. Bob is there. Yopaj with the steal, but he doesn't have the mana. And they've got the PA just doing a lot of work. And that's an ultra kill going the way of Yopaj. And here comes Enryu back in smoke screen yes, or not. Boat. It doesn't really matter. But the boat that's been stolen, and that's your first rampage of the league. Yopaj with the play. Man. What did I say at the beginning? You have to outplay YC's rod as Neon. You have to, you know, have this superior map movement, rotations. And that was exactly what they did. Your punch finding the best spells to steal the boat, getting himself to ultra Q, and then finishing off the Wiper with a Rampage. Your punch is out of his mind right now. Like, this is why, you know, Neon, they know that they are a better team than Cirque, that's, uh, than, than Wise. That's why they are just having the foundation to pick all these very creative heroes that are so hard to execute but they still manage to do that because their personal skill are there like just the timing just everything that played out you know what i mean it's not even 10 minutes into the game and he already has a rampage they have seven kills to the name and he has five to his name i mean wow could this gone any better for yopaj yeah, this is the dream game for what's for rubik right now he has gotten all the spells all the spells that he he won to get so far, and also two nothing, two no talisman and the power traps. He's a very tanky Rubik right now. If he switches, if he switches to the strength trap, so even this Rubik is not going to be an easy kill. Here's the X boat combo right into Scam, and they found him in the snowball, but the blink away. But the snowball is there. They're trying to get him. The, the charge is gonna block him in, and he's looking to fight this one. He's looking to just turn this. He blinks again one other time. The heals, and he gets killed. So they got something out of this. Can they get anything more? They're looking for Yopaj. That's the one you want. They do they have him. The torrent is being pumped. Oh, they do catch him hiding in the corner. They got the steal for now. Samuel is just trying to give, provide a little bit of vision. He's got the snowball, the torrent that's been stolen. It's uh, just going to miss on that one. And here comes the hand of God who just hits his level six. The Tidebringer is almost putting him low. And he does go down in the end. That's a massive streak going the way of Enryu. So that's one way back in the game. But JG gets the kill on Enryu. Samuel's running away. Tricks of the trade. And the tower is there as well. There's nice little smoke screen, but the tower is doing some work on play art. And JG is now coming through the snowball. Trying to run away. Does connect, and Samuel does end up getting him. JG's like, I've got no friends now, but Walrus Punch, Chakram, no mana, stick. And that should be the end. Uh, I kind of feel like Timbersaw had, he had to TP it down to, 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 to save his body much earlier. Before, before Wise does the long chase, but nevertheless, it was a very good counterplay coming here from Wise. Bob, he's knowing his role here definitely. He's just been playing very selflessly, always camping the top lane and look for the kill on PA. But bottom lane, play hard. Ice Blast as well, but the tricks of the trade just delaying the inevitable as he gets spotted out there. Zenki though, will might die for this. The scam is here. He's trying to go it. Oh, but Zenki, he gets denied by the neutrals. They got the boat as well, and they turned it around. Cirque with that double kill. I'll take that. 
Wow, I'm lacking Bob's rotation a lot right now. Everywhere PA goes, he just follows. And he's always Radiant making sure that his combos are all onto the PA and not onto the Timbers or anyone else. So this is very good recognition coming up from Bob. He knows exactly who is the hero that he has to be targeting on. And scam so far, he has to be a little bit more... He has to be a little bit less Radiant aggressive top. and focus on his farm. Because yeah. he doesn't want to die anymore. I mean, Scam had, like, the lane of his life. There could not have been a better lane for him. But the fact that, like, he, he, you know, like, this Battle Fury is looking to be very slow from what they have. The Storm Hammer here does connect. connect. They've got him locked into the shards. Janiel has no way to go. The, the full feet, Ice Vortex, all of that being added onto it. And that's a dead Chen. All right. Really good rotation coming out from Wise. Very good um, map movement as well. They are now looking to pressure this mid lane, but they might get some kill here. Oh, they see him. The Centaur stomp. That's going to start it. And they found. And then, yeah, Bob is just way too deep. Not really being able to catch anything. JG trying to get something more, but Samuel just does get away across the river. <laughs> this is just over aggression as always by Wise. And they always get punished by this. Yeah, it's like how to throw. Like... Um, just be like completely out of position, like just go in when you don't need to. But again, it, it, like Skem, you're having the best lane ever. Why would you ruin that? You know, and you just be over aggressive when you don't even have the items. All you had was an unreliable go, which you gave up when you died a couple times. So it's putting you further back, and now you're fourth place in terms of net worth. They do get the dust. They found play hard. Tag team, Walrus Punch, Storm Hammer, Ice Blast, textbook. Yeah, I just feel like Scam was having too much fun. He, he just wanted to go on, go for all these kills, knowing that he has gotten a very good laning phase. But Wise, especially Bob, just punishes him every single time. PA though, he still has a very good way of coming into this game. Yet yeah. top lane, Bob. Boat Torrents. They've got JG where they want him, and they got him locked in. Yeah, and the snowball just in case, just being like trying to get some assist gold. Yeah, it's all on Bob right now. Every single fight, every single kill that Wise is getting is all Kunka that is uh, initiating on them. But hopefully all this hard work will turn into a game carried by Swan. Because Swan looking very strong right now with all this free farm. 7.3k network in just 40 minutes. I can definitely see Swan just roll over this game uh, with this insurmountable of of oh, lead that, that he has. Ancient stack, that triple one is just juicy. It's got the MOM echo. It makes quick work of that. Cirque is there, but Neon are there. They're going to smoke into this one. They got the lift, the dagger. He's got nowhere to go. He's been broken, and they're looking to do this. Even the centers are getting in on the action, and they kill Cirque there. And it looks like Vice are going to have to run away. No vision to protect him. Thankfully, he finished the stack before he was dead, so that is not too big of a death. But this is gonna allow Neon just to just take away the bounty runes on Wise territory. Seems like they are going to take three bounty runes here. Yeah, they're gonna get something out of this, and Scam is just gonna take more. But man, look at that Centaur army, the Chen army. <laughs> three of them are are, are the, the the Centaurs. So you got Stomps galore. Smoke here. I think they saw that courier. Chunwell gets spotted out. He's going to get in there. The chilling touch as well. The torrent is going to be missing though, but they got the tag team and Johnny Wells creating a lot of space. Walrus Punch, he heals through this. And he's going to continue to run and provide a little bit more space, but in the mid lane, Yopaj has been vesseled. Or I think he's been earned, excuse me, and the hand of God is going to be used. But Cirque is there with the stolen Storm Hammer. They meet each other in the middle. And Cirque going down. Oh, he's very close. The Whirling Death are doing a lot, but oh, he's oh just trying to, doing that. Hey, trying to deny himself, maybe? He's got Warcry. Okay, and he does get killed by JG. This is turning bad. Yopaj with the play. The Ice Vortex does lock him, though. Snowball forward, and Johnuel is somehow still alive. Okay, now he dies. He's been Walrus Punched. And here comes Bob trying to protect his buddy. He gets a Torrent on Skem. And he blinks, he waits for it to just, just take over. Smoke screen as well. And Ryu's now into the into the fight. Chakram is being used, but they do end up killing Bob. And this is probably going to be the death of Enry as well. What is happening? 
Like, a minute ago, Wise was having the goal lead, and suddenly this 3k goal lead for Neon. The fights are just happening, happening left and right. And once again, I just don't feel like Wise players that are on the same page. They're just going for different targets every single time. You see this Tusk doing a, a super long chase on the Chen. And, and meanwhile, like on the left side of the map, Swan was getting kited all the way, has no help from his team whatsoever. And all of a sudden, Wiper goes to the, goes to the fight, trying to get a PA, and he dies because Neon Esports, they obviously are, are a better team. So the, so the players just converge into one and another, helping out each other. Suddenly, it become a 5k goalie for Neon. Oh, Yules is gonna dodge it. Dust has been used. They do find him. The extra JG. Chakram trying to break it. The boat does connect. He's been storm hammered as well. The shard. And that's gonna be a dead JG. A little too aggressive. But yeah, Cirk actually, he's been kited a lot. And I mean, he was completely isolated in that fight where he died. So, it, like, he really needs to just stick together. I think that's Vice Esports, you know, uh, the way they need to play is they need to stick, like, together in, like, a death ball. Yeah, they have to utilize each other's strength, you know, also cowering each other's weaknesses as well. You want to make sure that you are providing Swen the, disab the disabled that he needs because you don't want the Swen to be mindlessly chasing around. And right now, PA has gotten his Battle Fury and this PA is going to be catching up very very soon you don't want to be giving unnecessary kills to the pa anymore and bkb is gonna be the most crucial item here for for, for swen and once you get a bkb you really want to get it going he, he needs just a little bit more time i think once he gets bkb that's gonna be a pretty big power spike but um right now he should not be fighting he should really be farming All right, so in the top lane, Enryu just continue to push on out. Uh, Enryu is, you know, top six JG's going at it. Yules, they found the Sven, but I don't know if that's the right target. Stormhammer away. They're going to just buy a little time. He gets locked into place with cold feet. And uh, sorry, the ice vortex that is. And uh, yeah, JG's going to get away there. Mm-hmm. Still though, why is this point they are, they are not tackling the most important heroes on Neon Esports side? Which is the Rubik and the PA. They are still rather squishy right now to be picked off. But until PA gets the BKB, everything is going to be different. And Rubik, once he gets a little bit more mobility item or self-defensive item, he's going to be very elusive very soon. As, as we speak, why is this point they are looking to make a movement here onto the mid lane. Shards forward. Uh, Skem is kind of in the middle of things. And uh, hang on, let me just. What is Skem building? He's got Battle Fury. He's going to get BKB. I think all heroes right now need BKB to kind of just win these team fights. Top tower is under attack. Definitely. Like, both teams have a lot of magic bursts right now. You have to be really careful with this AA Blast as well. That's why you need a BKB. But I will say Roshan is going to be the big thing for both of these teams. They are going to be eyeing on the Roshan. Swen definitely wants the Aegis on himself. PA as well. So, Roshan fight is going to be something big that we are going to see very soon. Oh, they found Bob, but he's been X'd and he just backs on back. He X'd himself. He knew something was up. All right, this time Viper is going for the utility items. And I'm loving it. Garden Greaves, you know, you want to get Garden Greaves. Maybe Heaven's Hellbreak against the Ricky and PA as well. But you really just want to pump up all these aura items that can help your team. Yeah, and uh, through it all, Skem has kind of calm, caught back up. I mean, he's top top in terms of net worth. Uh, Cirque has kind of fallen off with a couple of those deaths. Um, and it looks like they're just trying to create a little bit more pressure in the top lane. Neon, that is. But nobody's really coming to deal with that, that, that creep wave. Why is it about this? They have been spending a lot of time just lingering around this uh, mid tower of Neon, but they still couldn't find the opening to just take the tower themselves. TP, TPs are coming. Yopash is here. Cirque has also picked up his BKB, so he's looking to fight now. This is the time, this is the blink reveal. They realize that something is up. They got the Ice Vortex in the back, the Snowball. They found Yopash, they want to go, but Cirque has been used up 
And the boat is also going to be used with the BKB. And here we go. He's trying to fight it, but JG, I don't know if that's the one you want. He gets into the first one. He's got God Strength. He's just looking to just chunk on through. Playhard does end up getting the AA. And he's looking to run here. They do have Vision with a Sentry in place. So they had at least get that. Bob has gone too deep. He gets killed three for two. Not a bad fight for Neon. Not at all. This, you know, this was supposed to be a fight that was needed to dominate. Especially if the with the fresh BKB appearance from Swan, but they, they had to give away 3 kills just because of that. The position of them diving is just a little bit too hard for the A or the or the Kanka to, to stay alive, especially when Kanka doesn't have the, B, the BKB yet. Mm -hmm. So, in another sense, they got punished for that. Like, and right now, without BKB, the... without God Strength, mm -hmm. Neon are the one that is going to be aggressive, aggressive here. Yeah. And, and like, Sven wasted the, or not wasted, I mean, he still survived out of that, but like a 10 second BKB charge, and you you came out the worst, so to speak, in that team fight. So not the greatest use, so to speak. Definitely, they want them way more than that. They wanted, they wanted to kill Hero and then lead into a tower push. Most importantly, they wanted the mid tower as well, because this is 22, this is 22 minutes in the game, and the mid tower is still standing healthily, but mid lane? Bob. They found Bob, they got the X, the clumsy net's not going to let Bob go anywhere, and he's going to be locked in again. <laughs> they instantly smoke, they get the kill, and they want more, and they're trying to go for the top the top lane, as that was where the T1 was just taken. JG's looking around, he does find Cirque, he's trying to find him, Timber Chain forward, rolling death, and Ryu's just like, I'm out of here, TP's away, Zenki's going to stick around, just try to keep his... Uh, He's carry alive, but Cirque doesn't know if he does it. No, he baits him in. BKBs and TPs on out. What a great job by JG. He continued pursuing because he knows that he will be able to force the BKB out of Swan. So this is 8 second BKB charge right now, but they have not gotten anything yet. Not the tower, a couple of kills, but nothing too important that can change the outcome of this game. But Neon is what they managed to do that. Force the BKB out, instantly walk into the instantly walking into the rush up here. Yeah, they just walk on in. I mean, Kunkka, Bob, and, you know, Tusker down. So this is the perfect timing. They just TP it away. But this Ice Blast was a little bit earlier. might have stolen Roshan, but that was pretty much the extent of it. Sven continue to Sven. farm, pushing bottom. Yeah, he's uh, very close to Academes right now. So yeah, the ability to just close up to the gap to Rubik and kill the Rubik off the, right off the bat is very important here. But we know that, you know, from what we've seen in the last game, he has to be also very careful with his own initiation as well. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to be just running into five men of Radiant's Neon and just die right off the bat. Attack. Do you save her buyback or do you just go straight up Axe here with Zerk? I think you just go straight up Axe, to be honest. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, you got yeah, PKB, you might as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, you need the mobility to just, just get onto the Rubik or the Chen and just burst them off. Otherwise, these are very troublesome hero to deal with if you leave them alive yeah but it doesn't look like anybody's uh gonna contest the bottom or they've got some runes yo posh picks up a couple i mean the dd from scam you definitely need to be afraid of this dude dd and the day soul coming up as well scam is gonna be really crazy even without the dd i think he could like with this he could definitely two shot a with crits so A have to be really careful here. I think Ghost Scepter is one of the best items here against the PA and Ricky. All right. Oh, he's Zeki got him being uh, hunted. He, play artist found him. <laughs> it's the stolen X. <laughs> An AA tough A game. There. Yeah. Not only he has to. Oh wait, mid lane JG. Wall response storm error, but they've stacked it right on top, and that's the agony reveal. We saw the Superman punch, but JG somehow still alive, and Ryu's here. He's trying to timber chain to the other end, but the X is there, and that's gonna stop them. They use Greaves. Skem is now here. It's like, okay, we're gonna BKB. We're gonna fight this one, and he goes right to Cirque. And he, like, who's the real carry? And Skem is going right at him. The shard is gonna be off the mark. Cirque running for his life. He's got the storm hammer. He does get killed in the end. Samuel running to the high ground. Do they die for this? Timber chain to the high ground. He doesn't really care. Scam is going forward. Stifling dagger. And he snowballs. Slow it down. Ice Blast does connect, but they really want Samuel. They're going for this walrus punch. And it might have gone too far, but they got just the Aegis. It's going to be coming. They got the port lined up nicely timed. They do have him locked into place. And Scam might have gone too far, but what? no. He gets the, water, the tusk. 
He it gets to explode. Glyph is now going to be used. He's been broken. He tried to blink away. He does. He's down for 80 seconds. No buyback. A little bit of a throw there, but tricks of the trade. They still want to continue to fight. Bob is looking to fight this one. Ice Vortex. JG's trying to tank up as much as he can. Reactive armor is working. Chakram going to miss. Smoke screen. Yopach is looking to fight this, and he blinks away. The Ice Glass is going to connect, at least on some. Johnny Wild there gets killed, and they've gone way too deep for four for... What, three with a buyback from Tusk? <laughs> Neon, they're just uh, having a lot of fun right here. Just diving tier 3 powers when the tier 2 are not even down yet. Scam. This is classic scam, scam at the finest. They just are uh, so hungry for blood right now. And they have to be careful though because you, you have to still, and Swen is still definitely very much capable of killing anyone if he's giving, given the right circumstances. Oh, they got him with the X, but the Yules keeping him alive, but they found him. Samuel, all response. Got to know where to go. Stormhammer and Yopaj goes down again. That's a team wipe. Cliff is now going to be used. A moment of silence for Neon. He just threw their Aegis and Amadish away. And slowly but surely, the, the net worth lead. Look at the, look at the dump from 8k yeah. to 6k right now. And this is Agonim's completed on Swen. So here comes the Superman stun. Whoa, they found Bob. They got the tricks of the trade, the smoke stream. The Chakram is doing a little bit of work. Bob is trying to run away. The Ice Vortex is going to be used as well. The Snowball for now, and nice save. He rolls him to the high ground, and no trees there, and the Timber Chain is going to miss. So Bob just dancing with Samuel, and they run away. Oh, the Superman, and he goes right into John Well, and he's looking to turn this up. The BKB now used from Skem, but he's been disarmed, and Sork needs to run away. He's got BKB. The ghost ship is going to go. Skem gets destroyed there, and it, like throw after throw, play hard is going to get killed here. JG goes up in the air, trying to survive. Timber chains, at least to the high ground, and he gets killed again. What is going on? All right, we see the power. We see the power of the wise, um, their lineup when they are all five together. So I will, I will see this coming out more from wise. You know, all ha all they have to do is just to position themselves, protect the formation, and allow this sweat to just free hit anybody that he likes. And as for Neon, uh, they are slowly giving up all the advantage that they had, 8k to 2k now at a at a span of two minutes. This is definitely looking great for wise. Like. The first, when they had Aegis and they were diving the T3 without even taking the T2, that was suspect, right? Like, that was sus. <laughs> but, like, this this fight right here was just a really bad engagement that they should not have taken. And they should have respected that. But, I mean, what? It's an 8k net worth lead. Now it's a 1k net worth lead. The game is completely turned on its head. Oh, definitely. And right after YC pick up all the bounty runes at 30 minutes, the net worth is just gonna get back to the way of YC Sport, but I would just say second Roshan is the most important one still. Whoever the guess the Roshan will have the control of this of the game. And look at the vision of YC Sport had. Thanks to the thanks to those fights, they are able to open up the path to the triangle and put out all the aggressive vision so that this allow them to control Roshan much easier co compared to Neon Esports. Man, like Neon Esports, like this is not the lineup where you want to be letting them come back into the game. Like if they have a, like if Konka, Sven, you know, even the Viper, if they're starting to get some items, they're just gonna delete your heroes because you're so squishy. Like this is not the time to be messing around with. Radiant's Definitely not. Neon Esports has to be really careful, especially after Sirk picks up the Monkey King bar. Pierre, he is very vulnerable to uh, to the Sven because you you see from the last fight, we we also house how PA just died in a matter of seconds even with the BKP on. So picking up picking team fights is going to be really important for Neon. And it seems like Wise they have learned their lesson. They are start they are starting to move as five men now and they are not looking to give any chance for Neon to come back. Yeah, and they've got a smoke on here. They're gonna pop with Playhard there. They're not gonna Playhard is gonna see it at the last second. He's conducted the Superman and the snowball as well and Playhard is gonna tank that one but he's just the position for it. But still, I think this will, will lead to a tier 2 for Wise. And losing this part of the map, it just means that controlling Roshan is 
going to be tougher and tougher for Neon Esports. But what else can they do? They have completely lost their advantage and this is Wise in control right now. Yeah. Like, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, Neon is like, all right, as the captain and be like, hey guys, settle down. Like we messed up, okay? We, we, we were, we were, you know, turning this into a clowny game. Now we need to settle down. But we need to just play like objective based Dota. We need to focus a little bit. Like, wh what else do you say to your team? Just keep your composure right now. Just play as five, play to your vision. You want to make sure that you're starting five with vision. So you take the, take the best, absolute best team fight you can get. And right now, you're just hoping for Wise to make mistakes and you want to try and capitalize on that. Yeah, you gotta get something out of this. Like, I mean, it's a fifty. It's a it's a coin flip at this point, and like this fan is getting super scary. Like, I, I, there were times where the PA was just being able to outman him, but I mean, Sven now, like he's got Ags, Echo. Like this guy is turning into a beast. He just bought something out, so he's got something on the courier as well. I mean, this guy is starting to get scary. Oh, he's going for the Daedalus instead of a Monkey King bar. Cool. Yeah. So he's looking to he's looking to take down the other heroes really quickly, and then go for the PA, and then go for the PA last, which. I really like it as well because you have mentioned how squishy the other heroes are with a uh, lucky one or two one or two crit. This Rubik is only sitting at 1.4k 1.4k HP. He could yeah. just very well be one shot by the Daedalus. Like, like if you kill the Rubik, how are they gonna control this Fen? You know? Like he is priority he's target number one. They get him going and that's gonna be it. Oh the X, they got play hard, he blinks to the high ground, he should be fine. But Roche is there. This is gonna be the next big thing. Samuel gets wolf snowballed in on Yopod with the style point. Cirque is gonna just get Yules here. Scam is gonna BKB. He's looking to fight this with the walrus punch is buying a little bit of time. They really want this the tusk. They do. They've gotten the AA already and they want more. The Superman punch, they get him up. Yules one other time for Cirque. Blinks away from Scam. He's looking to fight this, but Snowball trying to just charge on forward. And, and wow, and Sven dies as well. Scam just getting away with very little life. Three for nothing. And they're going to probably get Bob on this one. Silence backing away, trying to TP. No way. Not with that Yules there. And that's going to be a dead Bob. That's complete team wipe. I guess that's one way to get back in this game. All right. How? I have no idea how did. You know, Neo, Neo was not supposed to win the game. Oh wait, look at the career. Did you see this? They're trying to get the gem back. AA's, AA career just took the gem off, speed boosted, got to the high ground, and they thought there was that one right click, but because of evasion from the low to high, it actually missed the career, and he gets away with the gem. <laughs> Huge ice blast coming in, but it, it's not gonna matter. I mean, for wise. Oh, he managed to steal the ice, ice blast. That's a big steal. They got him, but he's running for his life. JG does end up getting him, and that's going to be a killing spree. But they got to go back, and they got to deal with this T2. And that's where they go to high ground. Man, the use after usage are just too good on Neon. Uh, Swen, after his Superman stun in, into, the, into the Ricky, he doesn't use his BKB straight away. That's why he got used. I believe he got used twice in the entire team yes. fight. And, and that just create a lot of space for Scam to just run away from from the Swen, uh, from, uh, from Scam to run away from Swen. So that definitely keeps um, Scam alive. And I have just no idea how Neon won, won the team fight. I'm just seeing this Swen getting used, continuing to use on the air and not able to deal damage. And suddenly the rest of YC4 just falls to, to the team, to, to the Timber Saw, to the Reiki. The whole team fight just so chaos. Or for oh, Weiss, Weiss so messy. It's very messy. And that, that that's the problem, right? Like, we're, we're kind of seeing it as, like, how do you guys improve? It's like, if, if we're looking at it, like, this is it, right? You improve these things. You don't throw. You don't start diving T3s when you don't need to. And just stick to objective-based Dota and be focused. Like, I feel like everybody's, like, so bloodthirsty. They're like, oh, we're going to have fun. We're going to run at people. We're going to kill people. But, like, if you want to kill people, you should be playing an FPS game, right? Dota is not the place. It's a real-time strategy game for a reason, right? Definitely. You know, Dota is all about killing buildings. You kill buildings to get win, to get victory, not, not heroes. So they definitely have to instill the objective mindset into themselves. It's not about killing at all. It's all about objective and making moves to, to accomplish the objectives is what you should be thinking of. 
you know, Roshan was about to spawn just now, so they need to be so careful when it, uh, when it comes to Roshan fights, and they just completely give that away. Give a free Roshan to PA, and now 15k goalie suddenly on the side of Neon. Then top god strength, he really wants this. JG gets deleted. They found something, but Yopaj and Scam had both TP to the outpost, so they've used that. And if they get caught out here, this could be a disaster, especially with JG down. And they're trying to run away. They do have a little bit of vision on that high ground, at least. But yeah, they want to fight. Those no side spy back. You can always just buy back and TP back into the fight. Yeah, but Enryu is actually going to TP to fix out the top lane. He's going to just shoot out his nether toxin and be x on back. Ice Blast, the Stifling Dabbler, they're from Cirque, and that's the one they want. The Superman Punch that's been stolen. The BKB is going to keep him alive. The TP's there, but it's been stunned with the bath. And Bob is looking to run. He's been BKB. The boat's going to be used. He, yes, he's been hit, but man, you're stuck in the middle of them, and you get destroyed like that. They've gotten three for nothing so far, and the other ones are going to get on and out. Oh Radiant's man, these team fights are attack. just getting way Radiant's worse for uh, for YC Sport. It seems that like every single time, Neon they just shine in this late game team fights. Remember the game against uh, Galaxy Razor? There was about 10k deficit as well, but they just oh top lane, Enryu. Yeah, they got Enryu with the chakram and everything just stunned. I mean, Yopaj has been on point with his steals, but please go on with Galaxy Razor and yeah, it, it just feels like Neon they are always so. So on point when looking for fights that they su they are supposed to win. When it comes to this crucial late game team fight, it's so it feels like they are always much. They are just playing these team fights out much better than their opponents. But do you think? I mean, we've seen this like broke neon team. Right? I mean, obviously, like they've thrown some leads and they've made it a little bit more difficult than they should have. It, it doesn't seem like that now with a 21k net worth lead. But you know, do you think that neon? play down to their opponents? I'm not sure. I think they are respecting their opponents. It's just that they are having a little bit... Uh, they are having a bit more more fun than their opponent. And... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if I should say Neon under, underestimating wise. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there's, there's definitely some moments that feel so. But right now, Neon as we speak, 21k goal lead. Two racks. In favor of them, it takes a it takes more than one throw to for Wise to get back into this game now. Yeah, yeah. And actually, to be honest, I tried to bait you into uh, saying a non PC answer, but you answered that admirably. <laughs> so well done there. Uh, but yeah, Neon. I mean, they're just looking to push, just sticking to objectives here, and now they're just looking to close out this game with this last set of racks bottom. KG is up front, with just like this tanking machine right here, and it's just becoming an issue. Uh, he's only sitting at 1k mana though with the uh, with the neutral items. But scam, very very patient right here, not looking to just charge on the high ground just yet. I think right now Neon they want to find a couple of kills outside of the uh, outside of wise high ground high, high ground before they start going in. All right, I mean Roche isn't up for another two minutes and thirty seconds, but do you just kind of? Uh force all the lanes kind of and then maybe wait for Roche to go in high ground or do you go earlier I think you're able to go now mm -hmm. mm, it's just that you need to find some openings to allow you to do that you want to find you know queue outside of the high ground it seems like wise they are giving the, they are giving the opening to neon they're smoking out yeah I'm not sure if you want to fight outside though I mean, they know that they can't win if they just stay in their base the entire time. So this is like the last hurrah. Try to get something, some sort of pick off here. I mean, they saw the courier there, so they know roughly where there is, but they've smoked. In addition to this, Samuel's been revealed and they do spot it. A nice blink into the smoke screen and they found him right away and AA goes down. Cirque is there, the hand of God has been used. Rubik Yopaj actually has to buy back. He comes on in, but Cirque gets deleted as well and they want more. They got the bash on Bob. They're t t trying to get him, but he TPs away. The center stop is not enough, especially with that BKB there. So they've got three for one, and they got four for one. I mean, there was a buyback from Yopaj. Well, this is what happens when you are when you are behind for 20k gold, and you don't fight to your high ground advantage. Oh, and the buybacks are coming because they're like, oh, JG, you want to come in my fountain? It's like, oh, he does. He's got an ultra kill. Give the man a rampage. 
Bob is in the area. JG's just trying to rack it up, and they tried to give it to him, but Playhard ends up getting the steal there. And JG's somehow still alive, and he's trying to get the Rampage? No, Playhard with another kill. They're just trying to feed him a Rampage, and they can't even do that. So I guess that's one thing that Neon need to work on. Well, why are, why are they being so harsh on JG? He just gives the man the Rampage. He wants it so hard. You can tell that he really wants it. But nonetheless, we're at... Very explosive game coming out from Neon Esports. And for Wise, just like every other game, they had their openings, they had their moments to close out the game. Yeah, that just and, uh, didn't quite happen. The one the one fight that requires their best execution, mm -hmm. they just couldn't quite bring it. Yeah, yeah. And, and like another thing is that like I mean, I, I would have preferred it if they just GG'd out of that one instead of just DCing on that one. But this is kind of like one of those things where you it's a bit tilting. Like, you thought you had a chance, and then all of a sudden they're diving and they're looking for, like, a rampage. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's a little bit of disrespect there. So, uh, Neon Esports needs to kind of work on that in terms of sportsmanship and just kind of respect their opponents in that sense. Um, but they were pretty much... They, they pretty much had the game from the beginning to the end, right? Yeah, it feels like it. It feels like they are always on the driver's seat. They are not supposed to have a lead at an early game, you know, but you have this eight minutes rampage coming up from your punch just completely out outscaling wise as team. It's just a well deserved victory. I feel like Neon as a whole, they are a little bit better than Wise as team. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just kind of I mean they've been playing I think they're I mean, laning is one thing, and that's mechanical, and that's definitely done, can be done solo. But I feel like the team coordination from movement, like that mid game, is when Neon really starts to get strong. Like they're definitely, you know, their coordination is on point, their synchronization with everything in terms of what they're trying to do. Um, they they seem to be really gelling together, and we're seeing a lot of that. Whereas Vice Esports, I feel like they still have yet to kind of work that out. I still feel like, in a way, this might be like a Battle Cup pass, like. <laughs> Uh, like tournament in a way, but okay, here, here's the latest standings. We've got two days of both Group A and Group B. MG Trust and IOD Dota leading in Group A, whereas in uh, Group B, it's going to be Execration and Neon Esports. Um, so it looks like Brandy Sports and Vice Sports are unfortunately going to be knocked out, seeing it you're zero points. Even if you win up the next one, you're not going to be top two. So unfortunately for that, but you know, it, it's best to play it out, get that XP understand how other teams are playing, try to work out the drafts, um, because in, in a way, Neon Esports just kind of outsmarted them today. Yeah, definitely. And the next matchup, Wise against Galaxy Razor. The only hope for Wise, oh yeah, mathematically, they are just already out. So yeah, it feels bad for Wise, but it's definitely a very good learning experience for them. Yeah, there's a lot to learn, especially in games like this. Um, yeah, I mean, it just, like, it's crazy because you had chances. You just needed to kind of just um, get yourself back into the game, make sure that you're coordinated. There's definitely some moments where not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, like, do we have... Uh... Okay, all right. So I think that's pretty much it for the day. We're, I mean, we're going to come back at you. We're going to have the day three of the league going to be going on Thursday and Friday. We're going to take a little bit of a break, let the teams kind of re recover, regroup, all of that, and get, you know, set up for the next games. That's going to happen Thursday and Friday. So we'll have day three of all of those group stages coming up. Uh, my name is Holler. You can find me at Holler TV. This is Arthur. Any final words before we, uh, before we send it back to the host? Yeah, nothing much. I think Neon has played a very good game today, and it was definitely a very ent entertaining one for the viewers. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it for us today. We'll catch you guys Thursday. Thank you so much. And let's throw it back to the host, Vicky. Okay. Thank you, our casters. Today has been a really an exciting day. And tomorrow we're going to be back with group stage of A. Well, IOE Sports will be competing with MG Chest. A joint esports will be competing with brand esports. At the end, we'd like to thank all of our partners EGG Network, AIS Play, Kumu, Lazada, Laza Life, Likey, Nemo TV, Twitch, TikTok. And also like to thank our local support by InfoFed, Asian Galaxy, and also the network support. UU Game Booster.
And don't forget to follow our official Facebook, YouTube and Twitch channels for the latest updates and surprises. Okay, please don't forget to tune in tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.